Actually, no, they're not. No, they're they have not. no qualifying. <laughs> they have no qualifying points allocated yet, have they? You know what I mean. But anyway, no one's leading the championship yet until we finish the day. Everybody starts with the equal chance. You have to earn it every single time. So just over half a second advantage on the tree going to the hyperactive car. There we go. Green light drag race. Me and Colin do the commentator's glance to the left. Just to check reaction times. That will be a win and a massive breakout for both of them. Freddie Taylor goes 0.16 too quick. However, Emily Moore, the queen of naughtiness. Wow. <laughs> the queen of naughtiness with that one. Goodness, that's a breakout and a half, wasn't it? Uh, what was that? That was three tenths of a second, more than three tenths of a second. Okay. Eddie May Brown, little Miss Stig down there in the Slick Chicks Lane. This car won the European finals last year. And it could be yours. It's up for sale. Uh, fortunately for you, it doesn't come with the tuner. That's her dad, Lee. But yeah, if you want yourself a, a really good race car to go have fun with, Go and speak to Lee Brown down there. Uh, Slick Tricks Lane, 8.25 for Ellie and Eva. 8.10. Both away on the green. Somebody's misfiring. It's Ellie. That will go down as a whole shot win as well. Quite a big one too. Uh, she was more than two tenths off her dial. Eva Davis was closer, but she was quicker on the tree. 08.22. The win margin was 03 for those of you that keep track of that kind of thing. Like Colin. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I uh, get all these sheets well, we back do, home. Don't we? <laughs> we do. We always do. I've been very kindly gifted one of my kids' water bottles today. Aww. Isn't that? I'll make sure I break it by the end of the day. Then look at it. Don't Seriously. you dare. That's pink and purple. Why not? I'll tell mummy of you. <laughs> I think she'll notice when I turn up. Yeah, with it in that's pitch. true. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, it is your number one qualifier, Liam McDonald, uh, going up against number 12, Sam Fairhurst. And McDonald celebrated his birthday yesterday, so... Uh, oh, it's a red light for Sam Fairhurst. So, uh, Liam, uh, a little bit late on the tree, to be honest, but... Uh, for him. And he broke out. And he broke too. <laughs> i tell you what, there's some... That if they both broke out. Yeah. Um, that's ridiculous. That's uh, some of the biggest breakouts we've seen, I think. And we're only three pairs in. Yeah. Right, Frankie Kent, Grace Smith, your next pair. Very happy uh, trailer, actually, the Smith trailer yesterday with uh, Vic going 8-0-0. Eight zero zero. <laughs> um, when I left here yesterday, all the Street Eliminator cars were coming back off the cruise last night. It was quite awesome, actually. Oh, it's going to be Grace Smith going through as oh. unfortunately Frankie goes red. Oh. Frankie goes red. That needs to be on a T-shirt. Better than Frankie goes to Hollywood. I'm going to get shot for that. Yeah, but Kevin and Shelley, Frankie went red by 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Oh, that was almost a perfect He was light. Kev's haircut away from being perfect. Yeah. There we go. It's good to be can't hear me. Well, if it was green, that would have been a perfect light. Yeah, it would, yeah. It? Oh. oh, so close. Yeah, Kev's haircut away from being perfect. I think that sums that one up. <laughs> so it is Grace Smith moving on. All right, next pair. Um, Teddy Sullivan, I Teddy, think. Teddy, no, no, it's... Um... <laughs> Ted, yeah, Ted Sullivan. Isn't it? I thought he was getting his tissue out of his pocket then. I didn't realise that yes. was a dolly. <laughs> yeah, Molly opened shorts the other one. I was... I was quickly frantically going down my list. Uh, right now, Molly looking for a nine flat, Ted 860, point four difference on the tree. Molly, her side of the tree will run first. Oh, 
was another squeaker there. Unfortunately, Molly goes red, so it's going to be Ted that goes through. Yeah, zero two. Um, the conditions today are completely different from yesterday. Yeah, the they're all licking their lips, actually. Oh, tailwind. <laughs> yeah, well, tailwind, and due to the clocks changing, we're starting earlier as yes. well. Yes. So it's cooler. You missed some of the best stuff, unfortunately. Yes, sorry, mate, to rub No, this no, one no, in. it's all right. Um, comp Eliminator, last qualifying round. Yeah, that was a bit oh epic, wasn't it? Oh, my God, that was amazing. Um, and even the last run of the day, uh, Mark Huxley doing a passenger ride for Spud. Yeah. Yeah, perfect light on his passenger ride. It was amazing. Oh, it was, it was just such a was brilliant uh, end of day yesterday. So, Emmy Crundwell and Kai Cooper. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Yeah. So, Kai's in the slick tricks lane, and Kai turns on the wind lights. Um, oh, the wind margin, 0, zero 4. That was a whole shot win because yeah. he was 0, 2 on the tree. Emmy was, zero, sorry, was zero seven. Oh, so close. So, a young lady that did really, really well at the start of last year. Let's hope it continues into 2024. This is a tough act, tough matchup, actually. Daniel Weir yeah, and go. Ada Cassisi. Daniel uh, has a habit of finishing very high up in the points. Ada Cassisi was certainly collecting silverware last year. Had a tremendous season last year. Oh, no one went red. Ada looks too far away, but Daniel will catch her. But, blimey, breakout. Um, Ada had a big margin to play with at the finish line. 0.25 she was over the line. She broke out by a few, only a few hundreds. Yeah. And Daniel was way off his dial in. But, you can't win if you go too quick. In bracket racing anyway. All right, Luke Mugridge and Lola Bell Kent, your next pair. All right, can we have Pro ET into the pairing lanes, please? Pro ET, can we have you into the lanes? I'd imagine I think most I'm looking of them at them. Yeah, already. They're, they're, they're so, already. Uh, so, Luke Mugridge, funnily enough, um, Nick is ready in race gear because he'll be racing very shortly. Yeah. So, green lights on both sides of the track. Can Lola Bell go one better than her brother? Somebody's whomping the throttle. That's, yeah, that's probably Luke. Luke. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Nicely done, sir. Uh, zero 0.4 on the tree. Wind margin of quarter of a second. Uh, Lola was uh, about a tenth behind him on the tree, but the car fell off a little bit. Not quite on the darling. Never mind. Uh, an early day. For the family, unfortunately. Hey, Tom Peters and Jake Coopier, your next two. Well, Kai has gone through, so uh, hopefully Jake can go through. But then Tom Peters uh, would like to go into the next round as well. So let's see how these two get on then. Uh, 9.19, Jake will be going first. 8.92 for Tom, he'll be the one doing the chasing. <coughs> two more pairs to go after this. That looked really smooth. It did, actually. So, Jake's out front. He's still out front. Oh, he and breaks he goes out. Quick. Oh. Actually, they both do, but Jake breaks out. We've got a lot of that this morning. So, it was Mr. Peters that goes through on that one by virtue of the lesser breakout. Really, really nice 0 2 reaction time as well. Wasted, unfortunately, by that big breakout. Oh, we've got a solo here. Uh, We've got Teddy Howe, but no Neve DV. Oh, what a shame for Neve. Rarely happens you get broken junior drags. Very so. rare. So 
So well on Teddy. And well done to Dad, actually. Matt Howe, all of his fencing work going on around the facility at the moment. Uh, really, really sharp. So, uh, well done, Matt. <laughs> Top bloke actually did my fencing at home and uh, I replaced some of my posts that really? were looking a bit wobbly. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, always, always uh, keep everything in the family, in the racing family. Always, always do. I've got Mark Corsell coming to hang my doors in uh, a week or two. <laughs> I have no idea why that sounds funny, but yeah. it does. Sorry, beg your pardon. Right, Harry Peters and Jacqueline Bartlett. Your last pair in Lucas Hall's Junior Dragster. Eight ten plays eight twenty five. Jacqueline, uh, her side of the tree will run first. Green lights both sides of the racetrack. Let's see how this one pans out at the stripe. It is an 821. Uh, Harry Peters gets by. However, I think there might be a slight twist in this one. Yes, I think so as well. Sadly. Right, ET Bike is your next class. Scott Collier, your number one qualifier, gets the bye. Right, first pair lined up already down there. So, Robbie Dobby on the Super Penguin. He is in the Slick Tricks lane. <laughs> Not sure what that was. Uh, going alongside Liam Holgate. Do you know actually what make, really makes me laugh? I'll wait till this pair of guns to say it, though. Um, it's all right. It's just something about being cold. That's all. Yeah, so Liam Holgate and uh, Robbie Dobby, like you said, how many bikes qualified in the end? How many was it? 23 or something, something like that? It was a lot. I don't think it's that many, actually. Oh, problems for Liam. Spun the tyre off the start line and the bike broke down. It, as long as Robbie Dobby doesn't break out, I don't think he's going to be backed off. Yeah, 10 18. The win for the Super Penguin. What I was going to say was well, quite hilarious. Is I remember like last week in Pomona or whenever it was, watching Richard Freeman walking around in a hoodie looking like some sort of, I don't know, anyway, he looked like he was cold. It was still probably about 15 or 18 degrees in Pomona. It's six degrees this morning, <laughs> right? And we're still doing this, yeah. obviously. Uh, 17 bikes is the answer to your question. Okay. Well, Justin Morton fair to say, just did not get off the line there at all. So Dave Grundy looking for a 1062, safely through with a 1083. Peter Harrison, I think that is. It is indeed, yet yeah, going alongside Carl Rushby. The dial in Zen, Kyle, 12.50. And Peter, 11 flat. Where's Peter going? <laughs> Taking the long way around. Making sure he's going away. I love the way that Kyle's just casually wandering up there, making sure he doesn't go too quick. He does. He takes it. His first ever round win. Well done, Kyle. Takes up with a 13.23 to lose that 12.28. Chris Venn. 
the big red machine. Darling in 10.30 this morning, going alongside Nick Bladen. 11.35, darling. So it will be Nick going first. And we have Super Pro ET into the lanes, please. Super Pro ET, we can have you into the lanes, please. Uh, Chris is going to do a real good job to catch Nick without breaking out. Oh, it's a breakout. It's a double breakout. Goodness Whoa. me, that was a <laughs> squeaker. Nicholas Playden did not need to take that much at the stripe. Let's put it that way. He took nearly half a second at the stripe. But because he broke out by the most. Yeah, 200 difference in, in uh, breakouts, huh? Oh, something on the track. Leo Lester, Scott Smith, your next pair. Um, now then, it's a 10.85 pairing here. Basically heads up racing their own dialing class, yeah? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Leo Lester took the stripe, uh, but went too quick, actually, 10.75. Uh, Leo out to Scott Smith going through. Young Scott Colley down there, your number one qualifier. They found the missing 10th last night in the last qualifying run. And uh, the bike looks absolutely better than ever. Uh, they busted a rod last summer and finished the season out on a spare machine. But rebuilt and uh, looks like it's been respayed and rejigged. Looking better than ever, Scott. Oh, that's a good looking launch, good looking run. He's got every chance of going too quick this morning as well with the tailwind and the fresh air. And he does. <laughs> 9.57. I don't think you'll mind that one. Uh, 137 miles an hour. Well done, Jerry. Well done, Sky. Hey, good morning, Sharon. I'm sure you're watching from somewhere not far away. This is a good one. This Phil Pratt taking on Gary Hester. Uh, now, I think, yeah, uh, Phil Pratt will be leaving first here. That's most unusual. Very unusual, he's yeah. one of the... Well, he, the light's going to run first. He might yeah. not necessarily leave first. Oh, I, think, so yeah. that, I think he's got every chance of doing it. Let's put it that way. Let's see how this one pans out. Not bad at all. Uh, now, the thing is, for Phil, he knows how to drive the finish line. When light comes on in, oh. Phil's lane. That's on a whole, a whole shot. shot. Yeah. Wind margin 0-1 at the stripe. That was an excellent race. 0-2.10 on the tree. Oh, so close. And a buy in the next round for Phil. Right, uh, last pair. Oh, no, sorry, two pairs to go. Uh, Brett Cordell should have been taken on Jake Bowden. Brett messaged me this morning. He said, I must explain to you why I had a 0.2 reaction time yesterday. Hmm. He said, uh, I told my wrist to, <laughs> to, move. to let it go, but it didn't respond. <laughs> I like that. So Brett goes through. Right, I hear engines, but I can't. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, we have got a bike coming through. Well, Jake Bowden was actually down there. Unfortunately, he didn't make it to the line yeah. for round one. Right, so last pair, uh, Grace Pollen, Carl Hester. Now, Carl is down there. Now, we know Grace had issues yesterday because they were after an electric water pump yesterday. But it uh, looks like they may have got that one sorted. Just going to say as well, that match between Phil, uh, Phil Bratton and Gary Hester. They were one or two in the championship not that long yeah. ago, weren't they? So it's Carl Hester down there this time. 
in the Kestrel Lane with the 1065 and a 975 for Grace. There's a pedestrian in the way. <laughs> yeah, someone's standing <laughs> in the way. <laughs> oh dear. So, Grace Pollen, uh, her first for her first meeting in ET Bike. Obviously, came from Junior Drag Bike last year. Runner up in the championship. Oh, fish tailing away there, nicely recovered, and now pulling away from Carl. Well, she's not going to break out. Yeah, she's looking over her shoulder, making sure she doesn't, and she takes the round win as well. 1067 and a 975. Wouldn't normally get it done. But uh, trouble for Carl in the other lane uh, meant that uh, Grace managed to get it done. The other thing as well we've got to say, the difference between running in junior drag bike and running in yeah. ET bike is the tree. That's a coat and a half, isn't it? Look at what, that. What, a dry road? <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're great. Right, round one at Pro ET, 16 pairs. Interesting matchups. Uh, the one we've got to pick out is um, John Bean and, and Freddie. Now, Freddie's driving the blue Ford Capri, and Freddie is the crew chief for John Bean in the pits. Cracking. <laughs> and uh, yeah, all the whooping and hollering and all the excitement for John Bean yesterday was him. Uh, well, <laughs> no, it was. Uh, I went to see John last night to sort of you know, check in on him. Yeah, really, really happy, but. Uh, they were tearing the engine down because oh. the bottom of the distributor, you know, that little gear, yep. sheared off. And uh, all of the bits had gone into the engine. Mm. So they had to literally strip the engine down, get all the bits out, replace that gear. And, well, they had to get the gear first, but John Sleeth had all the bits. So obviously had somebody out, they met halfway, get all the bits together, get, come back to the track. And they couldn't start the engine up this morning until 9 o'clock fire it up make sure everything's okay drop the oil just make sure there's nothing yeah. more in it fill it back up again and get it into the lights <laughs> what i love about that is that uh, you said that's his crew chief he's going to be racing around yeah that. so he went to extraordinary lengths to nobble his opposition in round one yeah by busting his own car yeah yeah so he's, 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 he's the bloke yeah. in the lane had to fix it for him isn't that nice <laughs> uh, i think i heard a, uh, it's a little bit of radio chatter the reason we're not starting just yet i think we're waiting for one or two people uh, to join the queue at the back of uh, Pro ET. I well, that could be. <laughs> could it be could John. be John. Yeah, it could be John. Um, well, let's have a look <coughs> in the lanes. Uh, well, Super Pro in the lanes. We've already called them, I think. They look pretty full. There's obviously one or two on the way down. I think we're just about ready to go anyway. Well, um, I'm looking for two blue cars. Uh, maybe, maybe they're not there just yet, but uh, yeah, every opportunity. Yeah, got to say about uh, Mark Huxley and Spud last night, that was just... It started off, like, obviously, we did our last qualifying run, and then Mark came round, and, of course, being a passenger ride for Spud, Mark Huxley did a stonking burnout mm. right across the start line, but obviously he's not used to doing that, because probably to you can't not burn out to, across yeah. the start line, but no, he did it. Reverse back as fast as Freddie Fagerstrom <laughs> with the door open. Nice. And they proceeded to run uh, a perfect light and uh, yeah just cracking run uh, and Spud absolutely loved it yeah he's now working out how he can get himself a race car I'm <laughs> yeah. sure that's what happens to most people yeah. isn't it so your first pair rolling underneath the tower going to be Mark Huxley and Adrian Portelli with that racking looking nostalgia super stock dodge well, it makes you wonder if Spud's still in the car, actually, because that was Mark's first ever perfect light, and he did it with a passenger. Yeah, will keep him, keep him there for <laughs> good luck. <laughs> so, 9.81. We're gonna, I, I predict we're going to see some serious old breakouts this morning, um, especially if Junior Drags does anything to go by. Yeah. Um, Adrian Portelli with a bit of reg number six. Wonder why it's called that. Any ideas? No. Okay. Uh, in the Kestrel lane, 10.90 for him and a 9.81 for the Candu Corolla. 
So Adrian Portelli will be going first by just a smidge over a second. And it's going to be Mark Huxley into round number two as Adrian Portelli unfortunately puts a cherry on the tree. Yeah, it was well publicised that Mark pulled a perfect, perfect rash to just face away from the to the tree. Right on the money with the dial in no four mark. He would have been difficult to get around with an 05 light and a two hundredth off his dial in. Great match up in round one. They're going to have lots of them, let's face it. Nick Muggeridge and Warren Watts. And Nick Muggeridge is one of those that's got every chance of breaking out by a mile. Um, he openly admits that sometimes he's, he has a little too much fun trying to dial it in and predict what it's going to run. And someone with the amount of bracket racing experience he has, that says a lot. 10.15 is what he's looking for in the Slick Tricks lane. 9.13 for Warren Watts. He'll be round again in a little while in Supercom, no matter what happens here. Nick is way, 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 way out in front. Is he going to back off? Perfect. There we go. He did, actually. Only 119 miles an hour. That's the way to do it. Had a good lead on the tree as well. Warren was bang on his dial in as well. Wasn't a whole shot win, but um, not far off. Harley J dials 8.8 in the DKM construction pickup truck. 37 for Mr. Molden. Yeah. So is this a new engine? For, is it exactly the same engine? Uh, no, version, the, the other it, engine was destroyed. Yeah, no, no, but what I mean is, is it the same engine, just a newer version of, if you see what I mean? Oh, just that's a, a good just, question. Sorry, just that a really, I'm not sure. I'm guessing the way the car's running, it probably is. Right, yeah. Oh, Bob goes red, so he's going to be Harley J. Despite aiming for the centre line, having to back out a bit, Harley J gets the win. Well, after the uh, the struggles the team had even getting here this weekend, oh. that must be it. <laughs> and a breakout for Bob as well. 9.35? That's got to be one of his <laughs> quickest ever. Uh, 140 miles an hour as well. It's 140 mile an hour Peugeot too. Oh, well. <laughs> This could be a great one as well. Stevie Gates and Amy Watkins. This is first Stevie's first race proper in the Camaro, in the Kestrel Lane. He dials an 8.58 this morning. I think that might still be quite conservative, to be honest with you. Because uh, I think he went 8.59 yesterday with a headwind, and we got a lovely tailwind, and it's cooler this morning. Uh, up against Amy Watkins. Amy was number three qualifier. She's been doing this a long while with that Firebird. Pretty damn good at it, too. Yeah, she's adjusted the dial in. She's normally in the, what, nine... 52, 53s, but puts a 49 on the board this morning. So Amy's going to go first in the Slick Tricks lane by almost a second. I don't think Stevie Gates is used to running people down. He's going to have to get used to it quite quickly if he's yeah. going to run this car in Pro ET all the time. Oh, my word. I was just going to say that was either... Well, he's gone sailing by. Yeah, he's, Steve Gates is way out in front if he doesn't break out. Oh, he's got he it. he doesn't. <coughs> well, 
For some reason, yeah, 10.02, Amy clicked it off way before the finish line. I don't know whether... I, it looked like Amy actually had issues uh, most of the way up. It didn't run like it normally would. Anyway, congratulations to Stevie Gates. First ever win and a 007 light. Welcome to Pro ET in style. Well, he's been in Pro ET with that car. You know yeah. what I mean? All right, Lee Morris, the green with envy. Jaguar E-Type could have worn Pro ET number one this year. but no, This he's... could be a final round. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, easily. Uh, Simon Innes with the Plum Crazy Racing Barracuda. Um, my first ever perfect run I commentated on in the UK Is that right? last year with uh, Simon Innes. Perfect. Uh, so there you go. Light and a perfect ET at the same time. Oh. Got his work cut out here to try and get round your defending champion, Lee Morris. Yeah, Lee's out in front and he's backing off. And 10.34, look at that. You can see the difference in the numbers. That was a whole shot win for Lee Morris. 003 on the tree. Simon was a little bit late for him. Uh, like Colin said, he's made a perfect run before, so a .18 is a little out of character for him. But uh, still. So, Reuben Dawson. Is this going to be Reuben Dawson's first ever race as well? In this car, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, he, you know, he did some runs last year. No, but I mean, uh, in, a, in a competition, like, as in Pro ET or uh, yes. in National yeah. Championship yeah, cars. Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay. Well, he's up against the sl Mr. Slugsess himself, Dougie McClure. In the slick through lane. He's got to wait a long time as well. 11.46 for Doug McClure. 2.36 seconds later, the green will come on for the Copo. Lots of wheel spin off the start line for Reuben that time. That won't be a 9.10 and I don't think he's going to catch Dougie either. He doesn't. Still goes 9.45 though, 147. Uh, 11.56 on a 46 for Dougie McClure and an 07 light. Good job, sir. Reuben will have to wait another, or well, might not necessarily another day, but for another round of racing for his first ever round win. That was Ruben's vehicle before his Copo. <laughs> Has he kept it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, 888. Wow. Dave, Dave Crowhurst. That is, that is astonishing, darling. If that's the case, would that be his first ever eight-second run? No, I think, think he's been there before. You reckon? I, I, okay. I'm not 100%, but... Uh, Wow. Uh, Mason Griffiths with the sour grape looking for 11.50. And uh, Dave has probably got all the nitrous he can get his hands on in there to run the 888. Well, that's a good thing about bracket racing. You don't need to run that quick. Yeah. However, some people really like the whole idea of chasing someone down at the top end. Like that. That's going to be really close. close. Dave's going to get there. Oh, and he 55. Break out of the day wow. so far. <laughs> oh my word! And 156 <laughs> miles an hour. He was never going to win that one though. If you look at the numbers, because yeah. he was a bit late on the tree. Uh, and 06 for Mason. He's been doing this a while, obviously. Uh, and 11:58. But uh, congratulations to Dave Crow. That's 8:55. 156. Not quite sure they expected that. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, that was a cracking run. Love that. I don't think I've ever seen that car turn an 8 before. It's a run an 8.5. It's not bad. Okay, the Taz pickup of Hans van der Speck. In the Kestrel lane. And another Huxley. If one don't get you, the other two or three will. Um, Darren.
Darren went 0 2 red, unfortunately. Hans van der Speck will take that one no matter what he runs. He was point five on the tree. Darren's not going to look at that timing ticket. And uh, at the top end, Hans van der Speck goes 11 0 3. Okay, Neil Watkins. Is Dave Rudd down there? Oh yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Just not move forward because they're doing a little bit of sweeping out there on the start line. Um, Dave's one of the real good guys at keeping everybody up to date on uh, social media with what's going on. He said he just had a bit of an off day yesterday, which is un very, very unlike him, very unlike the car. And knowing Neil Watkins luck, Dave will probably nail it in round one. Mm. Uh, still dials a 9.65, which is about what he was trying for yesterday. But the car just not running as close as he wanted to uh, to where it should. So Neil will go first with 11.33. Neil goes red. Dave Rudd will be moving on to round two. That was a 001 red, and Dave Rudd's reaction time was 0.39. Two races in a row where they really won't like the time set. Well, Dave Rudd's closer to his dialing, at least. Yeah, Neil Watkins with a 001 red. That's going to smart. All right, Matthew Dowdy and uh, Dave Cherry. I had a chat with Matthew this morning, saying about you know, his, his runs yesterday. The car just feels so, so good. Of course it will. He's going quicker. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But no, very, very happy indeed. Uh, there's loads more in it. Good. Uh, there, you know, he was like a little left in off at just like 1,200 foot. He wasn't going all so the way what through. Was, what did the engine run in the other car it was in? 10... That's always a good start. No, no, that's fine. About 10, 8, I think it was. Excellent. Right, so Dave Cherritt, your number one qualifier, is Matthew's opponent here. Oh, and it's Dave Cherritt going red. Three so red Matthew in Dowdy row. is into round number two. Off by 11.13. Well, he keeps finding more. He's still not stretching the legs completely yet, but uh, well done to Matthew. I think he must have seen the red light, so he, yeah, he, he would have just drive yeah. it out the door, yeah. That is, though, that's three red lights in a row in the right-hand lane. Well, the same remaining Watkins in competition is coming up now with Doris. However, he's got none other than Mr. Dave Fulton. Yeah, this, and this as uh, Dave Fulton comes up to line, many happy returns to Macy Fulton today. So uh, a big awesome. happy birthday to Macy. I was just going to say, Dave said happy birthday to me the other day, so I've got to be nice to him now officially. Can't <laughs> call him Don't Lift Dave anymore. Right, he's going to go nine, well, he's dialing in 9.33, excuse me. He's going to be chased down, possibly, by the big dodge. And it is Dave Fulton into round number two. Tom Watkins, unfortunately, goes red. See what Dave runs now. I'm 29. Um, right, bit of advice, folks. Don't choose the right-hand lane, because everyone goes red in the right-hand lane. That's now four in a row. We're trying to set some sort of record this morning, I think. Laura Baton, Tom K. Your next pair. Just kidding, of course. Ah. But it's just been um, no John Bean. Oh, oh and that's the end of the class, is it? Yeah. Who should he be racing? Uh, Fred, the, the next pair. Oh, sorry. Okay. So um, Andrew Brook has come in as an alternate. Oh, it's Laura Baton and Tom Kay. Green light race. Tom proves. Whoa, Tom doing a wiggle. Yeah. 
That's that was it. He's still got his foot in it though. And he still takes the win. Maybe he's just struggling on speed. Who knows? Um, 10.26 and the 22 takes the win. Breakout from Laura in the other lane. Um, yeah, Laura was never going to win that one. Although she's probably looking out the window going, what are you doing? Seriously, we're not a slalom racing. Uh, Sportsman ET, into the pairing lanes, please. Sportsman ET, please. Come on down. Well, so, it should have been John Bean down there against uh, Freddie Thompson, but uh, as we alluded to earlier on, there was uh, engine issues uh, for uh, John Bean after his amazing day yesterday. Uh, the gear dropped off the bottom of the distributor, went into the engine, so uh, frantically trying to get it all sorted out. But it wasn't to be. So, uh, Freddie Thompson, first alternate here, Andrew Brook. Well, so this is his first, Andrew Brook's first ever race as well. I don't think he's going to quite get there in time. He breaks out as well, goes 9.25. Good effort, though, sir. Well done, get your license. Running that quickly as well. So, a win for the Capri. I uh, give real big commiserations to uh, to John Bean after all. I mean, you can never overstate what a Herculean effort it is yeah. for all of these teams to do what they do. But so happy with the way the car was running yesterday. It was unbelievable. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he floored it, it was, oh, look, blue sky. Yeah. More blue sky. Oh, there's still blue sky. <laughs> so, Brett Featherston and Ronnie Mercer. Once again, this should be a late round matchup, not round one. Uh, Ronnie was a higher qualified driver here. Brett, a little bit off his usual game yesterday. However, previous pro ET yeah. champ. Yeah, good mates actually, these two. Uh, but the friendship is just put on hold for the next uh, nine or ten seconds. Did not get off the line at all. Instant spin. He's not going to catch Ronnie. His best hope is Ronnie's going to break out. Oh. Which he does. <laughs> go blimey, that was a bit too close. Oh. <laughs> Anyone's liking. Yeah, 37 on a 34. Well done to Ronnie Mercer. Yeah, Ronnie would have been pretty tough to beat anyway, let's yeah. face it. Right, Vic Parsons. Uh... On his own, no Jack McClure, unfortunately, with Goldilocks. So Vicky's going to get a bye. Vic Darling in a 9.82, he'll try and run that. Ten oh four, hundred thirty-five. 135. So Don Scott um, should have been taking on Frankie, who did actually get a licence yesterday. He did, yeah. Uh, but no Frankie for round one this morning, unfortunately. That's a shame. Yeah, well done to uh, Frankie for getting that uh, licence all sorted out yesterday. Don goes through matchups for round two. Then we'll see Matthew Dowdy taking on Mark Huxley. Lee Morris will be taking on Freddie Thompson, Stevie Gates, and Harley J. Darby. That should be a good one. Stevie Gates and Harley J. They're two eight second good. cars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Doug McClure taking on Don Scott. Just seen go through here. Uh, Tom Kay's got Ronnie Mercer. Dave Fulton has got Mason Griffiths. Uh, Nick Mugridge will be taking on uh, Dave Rudd. And then Hans van der Speck taking on Vic Parsons. 
Right, next up then, it is Super Pro ET. Many thanks indeed to Rich Walters for dropping off the uh, 2024 sponsors list, which this year is AJS Bodyworks, A Leak Roofing, Orders Automotive, Another Small Left Limited, The Bath Bloke, BG Motors, Copy Print Depot, Fenny Racing, Garage Thomas Haas, Good Vibration Motorsports, Giles and Hartley, Giles Services Limited, Harry's Coachwork and Pit Equipment, Hauser Race Cars, Holly Walters Dental, HR Racing, Hydra Hose, JK Farzik Technic, Mersh Manifold's new one for this year, MJC Property Solutions, Pete Walters Race Design, Plain Racing, Premier Rosettes, s &B Racing, Solo Precision, Swinney & Son, Team Time Is Money, Ultra Plastics Limited, Walters Motorsport, Windscreen Wizards, and Joe Kellett Racing. So, finally got those out without having to rush it and no engines running in the background. That's right, because we're doing track prep <laughs> because they're coming round in a moment. Uh, the main um, award this weekend is £200 and a trophy for the event winner. So, some extra pennies in the pot, whoever wins. Uh, off the trailer is a 50 quid bonus and a medal, and that went to Scott Hauser. And number one qualifier. £100 and another medal, also going to Scott Hauser. So uh, Scott's already taken 150 quid from the sponsorship scheme. And whoever gets the event win, another 200 quid up for grabs. So uh, very, very good indeed uh, for the Super Pro scheme. Excellent. So, yeah, we're doing uh, a little bit of track prep because these cars are a bit quicker and faster. Uh, we're going to be cracking through, Colin. What's the what's the run order as well? Just to let everyone out there know. Uh, yep, we're on to Super Pro ET now. We've got Sportsman ET after that, which is one of our big classes. Uh, we've got Top Fuel Bike Exhibition, and then into qualifying for Comp Eliminator and Super Comp. It's their last qualifiers. Street Eliminator got their first round eliminations. Then we've got loads of qualifying. Uh, Super Street Bike, Funny Bike, Comp Bike, 850 Bike, 950 Bike, Junior Drag Bike and super gas okay so uh, and they'll be going into eliminations a yeah later apart on. from uh 950 bike they'll have one more because there's okay. only, only three of them. i was just going to say the reason for that the reason for that uh, some classes are actually racing already and others are still putting in a, uh, an extra qualifying run maybe is because of the amount of cars or bikes yeah. in that class so the the fields that you see that we always run first on race days are the field of 32 so there's 32 car field and it works like a tournament uh, a tennis tournament, if you're 32, down to 16, down to 8, down to 4, down to 2. And then you, uh, the, whoever wins the final in that class is the winner of the event in that class as well. So um, we'll stop yapping for just a moment. We'll give Nitro FM the airwaves if that's okay with you. Won't be too long at all. Um, the Gluebird's just doing uh, a few sweeps of the racetrack. It'll only be a minute or two at the very much. So back as soon as we can. Six degrees this morning, <laughs> right? And we're still doing this, yeah. obviously. Uh, 17 bikes is the answer to your question. Okay. Oh, well, Justin Moulton fair to say just did not get off the line there at all. So Dave Grundy looking for a 1062, safely through with a 1083. 50. And Peter, 11 flat. Peter going, <laughs> taking the long way around. Making sure he's going right. I love the way that Kyle's just casually wandering up there, making sure he doesn't go too quick. He does, he takes it. His first ever round win. Well done, Kyle. Right, Nick Bladen, 11.35, darling. So it will be Nick going first. We have Super Pro ET into the lanes, please. Super Pro ET, we can have you into the lanes, please. Uh, Chris is going to do a real good job to catch Nick without breaking out. Oh, it's a breakout. It's a double breakout. Goodness Whoa. me, that was <laughs> a squeaker. 
Leo Lester, Scott Smith, your next pair. Um, now then, it's a 10.85 pairing here. Basically heads up racing their own dialing class, yeah? Yep. Leo Lester took the stripe. Uh, now I think, yeah, uh, Phil Pratt will be leaving first here. That's most unusual. A very unusual. He's yeah. one of the well, he, the light's going to run first. He might yeah. not necessarily leave first. Oh, I think so. Yeah. That, I think he's got every chance of doing it. Let's put it that way. Let's see how this one pans out. Not bad at all. Uh, now the thing is, for Phil, he knows how to drive the finish line. When light comes on in, oh. Phil's lane. That's on a whole shot. shot. Yeah. For our first meeting in ET Bike, obviously came from Junior Drag Bike last year. Runner up in the championship. Oh, fish tailing away there, nicely recovered, and now pulling away from Carl. Which well, is not going to break out. Yeah, she's looking over her shoulder, making sure she doesn't, and she takes the round win as well. 1067 on a 975. Wouldn't normally get it done, but uh, trouble for Carl in the other lane. We'll be going first by just a smidge over a second. And it's going to be Mark Huxley into round number two as Adrian Portelli unfortunately puts a cherry on the tree. Yeah, it was well publicised that Mark pulled a perfect, perfect rash as I just based on the three. Despite the amount of bracket racing experience he has, that says a lot. 10.15 is what he's looking for in the Slick Tricks lane. 9.13 for Warren Watts. He'll be round again in a little while in Supercom, no matter what happens here. Predicted Nick is way, 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 way out in front. Is he going to back off? Perfect. There we go. He did actually. Only 119 miles an hour. That's the way to do it. Oh, Bob goes red. So he's going to be Harley J. Despite aiming for the centre line, having to back out a bit. Harley J gets the win. Well, after the uh, the struggles the team had even getting here this weekend, oh. that must be it. <laughs> and a breakout for Bob as well. I don't think Stevie Gates is used to running people down. He's going to have to get used to it quite quickly if he's yeah. going to run this car in Pro ET all the time. Oh, my word. I was just going to say that was either... Well, he's gone sailing by. Yeah, he's, Steve Gates is way out in front if he doesn't break out. Oh, he's he got it. <coughs> well, for some reason, yeah, 10.02, Amy clicked it off way before the finish line. I don't Right, Lee Morris, the green with envy, Jaguar E-Type, could have worn Pro ET number one this year, but no, This he's... could be a final round. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, easily. Uh, Simon Innes with the Plum Crazy okay, Racing well, Barracuda. So um, that my first well ever perfect run that. I commentate. <laughs> um, that has to be one of the best cover versions of the last 20 years. I love that song. It's... Well, <laughs> ghosts are pretty damn good anyway, but covering Jesus... Have you watched the video, Pete? Yeah, never mind. I can't let my kids watch that one, but they watch the, the, the other one. That's their favourite song as well. That's my kids' favourite song. Very, very good indeed. If you didn't know, that was Ghost covering Jesus, He Knows Me by Genesis, but way better than Genesis did it, and I'm allowed to say that because I've got a microphone. Anyway, so we're back on with, um, <laughs> back on with Super Pro ET. You can disagree with me, I just can't hear you. Right, here we go then. Bob Doyle and Tom Atkinson, your first pair in Super Pro. Uh, how many cars do we have qualifying Super Pro, Carl? 17, Four. I think you said, wasn't it? 17. So, we're one over 16. 
but we will run it as a 32 car exactly ladder. Exactly that. Which makes a huge difference. Well, how does that matter points wise? Well, it's another round of points for okay. a start. Uh, it makes 10 points difference on qualifying because obviously it's an other car, so yep. uh, number one qualifier would get 170 instead of 160. Uh, but yeah, it's another round, so of that's racing. another 100 points difference between the event winner and anybody that goes out in round one. So this is the sort of thing, again, I know we're talking about this on the first pair of the year, kind of thing that can make a massive oh, difference huge. at the end of the yeah. season, you know? If, if only 16 cars qualify, I say only, that's still a lot, but if 16 cars qualified, it, it'd be a different, uh, it's a different thing. Deary me. I think Bob Doyle's got the lead. He's way out in front. And oh, he breaks, he breaks out. out. Oh. Bob Doyle had that nailed down. He was 006 on the three. He was way out in front. Tom Atkinson wasn't exactly slow. He was 08 on the tree. But he was the right side of his dial. He went 848 and a 45. Bob Doyle took the strike by 0.14. That's a lot of wriggle room in English. All right. Comp eliminator. 30 minute warning. Comp eliminator. 30 minute warning for you guys. Right, Callum Swinchat, Andy Thetford, your next pair. Well, Andy went straight into the sevens yesterday, went a 7.80. Uh, he does a 7.60 this time. So, Callum, 8.93 with a small block altered. Oh, and happy retirement as well to Chris. Did you see the uh, retirement post? I didn't, know. I Funny enough, I bumped into Chris when uh, we both arrived at the track at the same time on uh, on Friday. Well, this is, I think, probably going to be the first time he's ever come here and he ain't going to go back to work. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be weird. So Andy Thetford with the door car. The turbo door car. I think that's car's got the potential to go way quicker than 760 even. We shall see. Here we go. Callum's going to go first. Well, Callum is going to get there first, but Andy Thetford's on a really good run too. 894, 769 for Andy. 178 miles an hour. Unfortunately, the half second reaction time was his undoing, but still a great weekend for the Black Pearl. Really nice looking run from Callum as well, though. Yeah, Andy's car really is, is still smoking in the shutdown area. I'm sure the track crew are going to be checking that out. And smoke is. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, he, he, he made the, did turn the same off. thing yesterday, actually. Okay. So, Colin Morris and oh, Ashley Bell. Uh, I don't know whether I should mention this, but Colin Redlit, I think, three out of three times yesterday in qualifying. But it is only qualifying, so it don't matter. Also, I don't think Ashley Bell really... Oh, he did get one pretty good run down the track. He went uh, 8.91. That was an 860 today. I think that's just a new injector on top there, isn't it? Yeah, it? It not used to seeing that, actually. It just looks... Uh, oh, where's that come from? It looks cool. Thing, it? Yeah, it works. I'm still waiting for someone to tell me whose pro stock car that used to be. Because I bet it was. Not with those wheelie bars on it, obviously, but um, I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. You can tell it's a cold day when they fog up the start line when yeah. they stand on the two-step. <laughs> well, Colin didn't go red that time, and he's way out in front as well. Doesn't break out, which he doesn't. 882 on a 76, takes the win. Uh, 897 for Ashley Bell, chipping away at it. Tough match up here then, Alan. Did well, your uh, reigning champ.
Well, apologies for that, folks. A little bit of a power outage in the tower, uh, which has knocked a few systems out, but not all of them. So, although we still had timing, we didn't have a tree. Uh, obviously, we had no PA system then. I think the uh, thing from is, the tower, anyway. There's a little gremlin in here that's got a BS filter, and when we've just talked too much, it just goes naff. Yeah. Cuts everything. <laughs> Unfortunately, we know where it is. We're just going to give it a poke, and it starts. Yeah. Again, so it's okay. It's all right. But anyway, yeah. What it does is it knocks. Um, it, it doesn't just knock the PA out. It knocks the tree out as well. So, um, apologies for the silence. Although you're probably enjoying it. Um, that's why we had to push back. Uh, Lee Huxley. What a matchup for round one. Lee Huxley and uh, Alan Dibwell, because we couldn't run the tree. So, yeah, a bit of a, like, a, a Control-Alt-Delete. But as you said, uh, what a cracking matchup in round one. Uh, I was just about to say, uh, defending champion against previous champion in all forms of <laughs> racing. Oh, hello. Yeah, it's the first time Alan did well. Hasn't ever paid to get into a race. Yeah. Good point. What I mean by one that... One of the first just... times Lee actually has got a race. <laughs> yeah, good point. Reheating the tyres properly. Yeah, what we're talking about is when you win a national championship in the UK, um, you get a gratis entry into all championship rounds the following season. So um, while it doesn't actually pay any hard cash, it's as good as because you don't race for free. Uh, and I think someone like Stu Doyne, he didn't pay for tapes for racing various classes for years. Four years he didn't pay in two classes. So just just remember, he doubled up in Supercop oh. and Supergas four years in a row. There was a, there was a smidge of a chance as well, because he wasn't paying to enter or to get in, and he was winning so much, yeah. he was getting paid when he won. So he might uh. have even been <laughs> in the black. Cash you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm a bit skint at the moment. I need to go racing and earn yeah. some money. Hey, how does that work? Anyway, Lee Huxley, Alan Dibwell. Uh, Lee were 899. That's not where he would normally be with the dial-in. We're the dark horse. Alan's bang on his bang on the money, the usual anyway. 767. It's green light race. We always like to see. Very close indeed as well. Yeah, 776 takes it up. Well. 9.25 there for Lee Huxley, but it is Alan Dibwell goes through. But Lee. The car just not quite running where it normally would. I think that was the problem there. So Lee didn't quite have the power to drive the stripe like he normally would. Uh, but Alan calls him. Alan backed off. Only 156 miles an hour. Yeah. And he did a good job of it as well. Uh, he took the stripe by 0.14. It's a kind of comfy win margin you want in bracket racing. So, your next pair, blown car against nostalgia car. Well, they're both actually nostalgia cars because one's a fiber. Um, in the Kestrel Lane, dialing 760 again, Jack Brewster. Let's see if he pedals it in the same place to run 760. Up against the ball breaker, Mark Corsell. He was number seven. They dialed an 830 this morning. Um, let's see whether they get their Bob number, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what must be really hard about mornings like this morning? Is you dial, you want to win a race, you want to win the race. But you know the conditions are so good that if you keep your boot in it, you're going to run your quickest run ever. What do you do? Exactly. So Mark's going to go first, chased down by uh, that big Pontiac. You can ask Mark when he comes around to hang your doors, mate. Did he want to go really <laughs> fast or did he want to win? There you go. <laughs> now, plenty of time to chat over a cup of tea. Yeah. While he fills it with wood shavings. <laughs> Jack Brewster was looking at the wrong side of the tree. Well, Mark can now run it all the way out if he wants to. Yeah, 27. <laughs> Well, Jack went, I think Jack made Mark Hulsell jump. This is 
why Mark sat there for a, a long time, actually longer than he should have done. The thing is, though, the way the blinders work on the tree. <laughs> JT, that was rather mild. Um, yeah, what I'm talking about is when you're sat in a race car, there's uh, a big strip of metal down the middle of the tree, which means you cannot see the lights counting down on your opponent's side of the racetrack. So what it means is, is well, you don't get one, you don't get distracted. And uh, unfortunately, Jack Brewster did that time. They still had a great weekend. He still had a real good seven second run. Door car against Dragster again. 898 for JT in the Slick Tricks lane with the Crew Killer. And Alan Schofield, 780. That yeah, might be a bit pessimistic for this morning, actually. You never know. <laughs> These are personal best conditions. Nice and cool with a tailwind. Alan's going to have caught him by 3.30 yet. Is he doing that on purpose? Oh, dearie <laughs> me. He just shadowed him all the way down. Oh, dear. Uh, JT was looking at the tree for a long while. That was a very, very, very green light, that was. But Al Schofield wanted the round win, so what he did was he left the line... Caught John Tebenham up and just kept tickling the throttle to make sure he stayed in front of him all the way down. So he got there first but didn't break out. He cut it a bit too close. Look at the wind margin. Wind margin is 0 2. So, dragster against Blamange this time. What is these? Look. <laughs> it even wobbles like one. Dave Russell, not his normal clockwork weekend. Uh, best of 10.22, and this is an eight-second wagon. Up against uh, Matt Pieces. IIT for the door car. Van, sorry. 769 for the digger. Well, that looks a lot more like it for Dave Russell. Ooh, That's he's close at the strike. Way out in front. Dave Russell takes the win. Um, big margin at the stripe as well, 0.18. He was good on both ends. He was quicker on the tree. And he went 882 and an 880. There we go. Just because you have one bad day doesn't mean it's going to continue into eliminations, does it? Well, it's still to come. Mark Bailey and Steve Saunders. Uh, Barry Giles taking on AC Bell. And Scott Hauser on a bye run. Can't see Barry Giles. I can see AC. I think yeah, Barry Giles is down okay. there. Yeah. See him there. Perry Lane's chocker block. So, Super Pro ET got Sportsman ET to uh, follow. And uh, then we get into Top Fuel Bike and Comp Eliminator. A little bit of sledding at the moment. So, a quick time check on Easter Sunday. Course to 11 in the morning. Well, three minutes to go before you reach that moment, but you know what I mean.
don't think it's that many actually. Oh, problems for Liam. Spun the tyre off the start line and the bike broke down. It, as long as Robbie Dobby doesn't break out, I don't think he's going to be backed off. Yeah, 10 18. The win for the Super Penguin. What I was going to say, 15 or 18 degrees in Pomona, it's 6 degrees this morning, <laughs> right? And we're still doing this, yeah. obviously. Uh, 17 bikes is the answer to your question. Okay. Oh, well, Justin Morton fair to say, just did not get off the line there at all. So Dave Grundy looking for a 10.62, safely through with a 10.83. 50. And Peter, 11 flat. Where's Peter going? <laughs> Taking the long way around. Making sure he's going all right. I love the way that Kyle's just casually wandering up there, making sure he doesn't go too quick. He does. He takes it. His first ever round win. Well done, Kyle. I think Bladen. 11.35, darling. So it will be Nick going first. We have Super Pro ET into the lanes, please. Super Pro ET, we can have you into the lanes, please. Uh, Chris is going to do a real good job to catch Nick without breaking out. Oh, it's Whoop. a breakout. It's a double breakout. Goodness Whoa. me, that was <laughs> a squeaker. Leo Lester, Scott Smith, your next pair. Um, now then, it's a 10.85 pairing here. Basically heads up racing their own dialing class, yeah? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Leo Lester took the stripe. Uh, now I think, yeah, uh, Phil Pratt. we are back and uh, hopefully our power issues are sorted out in the tower unfortunately it just kept tripping well, I think that's actually a <laughs> thank you very much yeah. um, <laughs> that, that was actually obviously a family of gremlins not just the one yeah we kicked, kicked one out and the others thought oh they can't do that to our buddy so uh, yeah uh, but we are back and uh, fingers crossed if you if everything suddenly stops um, but obviously we can't communicate, you know, we have a power issue. Yeah, if every site stops and people get shut off for no apparent reason, it tends to be a gremlin at the yeah. moment, unfortunately. So, we have AC Bell and Barry Giles. Um, two more pairs, Cole, is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, two pairs and a solo. Obviously, you've got uh, Scott Hauser on the bye. Okay. By virtue of being number one qualifier Indeed, in the odd yeah. lot field. We'll have the odd buy here and there throughout the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, well, we can see. It's all good. So, yeah, Barry Giles, 7.52. I wonder how they work out the, uh, the shared driving in that car. What do you reckon? Well, we know Barry's doing this one. We know that the festival... Uh, yeah, the new festival of power. Uh, we've got Daniel Giles driving. Green light for AC, green light for Barry Giles. Race on. AC's been having fun trying to run 899. Barry's been on the money all weekend. It's Barry who takes the win, yeah. AC just a little bit too far off the number. Uh, he was quicker on the tree, though. Win margin for Barry Giles, 0.13. So 
So, right. Stevie Saunders with that beautiful, beautiful rusty dog. Yeah, and uh, has uh, managed to raid uh, all the bicycle repair kits and got his uh, punctures fixed. That monumental effort. Well done, Stevie yeah, well and done. the gang. So good to have him back again. So good. Going alongside Mark Bailey with the Barracuda underneath us. Eight seventy-six. Uh, Darling, for Mark Bailey, he'll be going first. But oh, dearie me, that's not what we like to see at all. No, not at all. A uh, big splat out the bottom. Unfortunately, after the burnout for Steve Saunders, uh, at least it only happened while he was sitting there. You can see the trail. Unfortunately, after the burnout, that will take a little bit of clearing up. I do hope that's not terminal. I hope that's something really simple that's just gone. Just gone pop. Anyway, Mark Bailey on a buy run. Very bouncy buy run. Having a couple of yes no moments with that. Well, commiserations to Steve and Babs. Yeah, something uh, something went a little awry in the burnout. Uh, Stevie got it stopped and uh, clicked it off as soon as possible. But uh, a very disappointing end to uh, a very trying first weekend back at the racetrack uh, for Steve and Babs, unfortunately. Well, just one more car to come in uh, Super Pro, which is uh, Scott Hauser on a by run. And then it will be Sports and ET. But as I say, uh, we have got a, a clean up on the start line there uh, for uh, for Steve Saunders. So uh, what we'll do is hand over to Nitro FM 96.2. Quickly oh, before we do, very quickly before we do, Steve's in the car. He can hear you. Please give him your biggest round of applause just to warm his heart slightly on a freezing cold morning. Come on, everybody. Everybody in the grandstands, on the banking, all five of you. And on the start line, come on, we're, it's just, we know how hard you work. It's heartbreaking. It really, really is. Um, Steve, Babs, sorry. Yeah. Well, Steve's in one piece, the car's in mostly one piece, and um, we hope it's nothing serious, but uh, great effort. We will hand out to, over to Nitro FM um, for a moment, and uh, we'll be back with you, obviously, as soon as we can. think yeah uh phil pratt will be leaving first here that's most unusual very unusual yeah. he's one of the well he the light's gonna run first he might yeah. not necessarily leave first oh, we i have think to say yeah that. and he's got every chance of doing it let's put it that way let's see how this one pans out not bad at all uh now the thing is for phil he knows how to drive the finish line when light comes on him oh. phil's lane <laughs> That's oh, a whole shot. shot. Yeah. For our first meeting in ET Bike. Obviously came from Junior Drag Bike last year. Runner up in the championship. Oh, fish tailing away there. Nicely recovered. And now pulling away from Carl. Well, she's not going to break out. Yeah, she's looking over her shoulder, making sure she doesn't. And she takes the round win as well. 1067 on a 975. Wouldn't normally get it done. But uh, trouble for Carl in the other lane. We'll be going first by just a smidge over a second. And it's going to be Mark Huxley into round number two as Adrian Portelli unfortunately puts a cherry on the tree. Yeah, it was well publicised that Mark pulled a perfect, perfect reaction drive just based on the three. Despite the amount of bracket racing experience he has, that says a lot. 
10.15 is what he's looking for in the Slick Tricks lane. 9.13 for Warren Watts. He'll be round again in a little while in Supercom, no matter what happens here. Predicted Nick is way, 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 way out in front. Is he going to back off? Perfect. There we go. He did actually. Only 119 miles an hour. That's the way to do it. Oh, Bob goes red. So it is going to be Harley J. Despite aiming for the centre line, having to back out a bit. Harley J gets the win. Well, after the uh, the struggles the team had even getting here this weekend, oh. that must be it. <laughs> and a breakout for Bob as well. I don't think Stevie Gates is used to running people down. He's going to have to get used to it quite quickly if he's yeah. going to run this car in Pro ET all the time. Oh, my word. I was just going to say that was either... Well, he's gone sailing by. Yeah, he's Steve Gates is way out in front if he doesn't break out. Oh, he's not he it. doesn't. <coughs> well, for some reason, yeah, 10.02. Amy clicked it off way before the finish line. I don't... Right, Lee Morris, the green with envy, Jaguar E-Type, could have worn Pro ET number one this year, but no, This he's... could be a final round. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. He doesn't break out. Oh, he's got he it. doesn't. <clears throat> well, for some reason, yeah, 10.02, Amy clicked it off way before the finish line. Right, Lee Morris, the green with envy, Jaguar E-Type, could have worn Pro ET number one this year, but no, This he's... could be a final round. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, easily. Uh, Simon Innes with the Plum Crazy Racing Barracuda. Um, my first ever perfect run I commentated on in the UK Is that right? last year with uh, Simon Innes. Perfect. Uh, so there you go. Light and a perfect ET at the same time. Oh, got his work cut out.
Inter eliminations round number one. So is this going to be E1 for uh, comp? Is it a last? No session? qualifier. Last okay. qualifier. Okay. Um, so James Grew with the big white Turek in the Kestrel lane, fifteen ninety nine, and four. Uh, flick 17.30 so it's gonna be my goodness me how many times you get run down by a Touareg? by a Touareg yeah <laughs> <laughs> well basically Flick is trying to remove the mountain okay. in other words Mont Blanc the, uh, the affectionate name to the Touareg It's green light drag race. As I'm sure they can both hear on the radio in the car. Double breakout, but the win goes to Felicity Gibbs. Broke out by four hundreds uh, compared to eight hundreds by James. So it is Flick into round number two. It's going to be taken on dual medley. Good effort all round. Good race actually as well. 04 win margin. Nice and close. All right, last pair, Alex Pryor with the uh, with the caddy. And Kirsty Tram, I think, is gonna have to wait nine seconds or so off the line. <laughs> <laughs> Before she well, she's, obviously, she's obviously the quickest car in the class. Yeah, and James is the, is the, is, is not is the, the quickest. Slowest, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a proper margin, that is, isn't it? Oh, the tractor's just going out on uh, Castro Lane, just uh, heading up towards the top end. As I say, got one pair in Sportsman ET, <laughs> and uh, then we go into... Uh, Top fuel bike and comp eliminator. Now I don't know if the top fuel bikes have made it down. Uh, super Street are there, but uh, I thought Crossley yesterday on the Imperial Wizard. It was so good to see that bike. That it just looked gorgeous. I mean, what a machine! What I a was. Machine. I think I was there for the debut of that bike over Avon Park back in the early nineties. Um, it was so far ahead of its time. Thirty then. whatever years ago. Uh, it wasn't. It didn't take Brian Johnson long as well. He ran the fourth quickest pass on a bike ever. At one of the events at the end of the season, and it's just a, you know, it's it, it basically that kind of thing epitomises what Phil Cross is doing and what Brian Johnson did, which is blokes doing superhuman stuff in their sheds. Yeah, basically yeah. is what it was. You know, um, you know, not having, not having loads of money, not having. But just having the know-how mm. to work it out, to build it. Well, that was Phil's first ever nitro run as well, and uh, the time out of Tim and everybody involved with that. Well, just, Phil's uh, been gorgeous. super quick already. He's been oh, he has, very, very yeah. low sevens on his own bike, so it's not like he's used to hanging around. No, definitely not. <laughs> well, hopefully, we get to see Phil again anyway. Right, so twenty-one point two compared to twelve flat. Here we go. So the the quickest car in the class, the let's just say it out loud, slowest car in the class. However, because it is a bracket, it's bracket racing. You have to do the best job of running your number. Yeah. Which just happens to be twenty-one point two seconds for the caddy. Or caddy lacking, as I put yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So, off goes Alex. One of Kirstie's now, counts Kirstie's on now fingers, putting her seatbelts on. <laughs> and Kirsty sets off in pursuit. Half See, track look already. At that. For Alex. He looks like he's at the finish line. <laughs> he's gone past a thousand foot. She's just barely made it to half track. He's either going to break out or she's going very slowly. He's broken he's out by broken a long out, way. Yeah. yeah, that's how you do it. Andy Dibley, put your heart back in your throat. That'd be good. 12.06 uh, on the 12 flat. They both had 0 0.17 lights, though. They were both on it on the tree. But um, unbelievably, Alexander with the caddy 
had the biggest breakout of the day so far. He was 0.7 of a second too quick. <laughs> who ever thought? Who ever thought we were going to say that about that car? There we go. So yeah, that was why he was out in front basically, was because he was going too quickly. So it is Compliminator coming around the corner next. Um, it, b bizarrely, it is really tight in comp. I mean, obviously, Nick, uh, with that incredible 798 from yesterday, uh, cemented that number one spot. But second, third, fourth, and fifth, they're all 0.5 uh, Good. under index. So very, be, very, very close indeed. They're all chomping at the bit around there. They said, oh, this is like proper... You know, stock, super stock and everything. They're loving it. Mm. I think we've got a little bit of track prep to do because I can see drivers wandering around as opposed to being in cars. Um, it's not going to be long, don't worry. Um, they're all there and ready to go. We've also got the last qualifying session for Supercomp and I can see the Dolly Golf Cart, which is always a good sign. Which means Lee has got it fixed and the team's got it fixed. Yeah, Dave saved the day. Dave Day had a torque converter and... Uh, just, heard us, just, like dude, yeah. just heard us put it on. Just like you do, spare one. Just heard us put it over the uh, the tunnel yesterday, and Dave Day literally sprinted round to uh, the Kellett Pits. Said, oh, I think I've got what you need here." So now, if I'll if anyone, I mean, honestly, if anyone put a call out for half-eaten old bits of cake in your bag, I'd be straight there. I'd be get yes, look, take my bag, take my bag. I've got loads of things like that. Half-eaten biscuits, um, packets of aspirin, yes. That's what, if that's what you need, <laughs> I'm your bloke. I'm not entirely sure I'd have a torque converter, though, would you? Uh, no, no. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, talking of half-eaten biscuits, I, I fancy one. So, uh, whilst the track crew are doing their thing, the tractor's out there, the glue bird just getting ready to go out. We'll take a break from the commentary for the moment and hand over to Nitro FM 96.2. We will take it back. And we continue oh, with... I don't think it's that massive, oh, actually. Oh, problems for Liam. Spun the tyre off the start line and the bike bogged down. It, as long as Robbie Dobby doesn't break out, I don't think he's going to be backed off. Yeah, 10 18, the win for the Super Penguin. What I was going to say, 15 or 18 degrees in Pomona, it's 6 degrees this morning, <laughs> right? And we're still doing this, yeah. obviously. Uh, 17 bikes is the answer to your question. Okay. Well, Justin Morton fair to say just did not get off the line there at all. So Dave Grundy looking for a 1062 safely through with a 1083. 50. And Peter 11 flat. <coughs> oh, where's Peter going? <laughs> Taking the long way around. Making sure he's going away. I love the way that Kyle's just casually wandering up there, making sure he doesn't go too quick. He does. He takes it. His first ever round win. Well done, Carl. I think Bladen. 11.35, darling. So it will be Nick going first. And we have Super Pro ET into the lanes, please. Super Pro ET, we can have you into the lanes, please. Uh, Chris is going to do a real good job to catch Nick without breaking out. Oh, it's a breakout. It's a double breakout. Goodness Whoa. me, that was a <laughs> squeaker. Leo Lester, Scott Smith, your next pair. Um, now then, it's a 1085 pairing here. Basically heads up racing their own dialing class, yeah? Yep. Leo Lester took the stripe. Uh, now, I think, yeah, uh, Phil Pratt will be leaving first here. That's most unusual. Oh, very unusual, yeah. He's one of the, well, he, the light's going to run first. He might yeah. not necessarily leave first. Oh, I think, so yeah. That, he's got every chance of doing it, let's put it that way. Let's see how this one pans out. Not bad at all. Uh, now, the thing is, for Phil, he knows how to drive the finish line. When light comes on in, oh. Phil's lane. That's on a whole shot. shot. Yeah. For our first meeting in ET Bike, obviously came from Junior Drag Bike last year. Runner-up in the championship. Oh, 
fishtailing away there, nicely recovered, and now pulling away from Carl. Well, she's not going to break out. Yeah, she's looking over her shoulder, making sure she doesn't, and she takes the round win as well. 10.67 and a 9.75. Wouldn't normally get it done, but uh, trouble for Carl in the other lane. We'll be going first by just a smidge over a second. It's going to be Mark Huxley into round number two as Adrian Portelli unfortunately puts a cherry on the tree. Yeah, it was well publicised that Mark pulled a perfect, perfect rash drive yesterday so Adrian always puts the tree. Despite the amount of bracket racing experience he has, that says a lot. 10.15 is what he's looking for in the Slick Tricks lane. 9.13 for Warren Watts. He'll be round again in a little while in Supercom, no matter what happens here. Predicted Nick is way, 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 way out in front. Is he going to back off? Perfect. There we go. He did actually. Only 119 miles an hour. That's the way to do it. Oh, Bob goes red. So he's going to be Harley J. Despite aiming for the centre line, having to back out of it. Harley J gets the win. Well, after the uh, the struggles the team had even getting here this weekend, oh. that must be a... <laughs> and a breakout for Bob as well. I think Stevie Gates is used to running people down. He's going to have to get used to it quite quickly if he's yeah. going to run this car in Pro ET all the time. Oh, my word. I was just going to say that was either... Well, he's gone sailing by. Yeah, he's, Steve Gates is way out in front if he doesn't break out. Oh, he's got he it. doesn't. <coughs> well, for some reason, yeah, 10.02. Amy clicked it off way before the finish line. I Right, Lee Morris, the green with envy, Jaguar E-Type, could have worn Pro ET number one this year, but no, This could be a final round. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, easily. Uh, Simon Innes with the Plum Crazy Racing Barracuda. Um, my first ever perfect run I commentated on in the UK Is that right? last year with uh, Simon Innes. Perfect. Uh, so there you go. Light and a perfect ET at the same time. Oh. Got his work cut out here to try and get round your... Defending champion, Lee Morris. Yeah, Lee's out in front and he's backing off. And 10.34, look at that. You can see the difference in the numbers. That was a whole shot win for Lee Morris. Double yeah, up. You know, he was like... Right, comp eliminator. It's a qualifier. It's not eliminations quite yet for this lot. But it is so, so tight in qualifying in comp. You wouldn't believe this. Um, well, obviously, we know that Nick Williams is right at the top of the pile. But then you've got the next three, 0 0.57, 0 0.53, 0 0.51 under index. So very, very close between second, third and fourth. Uh, Dan Williams, uh, they've discovered an issue and uh, they fixed it last night so hopefully dan's going to be in the mix as well today um armor jam shed we know he's looking after that brand new billet engine in the car so not going to be pushing it too too hard today um and rob smallworth absolutely brilliant yesterday so it's it's a very very good class uh well it's always a good and class but it's exceptionally good this weekend everybody else with comp eliminator cars as well um we look forward to seeing you because it's going to be good fun this summer there's a number of cars I know that are being finished up a number of cars just waiting on bits unfortunately first pair Ruben Dawson and Gary Carr they are two and three at the moment in the uh, qualifying order 
Gary Carr index 1185, Ruben Dawson index 9.7. And he's already blown it away. Oh, That's so yeah. cool. First event. The only thing is, though, he's right 9 1 now. Normally aspirated car, yeah. yeah. Probably not going to see conditions quite the same for the yeah. rest of the That season. wind has actually picked up. It's even stronger, that tailwind mm. now. Yeah, tailwind, really cool. Oh, yeah, that is as well. Gary. No, they're just doing, uh, I think Ian just brought him forward to do one. They've just got one more bit of uh, right, okay. track stuff to do. So Ruben spun the tyres in Pro ET earlier on. No such problem this time round. Will this be quicker than a 9 Look at the light. <laughs> the answer is yes. oh yeah <laughs> nine zero seven 147 miles an hour well done sir yeah well, we like well that he's gonna have a he's, he's a big ass to take the number one spot let's face it but he's now more than six tenths under his index yeah 0.63 under and an 02 light as well if you'd have told him that he would be within a few hundreds of his first eight second run at the start yeah. of the weekend I think he might have taken that right so Gary Carr then <coughs> the boarding point Nova index for him 1185 so he's got to go. Let's have a quick look at this. So Ruben was 0 0.63 under. Yeah, he's got uh, to go 22 then, hasn't he? Yep. So 1122 or better to go into number two. He's got to go. <laughs> he's got yeah. to go in the tens to get number one, frankly. Doesn't matter about the red light. Perfect wheels at launch. So a 22 or better, and he's in number two. Oh. There he goes, 11.15. <laughs> wow. He does indeed take the number two spot. My goodness me. That's well, tailwind long. and everything helping them all. Right then, Dan Williams, Spencer Tram. I do think, honestly, if you sent a lot of these air conditions, like they sent the air conditions and the tailwind yeah. and the temperature. To any American, they'd fall off their chair. The so moment. Dan, well, Dan's got to aim for a 950 if he can. I know they've uh, they've changed. I think it was a torque converter. Um, but let's see. Yeah, Spence looking for the tens. He ran 11.16. Oh, much better launch for Dan. Ten nineteen and eleven thirteen. So Dan Bazali stay six. Still struggling to find that extra bit. So maybe not tool converter because that's only a hundredth under index. Mm. Right, Supercop with Street Eliminator into the pairing lanes, please. Supercop and Street Eliminator into the lane. So Rob Smallworth against. Nick Williams. Well, this is Nick's last flat-out run, shall we say, because obviously he goes to eliminations and doesn't want to destroy his index. Uh, 7.98 at 170 miles an hour yesterday. And let's see what Rob Smallworth can do yeah. as well. I mean, it's going to be... Uh, the, the, the thing that, I, that blows my mind is there's only a couple of tenths difference in their qualifying times, but their indexes are nearly a second apart. That's how quick that Copo is. Yeah. But you never know. This would be a good time for Rob Smaller to pick it up. Let's hope he gets closer to the mix as well. Will we see another second, seven second run from the Copo? That rev really high before he changed gear. Listen to that small block go. I <laughs> yeah, but look at the whole package. Eight with all the zeros. 007 off the line. Nick Williams, uh, well, is going to be a number one qualifier, but there is 
obviously that uh, issue for Rob off the line. Uh, can we have Comp Bike into pairing lanes, please? Comp Bike, can we have you into the lanes, please? Commiserations as well to Bob, Rob Smallworth and the team. They've still got time to sort it out before round one of eliminations. Let's hope that pop wasn't too costly or too bad. Everyone doing the uh, the digital check over there by the wall. Did you, did you get that? You've been checking to see if you've got that. Uh, yeah, nothing looks too badly damaged anyway for Rob Smallworth, but uh, we don't like to see that. Quick runs are the sort of thing we're after. So Nick Williams ends up number one qualifier. Gary Carr, number two. Ruben Dawson, number three. Spencer Tram, number four. It's all those big minus numbers next to their indexes. Yeah, it's yeah. always a good thing. Right, Supercom then. Uh, the last qualifier. This is where we've only got four cars, but, we're uh, about but to have. it might, could be increased to five. <laughs> 8.50 bike, please, into the pairing lanes as well. 8.50, we are rattling on through everything. <laughs> so, Richard Tunster with the Jammy Dodger, not quite being on his usual pace, but lots of new stuff on the car, like you said, Colin. 9.19 uh, has been his best. Paul Hudson, though, bang on the money, right off the trailer. 8.95. You can clearly see the throttle stop with the dragster working. He'll leave the start line, the car will seemably die, and then pick up again. There we go. And then it runs a really big speed out the back door. 928, 86. If that was a genuine race, Richard would have won that because Paul broke out. Got to say hi to Steve Hudson down there. Uh, gutted you're not racing this weekend, mate. Uh, did have a catch up with Steve. Yeah, he's frustrated, but uh, it is what it is. So, first run of the year for Leah Kelly. Joe's Joe's down there as well, going. Why did I share the car? Yeah. <laughs> so, up against Warren Watts, class sponsor Warren Watts as well, looking to get closer to the 890 number. So, Colin, just give us a brief rundown of the amount of work they've had to do. Oh, what, Dolly? Yeah. Oh, my goodness me. Well, obviously, the uh, uh, they had a spray of uh, transmission fluid uh, from Q1 for Joe when he did his burnout. Mm -hmm. And basically, the torque converter was, was shot. So, they thought they were out. We just sort of mentioned it over the PA. Dave Day heard it, went round to see them. Oh, look, I've got torque converter. Uh, well, that, that is the sort of short version. And then there was a mad thrash to try and get it all in. And hopefully it was all going to be good this morning for Leah Kellett to uh, get down here and put a She's qualifier got one in. shot, though. One She's shot qualifier. Got to get a number. Um, this will turn it from a four-car ladder into an eight-car ladder if she yeah. uh, she does get an elapsed time. This is her first run of the year as well. So uh, she's got to make sure she gets a green light at least. Got to wait for the tree to run. Big throttle stop on that car, obviously. There we go. Kicks in again. She's going to go storming past Warren. Will it be before or after the finish line? 8.95 into the number <laughs> one spot. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a flair for the dramatic. No, it's not at all. Well, if there was... Well, it's not even out of house, is it? It's no. just completely further just away. Just not even in the building. To the penthouse. That's the one. Straight away there for Leah Kellett. Congratulations. Good run for... Um, uh, Mr. Watts as well, 9.11 is well, his yeah, quickest of the weekend, 147 miles an hour. Where did that put him? Uh, into number three spot, one on Warren. So after oh, qualifying, awesome. Dolly is number one, Paul Hudson number two, Warren number three, Richard Tunstall number four, and Lee Clifford number five. Just waiting for the dramatic way to do it. Yeah. Like Hockenheim last summer. Into eliminations then for top speed automotive street eliminator. Your first pairing... James Murray with the Cortina going alongside <coughs> Al Mack, who qualified with a 7-4 yesterday in the number three spot. How awesome was that? That last that last session for them was brilliant. Oh. And also, got to say a big, big well done to James Murray as well. Um, he was in the other lane when someone ran really quickly, but he went 980 with that Cortina yesterday. That's very, very impressive indeed. All these cars completely street legal. They went out to the cruise last night. They are now racing on Sunday here. 
a little bit, a bit of a pedal there for Almac, but uh, gathered it up. Just keeping it in front, I think, is what he's doing. 891 at 1. 981. Backs up that 980. Yeah. Knocking on the door of 140 miles an hour in a completely standard silhouette. Cortina Estate. I think he's probably even got the original paint job on it, what's left of yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, this should be Rob Carter. Great to see Rob make eliminations. Not good. We don't have our Williamson, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think Al actually went out on the cruise, to be fair. Uh, well, but everyone had their fair share, more than their fair share of problems. Rob did as well, didn't he? He didn't have any push rods. That's right, yeah. Managed to get them. And made the cruise with about three minutes to spare. <laughs> That's how tight that was. So basically, what Rob did, I presume, was just sneaked into the last session. Well, he must have made one run yesterday. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. And it was just quick enough as well to qualify. That's the other thing. It has to be better than... 13.5. Uh, That's the one. I don't think this will be a... No, maybe it will. Now, the twist here is Rob, having taken that wind light, races Al Mack in round two. <laughs> <laughs> Pick your fights, yeah. Well, I don't know where he got his push rods from, but whoever delivered them, thank you very much uh, indeed. I think, uh, well, John Sleeth certainly had something to do with that, uh, because I know there was a trip up north to meet sort of halfway to swap mm. the bits, and so, yeah. Excellent. So, Andy Bond gets, I would say, his traditional boy running around one, um, with the ugly sister. However, he has some serious old competition. He was one of three cars in the Seven Falls yesterday. Goes deep. Oh, blazes the tyres. And he's literally just going to coast it through now. I could have had him. 1434 or 67. <laughs> All right, next up then, the lady knocking on the door of the sevens. Went eight flat yesterday. Uh, Victoria Smith going alongside the transit god himself. I can't Ashton believe he's Burr. got shirts with that on there. <laughs> <laughs> <Incredible. laughs> 950 bike. Can we have you into the pairing lanes, please? 950 bike. So, um, you would not expect these to be drag racing, let's put it that way. Ashley Cooper with the transit. With the huge turbocharger on the front of it. Uh, Ash has been well into the nines on a number of occasions, at over 140 miles an hour. What is basically a block of flats with some block treads on it. Um, taking on Victoria Smith. I mean, that is not a car you would normally go to drag racing with because of the size of it. However, as drag racers are always famous for, stuff a big engine in anything and it will go. It's an awesome car. No tyre spin at all. Ah, I spoke too soon. Let's see if Victoria can put it in the seven. Yes! yes! <laughs> 799, 185 miles an hour. Her first ever seven second run. The fastest ever speed. And it will probably be the first of many now they've found yeah. the key. Well done, team. Yeah, well done, Pete. Well done, everybody. And obviously Vix as well. 7.99 with a 7. It was coming, wasn't it? It was. It was always going to be. Probably skipped breakfast. That's probably the difference, wasn't it? It's only 100 quicker than I think she pedalled it, actually. Uh, there was a fractional pedal, but uh, very well gathered. Right, Graham Smith, Tony Higgs. Tony, yes, 193 mile an hour. So Graham went a bit as best of 9.57. Again, I'm presuming... That's without nitrous oxide. This is nitrous oxide equipped, this car. Uh, Tony Higgs, 193. He's getting in the territory for two parachutes. Yeah. Maybe a little pedal for Tony Higgs, but it's all going to be Cortina in the distance. What will it be this time? 
Look at the speed, 197 <laughs> miles an hour. Look at that for Graham Whoa. as well, 90250. If that was all motor, they'll be very, very happy with that. I think they are anyway, to yeah. be honest with you. But uh, well done, 197 miles an hour. <laughs> 200 miles an hour, please. Wow. wow. Okay, Michael D'Souza, a very, very welcome entrant into Street Eliminator. It's really funny because you, you go to most sort of like car shows and things like that and think you've got a quick car and then you turn up here and go. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> However, Michael, ah, he's turning the nitrous on today. That might be the difference. He went 1071 yesterday. That really is a beautiful car. Great it addition is. to the class. Lovely. Absolutely that. I just realised we're missing, we're missing the, all of the hails this yep. weekend, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know why either, actually. Well, well, I, I was there about because yeah, uh, Graham Smith went over to their workshop to get his exhaust <laughs> bracket right, welded. Yeah. So, I know they're about. Uh, taking on Elliot Day, who ran a fantastic 8.59 yesterday. And took the perfect reaction time money as well. So, it's going to be nitrous versus turbo. Small block turbo. In a car that Elliot and his dad built in a garage. The way to do it. I think that was lots of instant tyre spin for Elliot. A 1.92 60 foot is a little uncharacteristic. He does have the legs though. 956, 159 and a 1070 for Michael D'Souza. Well, he does actually go home with his quickest timing ticket of the weekend. Elliot Day moves on to round two. Right, matchups for round two. Andy Bond taking on Victoria Smith. Al Mack taking on uh, Rob Carter. And Tony Higgs against Elliot Day. So this is ah number quality the Q4 actually I beg your pardon for Super Street Bike. We do have one more. Uh, Daniel Lentz, who made one run yesterday, and the next two, he stopped on the start line, unfortunately. So, lots and lots of work to get the bike back in a go condition. Going up against Chris Reed, who is on his brand spanking new Hayabusa. Uh, Chris yesterday, quickest time, 8.59. He's looking for way more than that. He's been way quicker than that on this bike as well. Oh, well, Daniel gets into stage this time, which is always a good start. That was not a smooth run either. 743 at 192. Down on power. Doesn't obviously not like the cold conditions. Um, Boyce trickles through with the 1369 at 64 miles an hour. Still sounds like a bit of a misfire on there. Uh, Daniel Lentz was on a really good run, 1.19 to 60 foot, which if anyone knows anything about Super Street Bike, that was going to be a flyer, but he just couldn't keep it going all the way down the track, unfortunately. He's still currently number one qualifier, but only by a hundredth of a second. So, Al Morrison, Alan Morrison, excuse me, in the Slick Tricks lane. Taking on a newcomer to the class, Brad Head. Brad's been around motorcycle drag racing for a while. Uh, was the JKE Works Rider 4. 850 bike. Moved up to Super Street Bike. Run a best of 8.46, which is kind of what he's used to running. However, I'm sure he likes to go way quicker than that on this last qualifying run. Well, Alan Morrison way out in front on a storming run. 7.25 and look at the speed. 201 miles an hour. Congratulations to Alan Morrison. Well done, sir. Um, also, Brad Head's first ever seven second run in Super Street anyway. 7.98, 180 miles an hour. That's what we like to see. Good runs, happy people. A uh, very good morning to Angie and everybody right down the top end. I make sure that I remember every single digit of the speed and ET, I promise. Margot Schmidt and Johnny Hines. Margot 
Ran a best of 7.43 yesterday. Way more in that bike than that. She's from the Netherlands. Johnny Hines, currently that number on the board up there, the 10.50, is his number. That's the bump spot. He's gone way quicker than that before, even if it's just been in. 8.50 bike. Margot's got problems on the start line. Johnny's just hanging around a minute waiting for her. But she's trying, there we go. Margot's restarted the bike. She's going to need to get a move on, though. So Johnny's ready to go. There we go. Visor down. So Margot has... Actually, they've all got six-second potential. I was going to say Margot's got six-second potential. They can all do it. Great side-by-side -side run for both of them. Margot's going to get there first, but not by much. 7.39 at 1.88 for Margot. Johnny Hines in the seven-second club. 7.71, 184. Actually, it was Johnny there first because he was better on the tree. Doesn't matter in qualifying. But both of those two quickest runs of the weekend. 7.71 at 1.84 for Johnny. 7.39 at 1.88 for Margot. A lot of people putting down their quickest runs of the weekend. Can anybody take the number one qualifier from our Hungarian friend in this last session? Next to take the swing will be Jake Michel. I think Jake's going to be on his own. Um, Jake had a couple of really rough old looking rides yesterday, I tell you. Um, the bike wasn't happy with him at all, let's put it that way. Jake's been in the 660s before. He was number one qualifier at the European Finals last year, the 666. Not sure if the weather or the track's quite there for that, but we're about to find out. That's beautiful for Jake Michel. Until that point. 7.13, only 154 miles an hour. Almost hilarious, isn't it, that uh, they're all disappointed with the 7.1 on a street tie bike. However, such is life these days. He was 4.53 at 174 to the eighth, so he was on a fabulous run. Uh, unfortunately, it just didn't quite carry through the back door, but better to have that problem on a qualifying run than round one, eliminations. So the last person that can take the number one qualified spot from Daniel Lentz is coming underneath the tower now. He is your defending European Super Street Bike champion, Alan Al Morrison Jr. Went 6.85 yesterday. Just needs a couple of hundreds from somewhere. I'm sure Rick Stubbins has uh, done his very best to try and get him down there. That won't be a six, unfortunately. Similar sort of problem to Jake. It seemed to miss a shift at some point up the racetrack. Trickles through to a 9.53 at only 89 miles an hour. He will go into uh, eliminations. Hi, Cathy. You all right? I did say thank you for sponsoring the class yesterday, but you completely ignored me. Anyway, it's okay. We all love you. Um, so, yeah, Daniel Lentz will be your number one qualifier. Eight bikes will pair up for round one in a little while. We're on with Funny Bike. This is a qualifying session as well. Q number four, six bikes entered this weekend or made passes. Uh, massive commiserations to the Storm team. One of my favourite teams to follow on the internet because it just seems like non-stop banging your head against the brick wall. Then you get, guess what? You get to the racetrack and it's even more banging your head against the brick wall. Uh, junior drag bike into the pairing lanes, please. Can we have junior drag bike into the lanes? So we've got uh, Funny Bike coming up, we've got Comp Bike right behind them. I think Mike Comp might be round one though. Okay, Roger Moore. Roger Moore over there on the box of Frogs supercharged methanol bike. Great bit of exercise that. Only in front of a you know, few people as well. They're going to try and fire him again. This is a qualifying run, so they can do that. Uh, up against Dave Peters with the Rigaboot Express in the Slick Tricks lane. We're just having a quick timing system reset, which, uh, look at that, expertly done. Well done to Lucy and the team. Not like nothing ever changed, really. And now they've done that. We're just getting the timing system ready to go.
<laughs> After all that, unfortunately, they've got to click it off because we can't get the timing system back up and running in time. It'll probably only be another 30 seconds. There we go, and as if by magic, the system's come back on again. So I don't know whether we're going to leave them there and fire them up, or they'll be given the chance to uh, reheat the tyres, I'm sure. It just depends on what they want to do. Yeah, leave it up to them to decide whether they want to do a burnout or whether they want to uh, just fire it up where they are and carry on running. They're going to go back and um, just reset and come out again in another couple of moments. Just want to say well done to, uh, well done Lucy. It was like you've been doing that about 500 times in your sleep. That was great. Didn't even miss a beat. You have? Okay, fine. You didn't even miss a beat at all. It was very professional. Well done. So this is their last qualifying session. I'm pretty sure comp bike behind them are going to be round one. So the next pair, or well, the next bike is ready underneath the tower anyway. That's, um, that's right on Phil Cross's machine. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Ryan Davidson. Phil Crossy loved us. Love building stuff in his shed. Uh, Ryan's best so far this weekend is 7.82. I'm not sure quite, what, quite sure what his quickest DT on here is, on this bike is, but uh, I know Phil Crossley was also close to breaking into the sixes. I think he went 7.1 as his best. After all that, the tree ran, went green, and uh, the bike just died when he went to put it on the step. Yep, just... That's what Bob Brooks needs at his age, isn't it? You, you definitely need more exercise, Bob. <laughs> Sorry, that's very rude. <laughs> Unlike the pair before, he won't be pushed back. It will be a case of refiring and going almost straight away. We've got Dave Peters back, ready to run. And Ryan is back there on the start line. He's only got to nudge the bike a little bit further forwards. Very expertly done. Thought we'd take a good look at the blocks, make sure they're in place. 869, 163 miles an hour there. Bob Brooks gets another quick jog for his trouble. Yeah. 
So, Aslan the Noble, who was on a really nice looking run yesterday on what is, well, not essentially, it is a pro stock bike. But it's also legal to run in funny bikes, so. So if all goes well, he went 8.73 yesterday, so far anyway. So if all this goes well. Nice looking launch, not bad with a 1.260 foot. Uh, trickles through at 12.31 at 69 miles an hour. There's a lot more in that, obviously. So, for the second time of asking, Dave Peters. <laughs> Unfortunately, being told to uh, click it off. I'm really not sure why well, they shut him off. Ah. Right. <laughs> I now know why the hails aren't here. Oh, fair enough then. <laughs> well, he's being given the opportunity to start again, which is a good thing. Uh, Roger Moore is getting himself together. I think it may be because they have to run as a pair. Maybe. I recommend gloves as opposed to tyres if you want to warm your hands, by the way. <laughs> gloves are a lot better idea. Although if you put gloves on that, it'd probably stick to it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good too. <laughs> um, yeah, something that so I've just picked up on social media, and uh, thanks for Sam Marston for pointing this one out. Um, we were saying earlier on that we didn't have any hails in Street Eliminator this weekend. Didn't know why. Um, it's purely because Jack Hale got married yesterday. So that's where uh, all the hails are this weekend. So congratulations. Uh, to Jack, and uh, that's, that's uh, a fair excuse. And I think you could one. be right there. Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> well, they're not here. Well, it's just um, it's just very unlike them to miss. You yeah. know, they're, they're long time supporters of the class. It's very unlike yeah. them to miss anything at all. Yeah, weddings. Uh, well, <laughs> that was, I had to pass out last year to go to my daughter's one, didn't I? So yeah, it is, it is allowed. Uh, can we please have Junior Dragster for Lucas Oars into the pairing lanes, please? Uh, Junior Dragster, can we have you into the pairing lanes, please? No, I'm actually unsure what the hold is. I think someone actually, yeah, is, by the look of it, is stuck on the track up the top end. I think that's what it is. Either that or... Either that or Dave Peters' crew need more practice at starting the bike on the start line. Yeah, is that what it is? That's what you needed, yeah. That's why everyone laughed when Ian told you, wasn't it? That's why. Well, they're going to get that practice right now in front of everybody. Right, I'm sure that tyre is still warm. The only thing is, obviously, with the weather being as chilly as it is, um, it will cool down pretty quickly. Uh, unfortunately, after all that, did not sound happy. The engine, obviously, uh, just didn't sound happy when he let the clutch out off the start line. Once again, though, good job that wasn't first round. It was uh, only, only a qualifying run.
So, two more bikes in the class. To run in the class anyway. Uh, your current number one qualifier, Eric Richard, who had a real moment yesterday, launched in the left hand lane and then he hit the wall in the right. The bike hooked very, very hard right indeed. Eric's a very experienced rider. He's even taken a couple of tumbles off this thing. Not this one, previous bike. So he knows how to, he definitely, definitely knows how to ride and unfortunately, uh, or oh, sorry, fortunately, uh, managed to miss Dave Peters in the other lane and the bike's still in one piece. So, pointed perfectly straight this time. His best is 7.09. He's been well into the sixes on numerous occasions before. Well, that didn't go as planned. Just broke loose as soon as he let the clutch out. I think there must have been, yeah... Dave's pointing to something that may have been slightly dripping under the tyre, which led to that happening. Uh, that is a normally a mid-six second bike, though. Very, very quick indeed. So we do have one more bike, one more funny bike, I should say, to run. That is the one and only Roger Moore. And typically now... The bike won't start. <laughs> well, again, at least it was qualifying, not round one, I suppose, but that's not really the point. Um, managed to fire it up again on the start line, no problem, but uh, given the chance to push back and, uh, and cool down, uh, and unfortunately it didn't happen. But all being well, they'll be round for round one eliminations a little bit later on today. Comp bike, I can pres only presume. It is elimination round one coming round. The reason I say I presume is because I'm pretty sure it's run as a 16 bike field and there's a lot of them, yeah. Q4, okay. Well, I um, stand completely corrected. Well, I'm sitting down, but whatever. Going to be Len Paget against Paul Hambidge. Doing a timing system reboot, but shouldn't interrupt anything. So, Len Paget currently number eight with a 7.78. 7.29 was Paul Hambidge's number from yesterday. Silent and assassin machine in the slick streaks lane does not hang about. Then again, neither does Lenny. See the bike in the Slick Tricks lane go steaming past Len Paget to a 732 at 189 miles an hour. They both nearly kissed in the middle of the track at the end, but um, they've been doing it long enough. They stayed away from each other. 777 at 163 for Len. That's actually his quickest run of the weekend, even though he had a little bit of a misstep on the start line. Well, it looked like it spun a little bit, that's all I meant. Your next pair are going to be Anna Sasiak with the sweet but psycho Hayabusa in the Kestrel Lane. Anna's quickest ET of the weekend is an 8.22 up against Adam Burns. What a beautiful machine. Uh, just dipped into the sevens with a 7.94. Well, 
Adam sitting up on the bike, I think. Yeah, 898 and then 867 that was for Anasasiak. 159, only 110 miles an hour for Adam. Uh, not a bad launch, but um, I don't think still what they were quite looking for, let's put it that way. Michael Gooding in a heads-up class, which is cool to see. Normally runs an ET bike. He's currently number 13. Best of 10.54 against Andrew Christoffi, who had a great time in qualifying. Quickest 7.65 so far. I say so far, because obviously this is the last qualifying session. A little bit of a wheelie, but it doesn't seem to have slowed him down at all. 7.69 backs up to 65 from the other day. Yesterday, sorry. 11.3 uh, line for Michael Gooding. And no improvement for him either. Yeah, a speed of 184 miles an hour that time. In the Slick Tricks lane. So Michael Piggott is currently number four. With the Walt Speed Racing bike down there in the Kestrel lane. Chris Neary. In the Slick Tricks lane, uh, but two seven-second runners, actually. This is all about position now for eliminations because there's 14 bikes and a 16-bike ladder. That's where they finish up. That's who they're paired up with in round one. And so on. Great-looking launch from Michael Pickett till that pool. Oh, dearie me. Lots of power came in all at once, and he went very sideways. 8.30 for Chris Neary, not quite on his 7.69 pace from earlier. Still went 182 miles an hour, only 10.55 that time for Michael Piggott. Big old moment out there about 3.30. It looks like he got back on the power. And he didn't like it. Danny Cockrell and Mark Dainty. Danny in the Slick Tricks lane went 7.35 yesterday. Mark Dainty, though, 7.11. Mark's been oh so close to a six-second run for a long, long while. Could today be the day? It looks a little chilly, to be honest, but we'll have to see. Good-looking launch for both. It will be Mark. Whoa, look at that. Nothing in it at all. 7.18 and a 7.28 for Danny. Danny also goes 199 miles an hour. 7.18 at 198 for Mark Dainty. They don't move position, but it was still a hell of a race. OK, 8.50 bike, Q4. OK, Daniel Madeira. I had to double take things. I've got a client name now. Anyway, and um, <laughs> Ian Clitstrow, <laughs> although the guy, uh, the guy is the, uh, he's Italian and it's Daniela, but anyway, whatever. Uh, against Ian Critchlow. I'm sure it's not him. If it, if it is, I've got to redo his life insurance application. <laughs> yeah, yeah it has a just thought. Oh, no, 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 not at all. So, Critch currently number three. Let's see where. Uh, Side by side, all the way on the racetrack. 8.24 for Daniel. <laughs> uh, 8.47 for Critch. Both of them break up, both a little bit too quick. All right, Jay Rowe is your number one qualifier coming into this session with an 8.50 with a four tagged on the end. And it's Mick Winyard number four, 8.61. Eight forty-seven, eight twenty-one. <laughs> oh dear, breakout central here. Not a surprise though. All 
Right, let's see how uh, Craig Wright gets on going alongside Pete Slater. Craig, number two at the moment, 8.52. This is their last qualifier. Four at the moment uh, for Pete Slater. Nine fifty five, nine seventy two. I saw Craig lift very, very early indeed. Hence the 9.55 instead of the 8.50. Mm. All right, Stacey Reed, 9.13 at the moment. Looking run there for Stace with an 8.36. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Like that. 163 mile an hour at the top end. Right, here comes another sub 8.50 run. Could be sub 8 actually. Okay. Galapoulos. Let's see what they can do on the JKE Raceworks machine. So, uh, two meetings and 8.50, then uh, can step up to Super Street Bike. Purely down to licensing. On 37 to 60. And at the 8, uh, 5.44, at the quarter, 8.15, 180 miles an hour at the stripe, though. Uh, he's certainly got uh, a good handle on that machine. Right, 950 bike. Just three bikes in attendance this weekend, so it's another qualifier. Believe it or not, they have another one after this as well. Josh McLean and Rob Stanley. Rob is your number one qualifier at the moment, 956. Now, whoever gets the number one spot after qualifying will get a bye into the final, and then the other two race for the final position. With, uh, just three bikes in the class. Nine forty eight breakout for Rob, nine seventy seven. Uh, actually, the uh, best run of the weekend there for Josh. All right, Dave Hall. Uh, if he can find anything between nine fifty and nine fifty six, that will put me into the number one spot. He's currently on a nine sixty. Triple O five on the tree. It is a cherry. Doesn't matter. Line 41, 150, just a little bit too quick there. Right, junior drag bike uh, for their last qualifier. 15 of them here this weekend. Really, really good to see so many junior drag bikes these days. Uh, I mentioned it yesterday. I'm going to mention it again today. Massive, massive shout out and a big thank you uh, to Ian King. Um, who has uh, donated a lot of his uh, trophies from over the years to the Junior Drag Bike Club uh, for, to uh, be repurposed. And uh, I know the Junior Drag Bike Club, and I'll tell you what, the whole drag racing community really appreciate that, Ian. And uh, thank you once again. Right, a little bit of concern, actually, in the Castro Lane. So they're having a... Ah, right, OK. 
could be a couple of spots in the air at the moment. So, yeah, we're just going to be on hold for a moment. Our track crew just coming back and our bikes coming back as well. Um, it's, yeah, it's bitterly cold out there as well. There is quite a, a tailwind as well, which is a bit of a breeze that they've got to contend with. So, uh, yeah, the condition's not ideal at the moment. So we are just on a pause for a moment. So Nitro FM 96.2, if you could take the airwaves over, we'll be back with you when we continue all the fun, all the excitement, all the action here at the Eastern Nationals. Eight ninety-five. You can clearly see the throttle stop with the dragster working. It'll leave the start line. The car will seemingly die and then pick up again. There we go. And then it runs a really big speed out the back door. Nine twenty eight eighty-six. If that was a genuine race, Richard would have won that because Paul broke out. Yeah. Oh my goodness me. Well, obviously the uh, uh, they had a spray of uh, transmission fluid uh, from Q1 for Joe when he did his burnout, mm -hmm. and basically the torque converter was was shot. So they thought they were out. We just sort of mentioned it over the PA. Dave Day heard it, went round to see them. Oh look, I've got torque converter. Uh, well, that, that is the sort of short version. And then there was a mad thrash to try and get it all in, and hopefully. It was all going to be good this morning for Leah Kellett to uh, get down here and put a She's qualifier got one in. shot, though. One She's shot qualifier. Got to get a number. Um, this will turn it from a four-car ladder into an eight-car ladder if she yeah. uh, she does get an elapsed time. This is her first run of the year as well, so uh, she's got to make sure she gets a green light at least. Got to wait for the tree to run. Big throttle stop on that car, obviously. There we go. Kicks in again. She's going to go storming past Warren. Will it be before or after the finish line? 8.95 into the number <laughs> one spot. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a flair for the dramatic. No, it's not at all. Well, if there was... Well, it's not even that. How awesome was that? That last, that last session for them was brilliant. Oh. And also, got to say a big, big well done to James Murray as well. Um, he was in the other lane when someone ran really quickly, but he went 9.80 with that Cortina yesterday. That's very, very impressive indeed. All these cars, completely street legal. They went out to the cruise last night. They are now racing on Sunday here. A little bit, a bit of a pedal there for Almac, but uh, gathered it up. Just keeping it in front, I think, is what he's doing. 891 at one. 981 backs up that 980. Yeah. Knocking on the door of 100. I don't think this will be a... Uh, maybe it will. Now the twist here is Rob, having taken that wind light, races Al Mack in round two. <laughs> <laughs> Pick your fights, yeah. Well, I don't know where he got his push rods from, but whoever delivered them, thank you very much uh, indeed. I think. Goes deep. Oh, blazes the tyres. And he's literally just going to coast it through now. Ashley Cooper with the transit. With the huge turbocharger on the front of it. Uh, Ashley's been well into the nines on a number of occasions. At over 140 miles an hour what is basically a block of flats with some block treads on it. Um, taking on Victoria Smith. I mean, that is not a car you would normally go to drag racing with because of the size of it. However, this drag racers are always famous for. Stuff a big engine in anything and it will go. It's an awesome car. No tyre spin at all. Ah, I spoke too soon. Let's see if Victoria can put it in the seven. Yes! yes! <laughs> 799, 185 miles an hour. First ever seven-second run. Tony Higgs. 
Tony yesterday, 193 mile an hour. So Graham went about as best of 9.57. Again, I'm presuming that's without nitrous oxide. This is nitrous oxide equipped, this car. Uh, Tony Higgs, 193. He's getting in the territory for two parachutes. Yeah. Maybe a little pedal for Tony Higgs, but it's all going to be Cortina in the distance. What will it be this time? Look at the speed, 197 <laughs> miles an hour. Look at that for Graham Whoa. as well. Nine oh. uh, taking on Elliot Day, who ran a fantastic 8.59 yesterday. And took the perfect reaction time money as well. So it's going to be nitrous versus turbo. Small block turbo. And a car that Elliot and his dad built in a garage. The way to do it. I think that was lots of instant tyre spin for Elliot. A 1.92 60 foot is a little uncharacteristic. He does have the legs though. 9.56, and a 10.70 for Michael D'Souza. Well, he does actually go home with his quickest timing ticket of the weekend. Elliot Day moves on to round two. Right. Reed, who is on his brand spanking new Hayabusa. Uh, Chris yesterday, quickest time, 8.59. He's looking for way more than that. He's been way quicker than that on this bike as well. Well, Daniel gets into stage this time, which is always a good start. That was not a smooth run either. 7.43 at 1.92. Down on power. Morrison, Alan Morrison, excuse me, in the Slick Tricks lane. Taking on a newcomer to the class, Brad Head. Brad's been around motorcycle drag racing for a while. Uh, was the JKE works rider for 850 bike. Moved up to Super Street bike, run a best of 8.46, which is kind of what he's used to running. However, I'm sure he likes to go way quicker than that on this last qualifying run. Well, Alan Morrison way out in front on a storming run. 7.25 and look at the speed. 201 miles an hour. Congratulations to Alan Morrison. Well done, sir. Um, also, Brad Head. I promise. Margot Schmidt and Johnny Hines. Margot ran a best of 7.43 yesterday. Way more in that bike than that. She's from the Netherlands. Johnny Hines currently, that number on the board up there, the 10.50, is his number. That's the bump spot. He's gone way quicker than that before, even if it's just been in. 8.50 bike. Margot's got problems on the start line. John, he's just hanging around a minute waiting for her. But she's trying, there we go. Margot's restarted the bike. She's going to need to get a move on, though. So Johnny's ready to go. There we go. Visor down. So Margot has... Actually, they've all got six-second potential. I was going to say Margot's got six-second potential. They can all do it. Great side-by-side -side run for both of them. Margot's going to get there first, but not by much. 7.39 at 1.88 for Margot. Johnny Hines in the seven-second club. 7.71, 184. Actually, it was Johnny there first because he was better on the tree. Doesn't matter in qualifying. But both of those two quickest runs of the weekend. 7.71 at 1.84 will be Jake Michelle. I think Jake's going to be on his own. Um, Jake had a couple of really rough old-looking rides yesterday, I tell you. Um, the bike wasn't happy with him at all, let's put it that way. Jake's been in the 660s before. He was number one qualifier at the European Finals last year, the 666. Not sure if the weather or the track's quite there for that, but we're about to find out. That's beautiful for Jake Michel. Until that point. 713, only 154 miles an hour. Almost hilarious, isn't it, that uh, they're all disappointed with the 71 on a street. 74 to the 8th, so he was on a fabulous run. Uh, unfortunately, it just didn't quite carry through the back door. But better to have that problem on a qualifying run than round one eliminations. So the last person that can take the number one qualified spot from Daniel Lentz is coming underneath the tower now. He is your defending European Super Street Bike champion, Alan, 
Al Morrison Jr. Went 6.85 yesterday. Just needs a couple of hundreds from somewhere. I'm sure Rick Stubbins has uh, done his very best to try and get him down there. That won't be a six, unfortunately. Similar sort of problem to Jake. It seemed to miss a shift at some point up the racetrack. Trickles through to a 9.53 at only 89 miles an hour. He will go in. Very expertly done. But we take a good look at the blocks, make sure they're in place. 869, 163 miles an hour there. Bob Brooks gets another quick jog for his trouble. Let's hope all this goes well. <laughs> nice looking launch, not bad with a 1.260 foot. Uh, trickles through at 1231 at 69 miles an hour. There's a lot more in that, obviously. Unfortunately, after all that, did not sound happy. The engine, obviously, uh, just didn't sound. Pointed perfectly straight this time. His best is 709. He's been well into the sixes on numerous occasions before. Well, that didn't go as planned. Just broke loose as soon as he let the clutch out. I think there must have been, yeah, Dave's pointing to something that may have been slightly dripping under the tyre, which led to that happening. And neither was Lenny. You're going to see the bike in the Slick Tricks lane go steaming past Len Paget to a 732 at 189 miles an hour. They both nearly kissed in the middle of the track. Well, Adam's sitting up on the bike, I think. Yeah, 898 and then 867 that was for Anna Sassiak. 159, only 110 miles an hour for Adam. I say so far, because obviously this is the last qualifying session. A little bit of a wheelie, but it doesn't seem to have slowed him down at all. 7.69 backs up to 65 from the other day. Yesterday, sorry. 11.3 uh, line for Michael Gooding. That's where they finish up. That's who they're paired up with in round one. And so on. Great looking launch from Michael Pickett till that pool. Whoa, dearie me. Lots of power came in all at once and he went very sideways. 8.30 for Chris Neary, not quite on his 7.69 pace from earlier. Josh Krill and Mark Dainty. Danny in the Slick Tricks lane went 7.35 yesterday. Mark Dainty though, 7.11. Mark's been oh so close to a six second run for a long, long while. Could today be the day? It looks a little chilly to be honest, but we'll have to see. Good looking launch for both. It will be Mark. Whoa, look at that. Nothing in it at all. 7.18 and a 7.28 for Danny. Danny also goes 100 <laughs> in Clitzrow. <laughs> Although the guy, uh, the guy is the, uh, he's Italian and it's Daniela. But anyway, whatever. Uh, against in Critchlow. I'm sure it's not him. If it, if it is, I've got to redo his life insurance application. <laughs> yeah, yeah it has a just fought. Oh, no, 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 not at all. So, Critch currently number three. See where uh, Daniel ends up. Wow, 
side by side, all the way out the racetrack. 8.24 for Daniel. <laughs> uh, 8.47 for Critch. Eight forty-seven, eight twenty-one. Oh dear, breakout central here. Not a surprise though. Last qualifier. Nine twenty-four at the moment uh, for Pete Slater. Five nine seventy two. I saw Craig lift very, very early indeed. Good looking run there for Stace for the eight thirty six. <laughs> Two meetings and 8.50, then uh, can step up to Super Street Bike. Purely down to licensing. One thirty-seven to 60. And at the 8th, uh, 5.44 at the quarter, 8.15, 180 miles now at the stripe though. Josh McLean and Rob Stanley. Rob is your number one qualifier at the moment, 9.56. Now, whoever gets the number one spot after qualifying will get a bye into the final, and then the other two race for the final position. Yeah, just three bikes in the class. Nine forty-eight breakout for Rob. Nine seventy-seven. Triple O five on the tree. It is a cherry. Doesn't matter. Nine forty-one. One hundred and fifty. Just a little bit too quick there. For Liam, spun the tyre off the start line and the bike broke down. It, as long as Robbie Dobby doesn't break out, I don't think he's going to be backed off. Yeah, 10 18, the win for the Super Penguin. What I was going to say, 15 or 18 degrees in Pomona, it's 6 degrees this morning, <laughs> right? And we're still doing this, yeah. obviously. Uh, 17 bikes is the answer to your question. Okay. Well, Justin Morton fair to say just did not get off the line there at all. So Dave Grundy looking for a 1062 safely through with a 1083. 50. And Peter 11 flat. <coughs> oh, where's Peter going? <laughs> Taking the long way around. Making sure he's going away. I love the way that Kyle's just casually wandering up there, making sure he doesn't go too quick. He does. He takes it. His first ever round win. Well done, Carl. I think Bladen. 11.35, darling. So it will be Nick going first. And we have Super Pro ET into the lanes, please. Super Pro ET, we can have you into the lanes, please. Uh, Chris is going to do a real good job to catch Nick without breaking out. 
Oh, it's a breakout. It's a double breakout. Goodness Whoa. me, that was a <laughs> squeaker. Leo Lester, Scott Smith, your next pair. Um, now then, it's a 10.85 pairing here. Basically heads up race in their own dialing class, yeah? Yeah. Leo Lester took the stripe. Uh, now, I think, yeah, uh, Phil Pratt will be leaving first here. That's most unusual. Very unusual, yeah. He's one of the, well, he, the light's going to run first. He might yeah. not necessarily leave first. Oh, I, think, yeah. that, I think he's got every chance of doing it, let's put it that way. Let's see how this one pans out. Not bad at all. Uh, now, the thing is, for Phil, he knows how to drive the finish line. When light comes on in, oh. Phil's lane. That's on a whole, a whole shot. shot. Yeah. For our first meeting in ET Bike, obviously came from Junior Drag Bike last year. Runner up in the championship. Oh, fish tailing away there, nicely recovered. And now pulling away from Carl. Which well, is not going to break out. Yeah, she's looking over her shoulder, making sure she doesn't. And she takes the round win as well. 10.67 and a 9.75. Wouldn't normally get it done, but uh, trouble for Carl in the other lane. We'll be going first by just a smidge over a second. And it's going to be Mark Huxley into round number two as Adrian Portelli unfortunately puts a cherry on the tree. Yeah, it was well publicised that Mark pulled a perfect, perfect reaction drive just later on in the race three. Despite the amount of bracket racing experience he has, that says a lot. 10.15 is what he's looking for in the Slick Tricks lane. 9.13 for Warren Watts. He'll be round again in a little while in Supercom, no matter what happens here. Predicted Nick is way, 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 way out in front. Is he going to back off? Perfect. There we go. He did actually. Only 119 miles an hour. That's the way to do it. Oh, Bob goes red. So it's going to be Harley J. Despite aiming for the centre line, having to back out of it, Harley J gets the win. Well, after the uh, the struggles the team had even getting here this weekend, oh. that must be a <laughs> and a breakout for Bob as well. I think Stevie Gates is used to running people down. He's going to have to get used to it quite quickly if he's yeah. going to run this car in Pro ET all the time. Oh, my word. I was just going to say that was either... Well, he's gone sailing by. Yeah, he's... For some reason, yeah, 10.02, Amy clicked it off way before the finish line. Right, Lee Morris, the green with envy, Jaguar E-Type, could have worn Pro ET number one this year. but no, This he's... could be a final round. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, easily. Uh, Simon Innes with the Plum Crazy Racing Barracuda. Um, my first ever perfect run I commentated on in the UK Is that right? last year with uh, Simon Innes. Perfect. Uh, so there you go. Light and a perfect ET at the same time. Oh. Got his work cut out here to try and get round your defending champion, Lee Morris. Yeah, Lee's out in front and he's backing off. And 1034. Look at that. You can see the difference in the numbers. That was a whole shot win for Lee Morris. Double yeah, up. You know, he was like a little left in off at just like 1230. He wasn't going all so the way what through. Was, what did the engine run in the other car it was in? 10. That's always good stuff. No, no, that's fine. About 10 8, I think it was. Excellent. Right, so Dave Cherritt, your number one qualifier, is Matthew's opponent here. Oh, 
one is Dave Cherrick going red. Three so red Matthew in Dowdy is into round number two. Off by an 11.13. Well, he keeps finding more. <laughs> Can't call him Don't Lift Dave anymore. Right, he's going to go nine. Well, he's dialing in 9.33, excuse me. He's going to be chased down, possibly, by the big dodge. And it is Dave Fulton into round number two. Tom Watkins, unfortunately, goes red. See what Dave runs now. 29. Um, right. Bit of advice, folks. Don't. Well, so. it should have been John Bean down there against uh, Freddie Thompson, but uh, as we alluded to earlier on, there was uh, engine issues uh, for uh, John Bean after his amazing day yesterday. Uh, the gear dropped off the bottom of the distributor, went into the engine, so uh, frantically trying to get it all sorted out. But it wasn't to be, so uh, Freddie Thompson, first alternate here, Andrew Brook. Well, so this is his first, Andrew Brick's first ever race as well. I don't think he's going to quite get there in time. He breaks out as well, goes 9.25. Uh, Ronnie was a hard qualified driver here. Brett, a little bit off his usual game yesterday. However, previous pro ET yeah. champ. Yeah, good mates actually, these two. Uh, but the friendship is just put on hold for the next uh, nine or ten seconds. Did not get off the line at all. Instant spin. He's not going to catch Ronnie. His best hope is Ronnie's going to break out. Ooh. Which he does. <laughs> God, blimey, that was a bit too close. <laughs> Anyone would like him. It's a different thing. <laughs> Deary me. I think Bob Doyle's got the lead. He's way out in front. And oh, he breaks, he breaks out. out. Oh. Bob Doyle had that nailed down. He was 006 on the three. Go way quicker than 760 even. We shall see. Here we go. Callum's going to go first. Well, Callum is going to get there first, but Andy Thetford's on a really good run too. 894, 769 for Andy. 178 miles an hour. Unfortunately, the half-second reaction time... You can say it's a cold day when they fog up the start line when yeah. they stand on the two-step. <laughs> well, Colin didn't go red that time, and he's way out in front as well. Doesn't break out, which he doesn't. 882 on a 76, takes the win. Uh, 897 for Ashley Bell, chipping away at it. It's green light race. You always like to see. Very close indeed as well. Yeah, 776 takes it up a bit well. Nostalgia car. Well, they're both actually nostalgia cars because one's a fiber. Um, in the Kestrel Lane, dial in 760 again. Jack Brewster. See if he pedals it in the same place for 760. Up against the ball breaker, Mark Corsell. He was number seven. They dial in 830 this morning. Um, let's see whether they get their Bob number, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what must be really hard about mornings like this morning? Did you dial you want to win a race, you want to win the race, but you know the conditions are so good that if you keep your boot in it, you're going to run your quickest run ever. What do you do? Exactly. So Mark's going to go first, chased down by uh, that big Pontiac. You can ask Mark when he comes around to hang your doors, mate. Did he want to go really <laughs> fast or did he want to win? There you go. <laughs> now, plenty of time to chat over a cup of tea. Yeah. While he fills it with wood shavings. <laughs> Jack Brewster was looking at the wrong side of the tree. Well, Mark can now run it all the way out if he wants to. 
Yeah, 27. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jack went, I think Jack made JT in a slick tricks lane with the crew killer. And Alan Schofield, 780. That might be a bit pessimistic for this morning, actually. You never know. <laughs> These are personal best conditions. Nice and cool with a tailwind. Alan's going to have caught him by 3.30 yet. Is he doing that on purpose? Oh, dearie <laughs> me. He just shadowed him all the way down. Oh, dear. Uh, JT was looking at the tree for a long while. Dave Russell, not his normal clockwork weekend. Uh, best of 10.22, and this is an eight-second wagon. Up against... Uh, Matt Pieces. IIT for the door car. Van, sorry. 769 for the digger. Looks a lot more like it for Dave Russell. Ooh, That's he's close at the strike. Way out in front. Dave Russell takes the win. Um, big margin at the stripe as well. 0.18. Barry Giles, 7.52. I wonder how they work out the uh, shared driving in that car. What do you reckon? Well, we know Barry's doing this one. We know that the festival... Uh, yeah, the new festival of power. Uh, we've yep. got Daniel Giles driving. for AC, green light for Barry Giles. Race on. AC's been having fun trying to run 899. Barry's been on the money all weekend. It's Barry who takes the win. Yeah, AC just a little bit too far off the number. Uh, he was quicker on the tree, though.
OK, after that uh, pesky little delay that wasn't even part of what we were doing, uh, didn't even appear on the radar, shouldn't have been here, but it, it uh, made, its, uh, made its presence known. So, yeah, it's just put us back a little bit, but uh, we can get around that. As we continue with Junior Drag Bike, it's the last qualifying session for them, and it's Rico Patterson and Asaya Alvarez. So, darling class, and it's 13.20 for Rico, 13.35 for Asaya. Thirteen twenty-five. Rico stays number two, but Asaya thirteen forty moves up to number three with that one. Very nicely done indeed. Very very well done indeed. Can we please have Pro ET into the pairing lanes for eliminations round number two? Pro ET, let's have you in the lanes, please. All right, the Spud missile of John McLean going alongside Declan Butt. Eleven sixty. And 14.10 are the Darlings. John will get there first. And he gets an 11.98. Declan goes 13.95. That's a breakout. So no help for Declan, but John moves up two spots from 12 to 10. Andrew Wilcox. We're the firefighter junior racing uh, junior, dr junior bike. He's in the slick tricks lane. Darling for him, 9.35. And it's Ali Alesta, 9.50. Currently the number four spot. And uh, Richard, currently number five. So uh, Richard going to get there first, looking for 9.35, gets a 9.51, stays number five and Alias stays number four with a 10.11 on a 9.50. Harry Isaacs, 9.50 dial in for him, Maggie Smallman looking for a 9.75. Fifteen to number four for Harry Isaacs. There goes nine sixty on that nine fifty. Good move up the order there. Maggie drops a spot. No improvement in uh, ET for her, but because of the improvement on the other lane, drops back one spot. Right next pair, Jackson King. Thirteen seconds flat. The dial in for him alongside Brad Morrison. Currently in the number eight spot. Eleven point three five is his target. Both of them on 125cc machines. <laughs> so Brad on his way now then. Can he hit that 11.35? He's currently number eight. Goes 11.43, should move up, yep, to number four with that one, and Jackson moves up as well. 13.33 on a 13 flat, goes from 14 to 11. Some Brad from eight to four. Holly King and Leah Morrison, your next pair. Now Leah, number 13, Holly, number 14. Leah was the uh, class champion last season, so the title defence for her begins 
right here. Well, certainly in the next round when they go into eliminations, but uh, we'd like to move up the qualified order a bit from number 13. Her darling is 10.40. Holly's is 8.2. Steering by wall. Yeah, I think that's known leaning as. over there. <coughs> 80, sorry, 8.44. Yeah. Oh, but Leah Morrison said she wanted to move up. 10.44 on a 40. 13 to number one. Top of the shop then for Leah Morrison. Very, very good indeed. 13 up to number one. Well, that's the way you start your title defence. Qualify number one. Now then, let's see how Sophie Pollen gets on. Currently the number 15 spot. A uh, darling of 8.90. And that's an 8.67 breakout. Very, very quick indeed for Sophie. So, number one qualifier in junior drag bike with this pair to go, I think. Which is Anouk Bergering was number one, but has just dropped back to number two thanks to uh, Leah's uh, qualifying run. Going alongside Lyra Humber, number nine. Well, that's right. Near as identical reaction times as you can get. <laughs> Ooh, we have a new number one qualifier again. Anouk's taking it back. 13 flat on a 12.98. And Lara Humber moves up from 9 to 7. 14.61 on a 14.50. Wow. Well, I didn't think Anouk was going to go and get that back. But uh, mission accomplished. Right, on to Supergas, last qualifying session for them. And then we go back into eliminations. Uh, pretty much eliminations all the way after this. Right, your first pair in this session then. Andy Harrison and Wayne Hiscock. Currently three and seven. Andy on a 9.94, Wayne on a So I think after this qualifying session, it's all racing the rest of yeah, the day. Apart yeah, apart from one qualifier for a 9.50 bike, but I don't think they need it. <laughs> Wayne Hiscock goes 9.27. Uh, totally forgot to lift there. Run it out the back door, 142 mile an hour. Uh, Andy Harrison, well... 1439 no. 78 tells a story he lifted very early indeed yeah he spun off the line he uh, don't lift Wayne doesn't sound quite the same nah. as don't lift Dave does it no nah, definitely not that's a pretty epic breakout though yeah a way off way off Wayne <laughs> <laughs> that'll do Jasmine Tunstall and your number one qualifier at the moment Bob Bolden Well, we know Bob can go very quick. Uh, he's proved that in Pro ET. Well, he will have to lift this time. Uh, Jasmine Tunstall, though, 9.94. Certainly in the mix this weekend.
do you know what no matter how, how many times you do that when you see track spotters out in front of you it's it just how can i put it puts doubt in your mind it does even though you know they're they've checked it and they're doing yeah. the very very best for you you can't help it but uh jasmine tunstall will be the next down the kestrel lane which i'm sure will be fine Yep, no problem at all. Bob Molden still number one qualifier with his 9.91 from yesterday. 9.30. <laughs> That's a super comp one, isn't it? <laughs> Either that or Jasmine thought, I'll just take that off quickly, see what that feels yeah. like. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah, Bob went through with a 10.08. Uh, everybody hovering around the start line and on the track herself. I mean, a good old look. Give me one of them days today, isn't it? Well, at least it's been mostly dry. Yeah, a couple of spots on the back window. Ian going for the tractor, I think. Indeed he is. Yeah, just uh, a little bit more uh, track care needed, I think. Uh, we're going to hand back to Nitro FM just for hopefully not too long at all. Um, no one's moved anywhere. No one's got out of any race cars or taken their crash helmets off or anything like that. So all being well, it won't be too long at all. But Nitro FM, hopefully for no more than a minute or two, back to you. I do think, honestly, if you sent a lot of these air conditions, like they sent the air conditions and the tailwind yeah. and the temperature, to any American, they'd fall off their chair. The so moment. Dan, well, Dan's got to aim for a 950 if he can. I know they've uh, they've changed. I think it was a torque converter. Um, but let's see. Yeah, Spence looking for the tens. and 11.13 so Dan Bazzali stay six still struggling uh, 7.98 at 170 miles an hour yesterday and let's see what Rob Smallworth can do yeah. as well I mean it's going to be uh, the, the, the thing that, uh, that blows my mind is there's only a couple of tenths difference in their qualifying times but their indexes are nearly a second apart that's how quick that copo is yeah. but you never know this would be a good time for Rob Smallworth to pick it up Let's hope he gets closer to the mix as well. Will we see another second, seven second run for the Copo? That rev really high before he changed gear. Listen to that small block go. I oh, yeah, but look at the whole package. Eight with all the zeros, 007 off the line. Nick Williams, uh, well, is going to be a number one qualifier, but there is obviously that... Uh, issue for Rob off the line. Uh, can we have Cole Hudson though? Bang on the money right off the trailer. 8.95. You can clearly see the throttle stop with the dragster working. He'll leave the start line. The car will seemingly die and then pick up again. There we go. And then it runs a really big speed out the back door. 9.20. 8.87. If that was a genuine race, Richard would have won that because Paul broke out. Probably. Yeah. Oh, my goodness me. Well, obviously, the uh, uh, they had a spray of uh, transmission fluid uh, from Q1 for Joe when he did his burnout. Mm -hmm. And basically, the torque converter was, was shot. So they thought they were out. We just sort of mentioned it over the PA. Dave Day heard it, went around to see them. Went, oh, look, I've got torque converter. Uh, well, that, that is the sort of short version. And then there was a mad thrash to try and get it all in. And hopefully it was all going to be good this morning for Leah Kellett 
to uh, get down here and put a qualifier got one in. shot though. One She's shot qualifier. Got to get a number. Um, this will turn it from a four car ladder into an eight car ladder if she yep. uh, she does get an elapsed time. This is her first run of the year as well, so uh, she's got to make sure she gets a green light at least. Got to wait for the tree to run. Big throttle stop on that car, obviously. There we go. Kicks in again. She's going to go storming past Warren. Will it be before or after the finish line? 8.95 into the number <laughs> one spot. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a flair for the dramatic. No, it's not at all. Well, if there was... Well, it's not even that. How awesome was that? That last, that last session for them was brilliant. Oh. And also, got to say a big, big well done to James Murray as well. Um, he was in the other lane when someone ran really quickly, but he went 9.80 with that Cortina yesterday. That's very, very impressive indeed. All these cars, completely street legal. They went out to the cruise last night. They are now racing on Sunday here. Well, a bit of a pedal there for Almac, but uh, gathered it up. Just keeping it in front, I think, is what he's doing. 891 at one. 981, backs up that 980. Yeah. Knocking on the door of 100. I don't think this will be a uh, maybe it will. Now the twist here is Rob, having taken that wind light, races Al Mack in round two. <laughs> <laughs> Pick your fights, yeah. Well, I don't know where he got his push rods from, but whoever delivered them, thank you very much uh, indeed. I think. Goes deep. Oh, blazes the tyres. And he's literally just going to coast it through now. Ashley Cooper with the transit. With the huge turbocharger on the front of it. Uh, Ashley's been well into the nines on a number of occasions. At over 140 miles an hour is basically a block of flats with some block treads on it um taking on victoria smith i mean that is not a car you would normally go drag racing with because of the size of it however this drag racers are always famous for stuff a big engine than anything and it will go it's an awesome car no tire spin at all ah i spoke too soon Let's see if Victoria can put it in the seven. Yes! yes! <laughs> 799, 185 miles an hour, her first ever seven second run. Tony Higgs. Tony, yes, 193 mile an hour. So Graham went a bit as best of 957. Again, I'm presuming that's without nitrous oxide. This is nitrous oxide equipped, this car. Uh, Tony Higgs, 193. He's getting in the territory for two parachutes. Yeah. Maybe a little pedal for Tony Higgs, but it's all going to be Cortina in the distance. What will it be this time? Seven Look at the speed, 197 <laughs> miles an hour. Look at that for Graham Whoa. as well. Nine oh. uh, taking on Elliot Day, who ran a fantastic 8.59 yesterday. And took the perfect reaction time money as well. So it's going to be nitrous versus turbo. Small block turbo. And a car that Elliot and his dad built in a garage. The way to do it. I think that was lots of instant tyre spin for Elliot. A 1.92 60 foot is a little uncharacteristic. He does have the legs, though. 9.56, 159, and a 10.70 for Michael D'Souza. Well, he does actually go home with his quickest timing ticket of the weekend. Elliot Day moves on to round two. Right. Reed, who is on his brand spanking new Hayabusa. Uh, Chris, yesterday, quickest time, 8.59. He's looking for way more than that. He's been way quicker than that on this bike as well. Well, Daniel gets into stage this time, which is always a good start. That 
was not a smooth run either. 7.43 at 1.92. Down on power. Morrison, Alan Morrison, excuse me, in the Slick Tricks lane. Taking on a newcomer to the class, Brad Head. Brad's been around motorcycle drag racing for a while. Uh, was the JKE Works Rider 4. 850 bike. Moved up to Super Street Bike. Run a best of 8.46, which is kind of what he's used to running. However, sure, he likes to go way quicker than that on his last qualifying run. Well, wow, Alan Morrison way out in front on a storming run. 7.25, and look at the speed. 201 miles an hour. Congratulations to Alan Morrison. Well done, sir. Um, also, Brad Head. I promise. Margot Schmidt and Johnny Hines. Margot ran a best of 7.43 yesterday. Way more in that bike than that. She's from the Netherlands. Johnny Hines, currently that number on the board up there, the 10.50, is his number. That's the bump spot. He's gone way quicker than that before, even if it's just been in. 8.50 bike. Margot's got problems on the start line. Johnny's just hanging around a minute waiting for her. But she's trying, there we go. Margot's restarted the bike. She's going to need to get a move on, though. So Johnny's ready to go. There we go. Visor down. So Margot has... Actually, they've all got six-second potential. I was going to say Margot's got six-second potential. They can all do it. Great side-by-side -side run for both of them. Margot's going to get there first, but not by much. 7.39 at 1.88 for Margot. Johnny Hines in the seven-second club. 7.71, 184. Actually, it was Johnny there first because he was better on the tree. Doesn't matter in qualifying. But both of those two quickest runs of the weekend. 7.71 at 1.84 will be Jake Michelle. I think Jake's going to be on his own. Um, Jake had a couple of really rough old-looking rides yesterday, I tell you. Um, the bike wasn't happy with him at all, let's put it that way. Jake's been in the 660s before. He was number one qualifier at the European Finals last year, the 666. Not sure if the weather or the track's quite there for that, but we're about to find out. That's beautiful for Jake Michel. Until that point. 7.13, only 154 miles an hour. Almost hilarious, isn't it, that uh, they're all disappointed with the 7.1 on a street. 74 to the 8th, so he's on a fabulous run. Uh, unfortunately, it just didn't quite carry through the back door. But better to have that problem on a qualifying run than round one eliminations. So the last person that can take the number one qualified spot from Daniel Lentz is coming underneath the tower now. He is your defending European Super Street Bike champion, Alan Al Morrison Jr. Went 6.85 yesterday. Just needs a couple of hundreds from somewhere. I'm sure Rick Stubbins has uh, done his very best to try and get him down there. That won't be a six, unfortunately. Similar sort of problem to Jake. It seemed to miss a shift at some point up the racetrack. Trickles through to a 9.53 at only 89 miles an hour. He will go in. Very expertly done. Thought we'd take a good look at the blocks, make sure they're in place. 869, 163 miles an hour there. Bob Brooks gets another quick jog for his trouble. So all this goes well. <laughs> nice looking launch, not bad with a 1.260 foot. Uh, trickles through at 12.31 at 69 miles an hour. There's a lot more in that, obviously. Uh, unfortunately, after all that, did not sound happy. The engine, obviously. Uh, just didn't sound... Pointed perfectly straight this time. 
His best is 7.09. He's been well into the sixes on numerous occasions before. Well, that didn't go as land. Just broke loose as soon as he let the clutch out. I think there must have been, yeah, Dave's pointing to something that may have been slightly dripping under the tyre, which led to that happening. Neither does Lenny. You're going to see the bike in Slick Tricks Lane go steaming past Len Paget to a 7.32 at 189 miles an hour. They both nearly kissed in the middle of the track. Well, Adam's sitting up on the bike, I think. Yeah, 898 and an 867 that was for Anna Sassiak. 159, only 110 miles an hour for Adam. I say so far, because obviously this is the last qualifying session. A little bit of a wheelie, but it doesn't seem to have slowed him down at all. 7.69 backs up to 65 from the other day. Yesterday, sorry. 11.3 uh, line for Michael Gooding. That's where they finish up. That's who they're paired up with in round one. And so on. Great looking launch from Michael Piggott till that pool. Whoa, dearie me. Lots of power came in all at once and he went very sideways. 8.30 for Chris Neary, not quite on his 7.69 pace from earlier. Not cruel. And Mark Dainty. Danny in the Slick Tricks lane went 7.35 yesterday. Mark Dainty, though, 7.11. Mark's been oh so close to a six-second run for a long, long while. Could today be the day? Looks a little chilly, to be honest, but we'll have to see. Good looking launch for both. It will be Mark. Whoa, look at that. Nothing in it at all. 7.18 and a 7.28 for Danny. Danny also goes 100 <laughs> in Clitzrow. <laughs> Although the guy, uh, the guy is the, uh, he's Italian and it's Daniela. But anyway, whatever. Uh, against in Critchlow. I'm sure it's not him. If it, if it is, I've got to redo his life insurance application. <laughs> yeah, yeah it hazardous thoughts. Oh, no, 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 not at all. So, Critch currently number three. Let's see where uh, Daniel ends up. Side by side, all the way on the racetrack. 8.24 for Daniel. <laughs> uh, 8.47 for Critch. Eight forty-seven, eight twenty-one. <laughs> oh dear, breakout central here. Not a surprise though. Last qualifier. at the moment uh, for Pete Slater. Nine fifty five, nine seventy two. I saw Craig lift very, very early indeed. Looking run there for Stace for the 836. <laughs> so uh, two meetings in 850, then uh, can step up to Super Street Bike. Purely down to licensing. On 
37 to 60. And at the 8th, uh, 544 at the quarter, 815, 180 miles an hour at the stripe, though. Josh McLean and Rob Stanley. Rob is your number one qualifier at the moment, 956. Now, whoever gets the number one spot after qualifying will get a bye into the final, and then the other two race for the final position with uh, just three bikes in the class. Nine forty eight breakout for Rob, nine seventy seven. Triple O five on the tree it is a cherry, doesn't matter. Nine forty one, one hundred and fifty, just a little bit too quick there. Thirteen twenty-five. Rico stays number two, but Asaya thirteen forty moves up to number three with that one. Very nicely done indeed. Very very. So Richard going to get there first. Looking for nine thirty-five. Gets a nine fifty-one. Stays number five and Alias stays number four with a 10 11 on a 950. Fifteen to number four for Harry Isaacs. There goes 960 on that 950. Good move up the order there. Maggie drops a spot. No improvement in uh, ET for her, but because of the improvement on the other lane. Drops back one spot. Right, next pair, Jackson King. So Brad on his way. Now then, can he hit that 11.35? He's currently number eight. Goes 11.43, should move up, yep, to number four with that one, and Jackson moves up as well. 13.33 on a 13 flat, goes from 14 to 11. Some Brad from eight to four. Her darling is 10.40, Holly's is 8.2. Steering by wall. Yeah, I think that's known leaning as. over there. <coughs> 80, sorry, 8.44. Yeah. Oh, but Leah Morrison said she wanted to move up. 10.44 on a 40. 13 to number one. Top of the shop then for Leah Morrison. Very, very good indeed. A uh, darling of 8.90. And that's an 8.67 breakout. Very, very quick indeed for Sophie. So. Almost win, actually. Near as identical reaction times as you can get. <laughs> We have a new number one qualifier again. Anouk's taking it back. 13 flat on a 12.98. And Lara Humber moves up from 9 to 7. 14.61 on a 14.50. Wow. 
So I think after this qualifying session, it's all racing the rest of yeah, the day. Apart right? from one qualifier for a 950 bike, but I don't think they need it. <laughs> Wayne Hiscock goes 9.27. Uh, totally forgot to lift there. Run it out the back door. 142 mile an hour. Uh, Andy Harrison, well, 14.39. No. 78 tells the story. He lifted very early indeed. Do you know what? No matter how, how many times you do that, when you see track spotters out in front of you, it's it just... How can I put it? Put stout in your mind. It does. Even though you know they they checked it and they're doing yeah. the very, very best for you, you can't help it. But uh, Jasmine Tunstall will be the next down the Kestrel Lane, which I'm sure will be fine. Yeah, no problem at all. Bob Moulton is still number one qualifier with his 9.91 from yesterday. 9.30. <laughs> That's a super comp one, isn't it? <laughs> Either that or Jasmine thought, I'll just take For Liam, spun the tyre off the start line and the bike broke down. It, as long as Robbie Dobby doesn't break out, I don't think he's going to be backed off. Yeah, 10 18, the win for the Super Penguin. What I was going to say, 15 or 18 degrees in Pomona, it's 6 degrees this morning, <laughs> right? And we're still doing this, yeah. obviously. Uh, 17 bikes is the answer to your question. Okay. Oh. Justin Morton fair to say just did not get off the line there at all so Dave Grundy looking for a 1062 safely through with a 1083 50 and Peter 11 flat <laughs> oh where's Peter going <laughs> taking the long way around making sure he's going away. I love the way that Kyle's just casually wandering up there making sure he doesn't go too quick he does he takes it his first ever round win well done Carl I think Bladen 11.35 darling so it will be Nick going first and we have Super Pro ET into the lanes please Super Pro ET we can have you into the lanes please Uh, Chris is going to do a real good job to catch Nick without breaking out. Oh, it's a breakout. It's a double breakout. Goodness Whoa. me, that was a <laughs> squeaker. Leo Lester, Scott Smith, your next pair. Um, now then, it's a 1085 pairing here. Basically heads up racing their own dialing class, yeah? Yeah. Leo Lester took the stripe. Uh, now, I think, yeah, uh, Phil Pratt will be leaving first here. That's most unusual. Very unusual, he's yeah. one of the, well, he, the light's going to run first. He might yeah. not necessarily leave first. Oh, I, think, yeah. that, I think he's got every chance of doing it, let's put it that way. Let's see how this one pans out. Not bad at all. Uh, now, the thing is, for Phil, he knows how to drive the finish line. When light comes on him, oh. Phil's lane. That's on a whole shot. shot. Yeah. For our first meeting in ET Bike, obviously came from Junior Drag Bike last year. Runner up in the championship. Oh, fish tailing away there, nicely recovered, and now pulling away from Carl. Well, she's not going to break out. Yeah, she's looking over her shoulder, making sure she doesn't, and she takes the round win as well. 10.67 on a 9.75. 
wouldn't normally get it done. But uh, trouble for Carl in the other lane. We'll be going first by just a smidge over a second. And it's going to be Mark Huxley into round number two as Adrian Portelli unfortunately puts a cherry on the tree. Yeah, it was well publicised that Mark pulled a perfect, perfect race as I just played away from the tree. Despite like the amount of bracket racing experience he has, that says a lot. 10.15 is what he's looking for in the Slick Tricks lane. 9.13 for Warren Watts. He'll be round again in a little while in Supercom, no matter what happens here. Nick is way, 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 way out in front. Is he going to back off? Perfect. There we go. He did, actually. Only 119 miles an hour. That's the way to do it. Oh, Bob goes red. So it's going to be Harley J. Despite aiming for the centre line, having to back out of it, Harley J gets the win. Well, after the, uh, the struggles the team had even getting here this weekend, oh. that must be a... <laughs> and a breakout for Bob as well. I think Stevie Gates is used to running people down. He's going to have to get used to it quite quickly if he's yeah. going to run this car in Pro ET all the time. Oh, my word. I was just going to say that was either... Well, he's gone sailing by. Yeah, he's, Steve Gates is way out in front if he doesn't break out. Oh, he's got he it. doesn't. <coughs> well, for some reason, yeah, 10.02, Amy clicked it off way before the finish line. I don't Right, Lee Morris, the green with envy, Jaguar E-Type, could have worn Pro ET number one this year, but no, This could be a final round. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, easily. Uh, Simon Innes with the Plum Crazy Racing Barracuda. Um, my first ever perfect run I commentated on in the UK Is that right? last year with uh, Simon Innes. Perfect. Uh, so there you go. Light and a perfect ET at the same time. Oh. Got his work cut out here to try and get round your defending champion, Lee Morris. Yeah, Lee's out in front and he's backing off. And 10.34, look at that. You can see the difference in the numbers. That was a whole shot win for Lee Morris. Double yeah, up. You know, he was like a little left in off at just like 1,200 foot. He wasn't going all so the way what through. Was, what did the engine run in the other car it was in? 10. That's always good stuff. No, no, that's fine. About 10.8, I think it was. Excellent. Right, so Dave Cherritt, your number one qualifier, is Matthew's opponent here. Oh, and it's Dave Cherritt going red. Three so red Matthew in Downey is into round number two. Off by 11.13. Well, he keeps finding more. I can't call him <laughs> Don't Lift Dave anymore. Right, he's going to go nine. Well, he's dialing in 9.33, excuse me. He's going to be chased down, possibly, by the big dodge. And it is Dave Fulton into round number two. Tom Watkins, unfortunately, goes red. What Dave runs now? 129. Um, right, bit of advice, folks. Don't. Well, so. it should have been John Bean down there against uh, Freddie Thompson, but uh, as we alluded to earlier on, there was uh, engine issues uh, for uh, John Bean after his amazing day yesterday. Uh, the gear dropped off the bottom of the distributor, went into the engine, so uh, frantically trying to get it all sorted out, but. It wasn't to be. So, uh, Freddie Thompson, first alternate here, Andrew Brook.
Well, so this is first Andrew Brick's first ever race as well. I don't think he's going to quite get there in time. He breaks out as well, goes 9.25. Uh, Ronnie was a higher qualified driver here. Brett, a little bit off his usual game yesterday. However, previous pro e yeah. T champ. Yeah, good mates actually, these two. Uh, but the friendship is just put on hold for the next uh, nine or ten seconds. Oh, Brett did not get off the line at all. Instant spin. He's not going to catch Ronnie. His best hope is Ronnie's going to break out. Ooh. Which he does. <laughs> go blimey, that was a bit too close. Ooh. Anyone's liking. It's a different thing. <laughs> Deary me. I think Bob Doyle's got the lead. He's way out in front. Oh, and he breaks, he breaks out. out. Oh. Bob Doyle had that nailed down. He was 006 on the tree. Go way quicker than 760 even. We shall see. Here we go. Callum's going to go first. Well, Callum is going to get there first, but Andy Thetford's on a really good run too. A94, 769 for Andy. 178 miles an hour. Unfortunately, the half second reaction time. You can tell it's a cold day when they fog up the start line when yeah. they stand on the two-step. <laughs> well, Colin didn't go red that time, and he's way out in front as well. Doesn't break out, which he doesn't. 882 on a 76, takes the win. Uh, 897 for Ashley Bell, chipping away at it. It's green light race. We would like to see. Very close indeed as well. Thank you. Well, I'll yeah, like seven, 76 you. takes it. Nostalgia card. Nostalgia card. The drivers have been given a, 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 a couple of minutes. Um, just in the Castro Lane. Anyway, so um, 76 again. Jack Bruce Bruce was up here as well. See if he pedals it the same place for line 76. Up against the ball breaker, Mark Coulsell. He was number seven. They dial an 8.30 this morning. Um, let's see whether they get their Bob number. Anyway, so shall we? They're just uh, walking the engine. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what must be really hour, hard about mornings like this morning? You, 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 you want to win fight. a race. Very you want to win a race. For the delay you know the conditions the board, are so good that keep, if you keep your boots on, you're going to run your quickest run ever. What do you do? Exactly. So Mark's going to go first. Chased down by that big Pontiac. You can ask Mark when he comes around to hang your doors, mate. Did he want to go really <laughs> fast or did he want to win? There you go. <laughs> now, plenty of time to chat over a cup of tea. Yeah. While he fills it with wood shavings. <laughs> Jack Brewster was looking at the wrong side of the tree. Well, Mark can now run it all the way out if he wants to. Yeah, 27. <laughs> Well, Jack, when I think Jack.
Thank you very much indeed. We did get most of that in in the end. I said we did get most of that in in the end. Thank you very much, sir. Finishing up with the last two in Supergas. Freshly uh, prepared race track for the power room. Stu Morrison. Stu Doiny. I think this is the last Q session for just about everything apart from 850 bike, actually. Although, judging by the way he's going, that might be it too. Yeah. Uh, many happy returns, actually. Birthday in the uh, Morris camp. It's uh, Christine's birthday today, so many happy returns uh, to her. A good look at each other. Look at the lights, <laughs> folks. 012 and an 018. Shame this isn't the final. Well, Stu Dorney probably doesn't think that. 10.10, uh, 153, and 994. <laughs> Mr. Morris. I don't know what Stevie Gates crew were doing. They were doing. They've probably gone back to have a cup of tea because they just run back down to take the car cover off <laughs> and Stevie's not in the car. Anyway, Vic Parsons and Dave Fulton. I think we've got ET Bike to go before them anyway, so they'll be all right for a minute. Yeah, and, Juni Vic and Junior Dragster. Ah, Vic, is Vic Parsons in round two at Pro ET as well? Yes, he, he is. is. Yes, yeah, he had a bye, if you remember. Right, Super Bro into the lanes as well, please, for round two. Super Bro ET, please, into the lanes for round two. Yeah, Junior Dragster just rolling around now. So again, 990 is the number of choice. Well, Vic doesn't seem to have any issues with a pro tree or a sportsman tree. <laughs> but it's uh, Dave getting there with first. With the wrong stop on. Or maybe not. No, Vic's just tailed off. 987, pretty close, 145. Yep. Okay. Back to racing. Uh, so qualifying all over and done with for all of our door cars. Well, all of our cars, actually. So round number two. Liam McDonald on a bye run here. So he'll book his place in round number three here. That's his worst light of the weekend so far, an 3 one <laughs> Anyway, all about ET as well. Goes 8.23, breaks out. But didn't matter. Nobody on the other side of the racetrack. Liam into round three. Here we go then. Harry Peters and Ellie May Brown. So Ellie's going to be going first. Well, just over a quarter of a second. Both get green lights. Looks like Ellie's quite away in front, actually. Yeah, too far, actually. Broke <laughs> out. <laughs> that will be, yes, she was over the line. Uh, she had a lot more than that to play with if she wanted to. Well done to uh, to Harry. Indeed. Lisa, thank God, another cup of tea. Um, yeah, Harry was off the start line first as well. All right, Ted Sullivan, Kai Cooper, your next pair. 8.40 plays 9.10. Kai will be going first. I 
Okay, just inching forward. Here we go. Oh, and it's game over for Kai. Goes 0-3 red. Ted Sullivan, 0-1 green, though. But the race has already decided in his favour. So an unfortunate end to Kai's weekend. Ted into round three. Daniel Weir. Up next, taking on Tom Peters. Daniel's getting as close as he can. I was going to say, he can't get much closer, being... can he? <laughs> Is there another lane we don't know about in the middle? Yeah, he's looking to do the four wide nationals in the left-hand lane, isn't he? <laughs> get on three cars you could, next Don't give him ideas. You could <laughs> run junior drags as four wide. We're just going to have four wide timing. That's the problem. Yeah, uh, yeah against Tom Peters. Tom's going to go. Well, he's going to get the green line first. Whether he goes first is up to him. And Tom Peters takes that one with a 901 on his 890 dial. So Tom Peters into round number three. So, Teddy Howe. We're the 953 in the Kestrel Lane against Freddie Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. All right, we're getting some matchups now. Uh, Liam McDonald has got Tom Peters in uh, round three. And the winner of this one will be taking on. Uh, Ted Sullivan. Uh, green light on both sides of the racetrack. Let's wait to see what Freddie did before I said that. Now, Freddie has already gone past Teddy. Uh, just make sure he doesn't break out. He doesn't. Okay, so, Freddie Taylor is into round three. All right, last pair. And uh, it is a good one. Luke Mugridge and Grace Smith. One hundredth of a second between them. On their darlings. So the Boost Monkey Jr. of Gray Smith, 827 dialing, Luke Mugridge with the Velocity Dragster, 826. Oh, 0 06 red for Gray, so Luke Mugridge gets the win there. But I've got to say, huge congratulations to Vix, actually, uh, getting into the sevens with uh, Street Eliminator this weekend. Very, very good indeed from them. But unfortunately, Grace just bowing out in Junior Dragster. Right, ET Bike. Eliminations around number two for them. Dave Grundy taking on Kyle Rushby. 1.95 second difference on the uh, tree between these two. Kyle Rushby dialing in a 12.50. Dave Grundy, 10.55. So Carl gets the green, as does Dave Grundy. Dave closing in, closing in, closing in, and it is a win there for Dave Grundy with a 10.79 to lose at 12.91. Could we have Sportsman ET into the pairing lanes, please? Sportsman ET for round two. 
Scott Smith and Robbie Dobby. Scott, 1085. Robbie, 999. Almost a red light for Scott Smith there. Started <laughs> creeping. Just caught it in time. Robbie Dobby takes the win. 10 12 and a 9.99. Break out the other lane for Scott Smith. He did actually get there first, but mainly the reaction time advantage that kind of did that in for him. Right, Grace Pollen and Nick Playden. The winner of this actually gets a bye in the next round, so uh, quite an important one to get through. Grace looking for a 9.75. Nick will be leaving first, though, 11.30. Grace has been snaking around quite a bit off she the start line. has, actually. You're right. So she can get it to hook and go. Better. Well, Nick is. Yeah. Oh, takes it. 11.32 on 11.30. Nearly Nicely broke out. Done. Nearly broke out. Uh, 10.48 on a 9.60. Not quite working out there for Grace, but Nick Playden uh, guaranteed into the semis now as he gets a bye in round three. Well, the next race, this is the kind of cool stuff that you see in drag racing. Yeah. Two guys that have been childhood friends, childhood racing buddies. Scott Collier, Brett Cordell facing off here. Just the only thing that's a shame about this one is not the final, because I'm sure they'd love to have a go at each other in the final. Brett does a 10.20, Slick Tricks Lane. Scott, 9.60. Scott was number one qualifier. <laughs> Scott has already caught Brett by the time they got to 60 foot. They're side by side all the way down, though. Oh, Scott did the smart thing. He sat up at the finish line and let break, let Brett break out. Try and say that a few times when you had a couple. Um, Scott Collier moves on. Brett Cordell makes his best run of the weekend, but unfortunately, it was uh, it was a breakout one. Scott, you could see that clearly, couldn't you? He just thought, no, I'll let him have that. <laughs> right, Phil Pratt. Uh, on a predetermined buy. So matchups for round three. Uh, Scott Collier be taking on Robbie Dobby uh, for a place in the semis where it's a buy into the final. Phil Pratt taking on Dave Grundy. And Nick Bladen gets the buy in the next round. Right, Pro ET. I'll be looking forward to this one. Uh, this is Harley J taking on Stevie Gates, the two eight-second runners in the Pro ET, and they meet in round two. He really has done a good job, Stevie Gates, of making that car his own. Um, it looks absolutely fantastic. Even the chassis is painted as well under yeah. there uh, in the Hailing Island colours, which we'll call them. Uh, 858 is his chosen number, 887 for Harley J Derby. Now, we know when Harley J started driving this car, right? He wasn't even le old, no, legally he's allowed to drive 16. on the street. He drove this he, at know? 16. Mad. Such are the perverse laws. You can go 150 miles now on a drag strip, but not 70 on a motorway. It's going to be a good one. Oh, Harley's had to back out the throttle, unfortunately. As long as Stevie Gates doesn't break out, which doesn't. he doesn't. <laughs> That's the way to do it. 6.85 on a 58. Moving on to round three as yet undefeated with his new race car. Yeah, yeah loving life in that, isn't he? <laughs> super combi to the Perry Lane, please. I'm guessing for round one. But super combi to the lanes, please, for round one. Right, right, Lee Morris and Freddie Thompson, your round two match up here. Of course, uh, Lee Morris, uh, if he so wished, could be wearing number one on the car this year. Champion last year in Pro ET, but sticks with his normal number. So, 
Freddie got past Andrew Brook in round one. Tough customer though with Lee Morris. He did an expert job of failing yeah. the throttle at the finish line. Uh, he had 600 in the bank off the start line, which is normally kind of all you need in uh, in Super Pro. Not in Pro ET, or in bracket racing in general, sorry. So, Matthew Dowdy, Mark Huxley. Uh, Matthew Dowdy now with an 11.10 dial in with that Nova. Where that Nova came from, by any chance? Yes, it was a customer car at Williams Brothers Racing that customer. came in. Yeah, it came in for some service work, and then the guy <laughs> guy decided to sell it. <laughs> so uh, you guys love what they are seriously fickle about what they own, aren't they? Yeah. Hear me. Um, came in to be yeah. service that he sold it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> How many people have told a story like that about their own car ever? <laughs> oh, and it is Matthew Dowdy. Into round three, Mark Huxley. Cherry on the tree for him. I wonder. Let's see what Matthew does this time. 11.15, which is what it ran last time. Oh, breakout as well. <laughs> for Mark, yeah. Bad on both ends, I think the phrase is. Um, I wonder if the guy who owned that before knows that Matthew now races it. Uh, yes, I think so, yeah. Just out of blind curiosity. Yeah. Um, now, the guy who owned it before... If I remember right, he's got another car that the boys look after, but I can't, oh, okay, can't fair remember. enough. Well, they obviously do, hence the fact that yeah. was taken to them in the first yeah. place. Yeah? yeah, I'd just love to know how that conversation went. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know somebody's looking yeah. for one of those. Okay, yeah. they've got money. Okay, they'd like to buy it. Okay, Don Scott <laughs> and Dougie McCur. This is a beautiful car. So Doug's going to go first. Followed by that big old Superbird. That's going to be yeah, really good close. race. Good race. Really, really close. All double breakout. Don breaks out by more. Doug McClure, only by three hundredths breakout. He is into the next round. Right, Nick Mugridge, Dave Rudd. I shouldn't say there's uh, there's no such thing as a surprise in drag racing, but uh, if you look at the cars that are making it through, some of your favoured runners aren't going uh, deep into eliminations. But Matthew Dowdy uh, is going to be taking on Lee Morris in round three. Stevie Gates is going to take on Doug McClure. And we're going to sort out the other two pairs in the next four pairings. 8.50 bike into the lanes, please. 8.50 bike into the lanes, please. That's very close to the top end as well. It might be. Look at that. Oh, Dave Rudd takes the strike, but he breaks out by seven thousandths of a second. He was actually slightly quicker on the tree, which is unusual with anyone named Mugridge in the other lane. And, um, goodness me. Seven thou breakout that time for Dave Rudd. Finally, the car runs as it's supposed to. Just a little bit too well. Good run, though. Uh, Nick would have been hard to beat, though. He went 10.15 yeah. with a zero on the 10.14. He was exactly a hundredth of a second off the perfect ET there. Went 10.15, zero, zero on a 10.14 dial. OK, Hans van der Speck gets the long distance award this weekend in Pro ET from the Netherlands. We were saying that as a crow flies, it's probably not that far away. It's just the boat ride in the yeah. middle that makes it a bit of a pain. All right, Vic is round again for another run. Getting uh, money for money for being here this weekend. Oh, goodness me. Well, Vic Parsons' car didn't run real well in Supergas a minute ago. See if he solves it. Hands breaks out. Vic Parsons, go on, Colin. Yeah, he was in a no-win there. Got there 0-5. Uh, but, yeah, 
He was he was always, the only way that Hans van Speck was going to get there first was by breaking out because uh, he was completely treed double yeah. o one in the other lane to a point three five. All right, Tom K, Ronnie Mercer. Uh, nothing between them on the tree. Well, a hundredth of a second, let's be honest. Uh, Tom K, 10.24. Ronnie, 10.23. Tom uh, had a yeah, excellent say, driving job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the wiggles, doesn't he? It'd be interesting to see if it does it this time. Well, you can clearly see who moved first. Well, Tom takes the win, and we'll need a clean set of underwear after yes, that. Yes, most oh, dear definitely. Me. The win margin as well, 005 at the stripe. Tom K was all, well, instead of the wiggle at half track, he did it at the finish line, and it kept wiggling past the finish line. I'm sure that one will be repeated on a reel somewhere. Yeah. Uh, he My saved word. it, he's into the next he round. He held on to that. Uh, but um, well done, he, Ronnie Mercer wasn't exactly far away, and he broke out as well. Yeah, Ronnie was on a front row seat for that one. Wow. So, Dave Fulton and Mason Griffiths, two, I would say they're new to them cars. Dave's run this a few times before. He just, every time he's come and run it, he's gone, I just can't get on with it. <laughs> in, the, in the way that only Dave can yeah. say that, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you know, I just, it just didn't run that well. I couldn't really dial it in, so I went back to the other car. <laughs> And Mason Griff is the car. I don't know whether it's new to him or... Oh, brake lights are on. He's going to let Dave break out. Well, Dave's whomping the throttle, so he shouldn't break out. 9.39, nicely done, sir. Well, Mason Griffiths... Um, yeah, he's pulling it over to the right-hand side. Obviously got an issue there. Very professional, sir. Thank you very much. That's the way to do it. If you have a problem, get out of the racing line. But he has stopped right by almost exactly on the finish line. We're about to get cracking with Super Pro ET. Just a quick retrieval job at the top end for Mason. Just realised we've been here nearly a whole weekend and no one's rung your doorbell. They have. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we just weren't live on air when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you could say, and for once in my life, I remembered to turn yeah. it off. <laughs> Sorry. Well, actually, you can see him on the uh, yeah. live stream there, actually, Mason. Uh, literally in the speed traps. Now, Alan Reinhardt does this all the time. Guys in the TV track, if you wouldn't mind, can we, is there any chance we can see a replay of that run with Tom Kay and Ronnie Mercer? You've probably got it queued up. You won't have it queued up somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, it was a previous pairing to this. So rewind about two minutes. Oh, there we go. You were right. There we go. Fantastic. So let's have a look at this then. Ronnie Mercer and Tom Kay. Now, we know Tom's dragster has a little bit of a wiggle um, as it approaches the top end but uh, it's the wiggle it's at the top end but it's the wiggle afterwards mm. the only thing I can think may have happened um, there we go so if we watch again if you're watching this at home this means nothing to anyone sitting in the grandstands it depends on all depends on the angles of what we get to see so they're both absolutely... Yeah, though he's moving, he's slightly he's moving around now. There. He's sideways at the finish line. In the shutdown area? And then after the shutdown area... Oh, that was close. That was very, very close. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't we, see it. We don't have the footage of the big wiggle that was going on down the shutdown area. But yeah, it was starting to move just as he was approaching the stripe. It was just that, just that bit there. But thank you ever so much indeed to uh, Box Lane. Uh, always do an amazing job covering this, you know. Anything Alan Reinhardt can do, we can do worse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, back to Nitro FM for a few moments. Uh, we've just got a very small bit of track prep to do. It's not weather-related. It is because we're getting ready to go quicker and faster. Uh, Super Pro Round 2 coming up. What are the matchups actually, before we hand over? Oh, with Super Pro? Yeah, let's have a quick look. Um, we have got Scott Howes taking on Dave Russell, Barry Giles taking on Callum Swinchap. Uh, your number one man in the points last year, Alan Dibwell, is going to be taking on Mark Corsell, uh, Tom Atkinson and Mark Bailey, and then Colin Morris taking on Alan Schofield. Going to be lots of fun. Nitro mm. FM just for a moment. We'll be back very shortly.
So I think after this qualifying session, it's all racing the rest of yeah, the day. Yeah, apart from yeah. one qualifier for a 950 bike, but I don't think they need it. <laughs> Wayne Hiscock goes 927. Uh, totally forgot to lift there. Run it out the back door. 142 mile an hour. Uh, Andy Harrison, well, 1439 and 78 tells the story. He lifted very early indeed. Do you know what? No matter how, how many times you do that, when you see track spotters out in front of you, it's it just how can I put it? Puts doubt in your mind. It does. Even though you know they they checked it and they're doing yeah. their very very best for you, you can't help it. But uh, Jasmine Tunstall will be the next down the Castro Lane, which I'm sure will be fine. Yeah, no problem at all. Bob Molden still number one qualifier with his 991 from yesterday. 930. <laughs> That's a super comp one, isn't it? <laughs> Both had a good look at each other. Look at the lights, folks. <laughs> 012 and an 018. Shame this isn't the final. Well, Stu Dorney probably doesn't think that. Uh, 10.10, 153 and 994. Anyway, Vic Parsons and Dave Fulton. I think we've got ET Bike to go before them anyway, so they'll be all right for a minute. Yeah, and Junior, and junior Dragster. Ah, Vic, is Vic Parsons in round two of Pro ET as well? Yes, he, he is. is. Yes, yeah, he had a bye. So. Do you remember? All right, Super Pro into the lanes as well, please, for round two. Super Pro ET, please, into the lanes for round two. Yeah, Junior Dragster just rolling around now. So again, 990 is the number of choice. Well, Vic doesn't seem to have any issues with a pro tree or a sportsman tree. <laughs> but it's uh, Dave getting there with first. With the wrong stop on. Or maybe not. No, Vic's just tailed off. 987, pretty close, 145. Yeah. Peters and Ellie May Brown. So Ellie's going to be going first. Well, just over a quarter of a second. Both get green lights. Looks like Ellie's quite away in front, actually. Yeah, too far, actually. Broke out. <laughs> <laughs> that will be, yes, she was over the line. Lisa's, thank God, another cup of tea. Um, yeah, Harry was off the start line first as well. All right, Ted Sullivan, Kai Cooper, your next pair. 840 place 910. Kai will be going first. Just inching forward. Here we go. Oh, and it's game over for Kai. Goes 0-3 red. Ted Sullivan 0-1 green, though. But the race has already decided in his favour. So an unfortunate end to Kai's weekend. Daniel Weir. Um, now it's taking on Tom Peters. Daniel's getting as close as he yeah, can. I was going to say, can't get much being... closer, can he? <laughs> Is there another lane we don't know about in the middle? 
Yeah, he's looking to do the four wide nationals in the left hand lane, isn't he? God. <laughs> Getting on three cars. You could, next don't to give him ideas. You could <laughs> run junior drags as four wide. We just could have four wide timing, that's the problem. Yeah, uh, yeah against Tom Peters. Tom's going to go, well, he's going to get in the green line first. Whether he goes first is up to him. And Tom Peters takes that one with a 901 on his 890 dial. Peters in uh, round three. And the winner of this one will be taking on uh, Ted Sullivan. Uh, green light on both sides of the racetrack. Let's wait and see what Freddie did before I said that. Now, Freddie has already gone past Teddy. Now, just make sure he doesn't break out. He doesn't. Okay, so Freddie Taylor is into round three. And Grace Smith, one hundredth of a second between them. On their darlings. So the Boost Monkey Jr. of Gray Smith, 827 dial in, Luke Mugridge with the Velocity Dragster, 826. Oh, 0 06 red for Gray, so Luke Mugridge gets the win there. But I've got to say, huge congratulations to Vix, actually, uh, getting into the sevens with uh, Street Eliminator this weekend. Very, very good indeed from them. That's unfortunately Dave Grundy taking. Here we go once again, and this is now Super Pro ET Eliminations around number two. Dave Russell with a van with no name coming underneath the tower, going to be taking on Scott Hauser. So Scott Hauser was your number one qualifier, obviously had a bite in round number one to get to this spot here. Dave Russell got past Matt Peters in round one. Right, 8.76 the dial in for Dave Russell, 7.34 for Scott Hauser. Two very, very experienced competitors indeed, two very good competitors. So this one will be sorted out at the stripe. start line as uh, Dave Russell a little bit too keen to get the job done goes red so Scott Hauser into round number three with a 734 and a 734 darling that was going to be tough to get around uh, also Dave Russell broke out as well. a little small block Chevy's going ow <laughs> <laughs> after that stop stretching me <laughs> I'm not that big <laughs> 
Al Schofield with his new toy. Seven eighty. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, I, I think that's just <laughs> maybe he's tuned it to do that. Possibly. The other thing, the other thing he might be doing. I don't want to give anything up. Well, I'm sure everyone's noticed. But what he did in round one was he left, caught the other car up, and then just shattered them all oh, the way to the finish line. Point, actually, he yeah. may well be doing that. We'll see. We'll see. He's up against a real tough customer, though. Colin Morris. In the family Camaro. 8.76. Colin had a good look at the tree, as in sideways. Well, Alan's not got the uh, chance to shadow him this time. And he breaks out. Oh, they both break out. Colin by a thousand. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that winning camera shot. That really is good. Yeah, that was a reaction time difference, basically. Yeah. That's what made um, Al Schofield break out by that much. He went 776 at 169. And um, Mr. Morris was just a thou off. Yeah, but fair dues to... Uh, um, Absolutely. Uh, Alan Schofield, first... Well, first day or two in the car and uh, he competitive straight away so uh, I bet that's like driving the other car but much funner oh yeah, yeah. Much funner. well it's got blur on it you know. just that works I think Al Schofield's owned more cars in like last two years than most drag races have in their lifetime so. he's uh, <laughs> he, he's like the um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for he is the Fulton he's, the, he's, the, he's, like, he's like the Fulton of the Super Bowl yeah. world basically try and see which car fits yeah I like that one we'll do that so, yeah, Mark Cousel and Alan Dibwell. This is a big old matchup. Basically, the way it used to be. The car in the orchestral lane with the engine in front of the driver. 8.30. 7.69 for the defending champ. I bet that sounds really good, doesn't it? Good leaves to both of them. Alan did well, heading characteristically to the right, as usual. But a characteristic wind light as well. Double breakout. Mark Corsell, just that little bit too quick at the finish line. Alan did well, was over the strike first. He did have a bit of wriggle room. He also had a better reacting time, which again was a major factor in how that race went down at the finish line. Uh, 8.50 bike, 9.50 bike, and junior drag bike into the lanes, please. 8.50, 9.50, and junior drag bike, please, into the pairing lanes. Yeah, Alan Dibbell also gets a buy in the next round, so he'll be uh, rather appreciative of that. So that's him in the semis, basically. Yes, yep. it is, yeah. So Tom Atkinson going to be taking on Mark Bailey. Eight eighty, the dial in for Mark. Tom is eight forty six. Going to be stomping on that loud pedal first. Or well, the turn right pedal, as it might be known. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tom's way out in front up there. Backs off perfectly to an 8.52. Take out a 9.36. Bad luck to the ball breaker team. Still a good way to start the year.
Well, the long and short of it is in the Super Pro ET, you've got the long car of Barry Giles down there, the Giles and Hartley Drags, so taking on the short wheelbase Topolino of Callum Swinchat. Ah, so Callum put a shout out, a call out. For a steering um, arm. Yeah, it was, I think, a steering arm, yep. yeah. And, uh, and obviously, someone had one in the back of the seat. <clears throat> Drag races, what a bunch. Excellent stuff. This would be a hell of a race as well. I've always been surprised that Callum hasn't had more success in Super. He just sort of shows how difficult Super Row is, really. Yeah. But I've always been surprised he hasn't had more success because he's so good on the tree. The car always runs the numbers, and he never quite seems to get really deep into eliminations. Maybe today's today. Maybe luck's on his side after that. Who knows? So, 8.93. Or Topolino. You seem to forget that Callum came from Junior Dragster all those years ago. But that's, right. uh, that's where we started. Even though the car in the slick tricks lane looks like an old time car, it's by far the newest of these two. Mm. Barry's Joe's car was originally imported uh, as an S &J S &W car in the late 80s, would you believe? Probably 35 years old, at least, that car. It looks as good as the day it was brought out of the container. Can Callum stay out in front of the dragster? He's about to be caught. Is it before or after? Perfectly judged. Whole shot win as well for Barry Giles. He was 0-2 on the tree. Callum was 0 0.10. At least they made the round, though. So after all the, uh, the grief with steering arms and stuff, Right, quarterfinal Super Pro Scott Hauser taking on Barry Giles. Alan Dibbold gets the bye, and it's going to be Tom Atkinson and Colin Morris. Sportsman ET, round number two, the truck. Being driven by Clive Dandridge, taking on the 50 Shades of Green Camaro of Kirsty Tram. 1290 plays 12 flat. The truck will be going first. Not by much, though. Not as much as you would think. Well, at least both 12s in front. Mm. At least Kirsty does that. It's all about where Kirsty catches him before, after, or at the finish line. She's not going to catch him. So if Clive Dandridge doesn't oh, break just, out, oh, which he, he does, does. Yeah. yeah, he was he had a big margin at the stripe. He had two tenths to play with at the he finish backed, line. He backed off. And he still enough, broke yeah. out by two hun. Uh, he actually many times, and we'll probably still many times more. That tends to be a game changer in bracket racing. Right, Brian Huxley's going to be doing the chasing this time. 13.46 dialing on the focus, but it's 14 flat for Steph Pateman. Um, is the weather different in a part of the country that we don't know about down there, maybe? No, uh, no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've never, ever seen anything but shorts. Yeah, those of us that need blood flow around our legs wear trousers, though, don't we? Right, <laughs> Steph Pateman... And Brian Huxley. Two very well-known names in the drag racing world, matching up. Steph's going to go first. Just, you wouldn't think um, a BMW of that ilk would need a head start against a Focus. However, this is no ordinary Focus. Other than the fact he's got a Huxley in it. Very, very close race indeed again. Can hear backing off, I can hear. And see, a win light for Brian Huxley. Steph was 04 on the tree. Brian was 05. Brian was closer to the... Right, following Sportsman ET will be round one of Supercomp. Yeah. 
Yeah, he got past uh, Chris Layroom in round one. This is going to be a slightly different speed of focus than you just saw. Probably because this one's got a uh, regular engine in it, not a small block. <laughs> yeah. So 1876 was the dial in. 1862 breakout was the result. Doesn't matter on the buy run. It doesn't matter on the buy, you're dead right. All right, Jago Stokes, 1320 against Chris Creswell's 1470. One and a half second difference on the tree. So, Dick Cott in Oxfordshire is where I spent my uh, teenage years. Really? Yeah. So, I went to school in Dick Cott. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't and it's know still much there. And it's still there, it's is it? It's the yeah. school still there, yeah. <laughs> I met Dick Cott more than the school, but there we are. Oh, yeah, well, that as well. Uh, Chris Creswell, just around the corner here. Sharnbrook. Just behind the main grandstand, as I probably said a few Breaks and well, Jago Stokes takes it 1350 to a lose out 1538. I think Chris was on oh the brakes a bit too dear. much. Look at that win margin. Chris Criswell is going to have a proper face palm moment when he sees that timing ticket. He had a huge reaction time advantage, massive over three tenths of a sec, nearly four tenths of a sec. The car at the next end, show him how it's done. <laughs> Yeah, double over. He did the right the thing, though. He just he did, made he sure did. he was trying he not did. to break out, but he just tapped the brake at the yeah. wrong moment. Yeah, win margin double oh four on the other side. Oh, broom, broom down, broom down. <laughs> oh, squeegee, sorry. Okay, next pair. Little Miss Rampage. Felicity Gibbs taking on Jill Medley. Winner of this will get Kirsty Tram in the next round. Jill Medley, 0-2 red. That was after that spectacular yeah. light a little earlier on. Obviously, just cuts it that little bit too tight. So, it's going to be Flistin Kirsty in round three. Those two have raced each other quite a few times over the years. But Flistin goes through with a 17-29. And uh, Jill's day is done, unfortunately. All right, Georgina Smith going to be taking on Richard Palmer. 15-90. Qualified number two. Very, very close to his dialing then. And whoever wins this gets a bye into the semis. So, in effect, two round wins in this pairing here. Georgina's gone straight into stage. Right, Georgina out front. Jag is closing in. Possibly not in time. Not enough though. though by the oh, oh, that's close. Oh, that's a squeaker. Oh, oh Georgina, fifteen ninety-one on the ninety. But yes, as you say, it's a whole shot win. Win margin zero one at the stripe. Richard Palmer takes that one. Right, last pair. Your defending champion Gary Lake taking on a Jane McCready. <laughs> Winner of this one will be taken on uh, Terry Atry in the third round. Then we got round one of Supercomp by the looks That's of That's correct, yeah. Right behind them. T 
two pairs in a solo. It's going to be uh, Leah Callet on a solo. Pairings are Warren Watts and Andy Clifford. And then Paul Hudson and Richard Tonstall. So Gary Lake then here to defend his championship and uh, Jay McCready is the next hurdle he's got to get over to uh, continue that title defence but Jane wouldn't mind taking the win here that's for sure with Ben's van sticking with the 1521 dial in Gary 1402 shift there unfortunately for Jane and uh, Gary Lake already shadowing Jane as they head up towards the stripe yeah Gary just puts the brakes on make sure he doesn't break out which he doesn't uh, 1457 on a 1402 takes the win so I think it is like we just said round number one of super comp Pretty sure Leah Kelly gets the buy. It is, yeah. <laughs> Just a very quick sweep before we fire them up. Uh, what's deck? What's this got? I know you're just yeah, uh, com ladders. Com bike after that. Then it'll be uh, round one of 850 bike. Uh, then it'll be time for the junior bikes to come round once again. So uh, get that ladder in order as well. Uh, then it will be um, super gas. Up and roll. So, a quick time check here on Easter Sunday. Very happy Easter to everybody out there. Uh, just a quick reminder, folks. Uh, don't forget, Ian Blackett is here, Blackett Photography. And uh, Paula is around in the studio. Uh, when we get these quiet moments, uh, always a good opportunity to go into the Blackett Photography studio, get your... Uh, Prince done everything. Ian has been taking the pictures all day long, every day he's up here. So uh, just make sure you pop in and see them. And some of the images are just pure class. I mean, I, don't, I should know that. I've got three of his pictures on my wall at home. And uh, people know that my wall space is very limited because obviously there's cabinets everywhere, but <laughs> I've still got three of his pictures up on the wall. So yeah, definitely worth checking in there. Right, Supercop, here we go. Warren Watson, Andy Clifford. It's the Camaro taking on the Slingshot Dragster. So his first elimination round, I think, in Supercon for Warren. Uh, both these two being a bit off their usual numbers. I'm saying that Warren though, 911. That's not far off. Andy 
Clifford hooking very, very right indeed. Warren's going to get there first as long as he doesn't go too quick. Goes 9.14. And uh, a 9.16, almost exactly the same speed for Andy Clifford. But it was the uh, couple of missteps on the start line that was the end of that, I'm afraid. Well, this young lady yesterday afternoon didn't think she'd be playing at all today. But uh, thanks to Dave Day coming along and uh, having the right bits to get them going again. Bit of a lifesaver. Uh, Leia only put in one qualifier, but it was enough to take the number one spot with an 8.95. So she gets the solo here. And assuming she takes the win. I mean, well, breaks the beams, I should say. Um, then she will be facing Warren Watts in the uh, semi-finals. Oh nine reaction John, I can say that. Having a big wiggle at the top end, but she's not taking her foot out of it at all. No. <laughs> Still goes 170. She's probably enjoying herself. Uh, 896, 171 miles an hour. That was having quite a boogie at the top end. Right, well, this one is for a spot in the final, basically. Paul Hudson and Richard Tunsell. Whoever wins this gets a bye into the final. Paul Hudson qualified in the number two spot with an 8.95. Uh, Richard, 9.19, as I say, loads of new bits on the car. Uh, complete overhaul over the winter period with, uh, with Jed. You do, I'm just so looking forward to the next six months, all the racing we're going to get in. Summer, the, all the, summer uh, time again. All the uh, the good times we're going to have up here. Can't wait. Get to see all of our European friends again, make some yeah. new friends as well, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Couple of zero lights, all about the stripe. Paul Hudson's quite a way out in front, and he doesn't break out with an 898, 146. Richard Tunstall backed off before the finish line. Not their usual clockwork weekend, but I'm guessing it's uh, figuring out all the new stuff. It is, yeah, definitely. Right, comp bike, round one. Oh, 14 of them made it through qualifying. In one piece. Yeah. Uh, well, and that's right, we say in one piece. We know Blade King, unfortunately, ah, is yeah, out. Sorry. Um, so, bizarrely... Unfortunate um, turn of phrase then, sorry. Yeah, uh, Mark Dainty is going to get two buys into the semis. So, uh, very fortunate for him. But then I know Mark will uh, try and run some numbers, use it as extended testing, if you like. He's already run 7-11 in quali. So, interesting to see how he gets on. Uh, first pair, though, that looks like Paul Hambridge down there with a the silent assassin. Anna Sasiak on the other side of the racetrack. Paul qualified number three. He went 7.29. Anna went 8.22. So on paper, uh, Paul's got this, but as we know, anything can happen out there. And normally does. And uh, yeah. You just never know. Paul Hambidge, around about a second in their qualifying times between these two.
So these, this is a heads-up class, which means the tree goes green at the same time in both lanes, and it's the first one there with simple apps. Good looking run there for Paul. Long gone. Look at that, knocking on the door at 200 miles an hour as well. 7.26, 198 miles an hour. Anna spun the tyre bit off the start line, 8.65, 166 miles an hour. Uh, street Eliminator, Top Fuel Bike, Comp Eliminator into the pairing lanes, please. Street Eliminator, Top Fuel Bike and Comp, please. So no Graham dance yesterday uh, after an unfortunate, well, probably engine expiring note yesterday. Such a shame, actually, because Graham done a lot, hell of a lot of work in the off-season. Well, it was a really uh, great run and it wasn't yeah. well that's two wheelies I counted <laughs> still went 778 187 mile an hour well done Michael you got to love how your brain goes yep got to keep going it's a bye run as well yeah Well, two of the smartest looking bikes in Combike, and that is Andrew Christoffi and Adam Burns. I always wonder, looking at these two, whether they'd actually be legal for Super Street. They look like, for all intents and purposes, Ooh. they would. I'm guessing, I'm guessing, obviously, they choose not to race in Super Street bike because they prefer racing in, uh, yeah. uh, in the Combike arena. Uh, but then obviously you got the likes of Mark Dainty that uh, came out of Super Street Bike into Comp Bike. Well, unfortunately, it won't be a race. Adam Burns, one of his crew guys, actually uh, noticed something and clipped him off. Nice looking run for Andrew Christoffi. He went 7.65 in qualifying, goes 7.74 at 186 on that one. Yeah, new performance levels for Andrew recently doing extremely well on the bike. I remember when he first dipped into the 7.8s and it was like, oh my God, yeah. But now he's in the 7.6s, really, really going well. Nice guy as well. One of our, I'm not saying he's uh, out of junior drag bike, but he's one of the younger riders. Bearing in mind that some of them are, been around the sport a while. <laughs> Incredibly polite. It especially was the politest way I could do it. Danny burnt out like that. It's very <laughs> kind of you. Yeah. I'm only joking. I think Danny's younger than me, but he's been around for a long while. <laughs> um, Michael Gooding in the Kestrel Lane and the one and only Danny Cockrell. Staging up. Oh, no, Danny. Whoa, oh, this is going to be fun. Can Danny Cockrell run him down? Yes. Oh, oh we've bailed it. Oh. He's done He's it. Done 8 it. 14, 179. <laughs> what oh, a race. Boy. That's got to be race of the year. We're only in March. That was fantastic. Danny, if you could do that again next time you race someone that's a couple of seconds slower than you, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, Michael Gooding didn't hey. have it. Or, you know, it wasn't the perfect run for Michael, let's be Look fair. Look at the closing speed. Sorry. <laughs> 8 14, 179 for Danny Cockle. 998, 131 for Michael wow. Gooding. Michael Gooding made his best run of the weekend. And he probably thought it was Christmas when Danny didn't leave the start line. But Danny Cockrell just managed to plug it in gear and go in time. To very, run him down. very quick thinking from Danny. Boy, oh boy. It, I, I, did he jump out? Of, I have to ask him. I, at some I point. think he did. I think jumped he just out jumped out of gear. gear. Let the clutch out. Okay, Len Paget should have been taking on Jasmine Cordell, who had a bit of a fraught weekend as well. Yeah, they uh, they knew where they were at last night, unfortunately. So. Uh, uh, the bike, well, the engine's gone back to hospital, as uh, Jazz calls it, so uh, Alan Davis is going to try and work his magic on it. I think that's where he's gone anyway. No one better to work their magic than uh, Mr. Davis. <laughs> Loads of tyre chatter, but a really nice 113 to 60 for Lenny. That'll be a good one. It is indeed. There we go. 7.69. Well, the computer always changed his mind. That looked like it went to, from a four to a nine, but still, it's quickest run of the weekend. So, Len Padgett and Danny Cockrell next round. Good one. 
it might be close if, Len, if Danny does the same thing again. Okay, Mark Dainty. But we're on a. Oh no, he should have been against Blade. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Well, all intents and purposes, Mark looks like he's going for it here. So uh, let's see if we can get a nice low seven second pass. There's not many times of the year you get air this good That's with true. a tailwind. And a ta yeah, you're right. 125, 60 foot. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's spinning a lot <laughs> in the middle. Broke traction around about a couple of hundred foot out. And he backs it off. Yeah. He's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong at all. He didn't lose, didn't lose control or anything like that. It just spun going in a linear direction. Well, he's got another buy after this, after that race. So, uh, yeah, he's not going to beat anybody until the semis. Right, one pair to go. Uh, Dan Dieth and Chris Neary. They're the ones underneath the tower. No, uh, no, Dan DF. Oh. That I wasn't expecting. So, Chris Neary. On a solo. Not the smoothest of launches. Eight flat, 180 <laughs> mile an hour. <laughs> Not hanging around at all. Just a small tick off of his qualified time, and that was nowhere near perfect either. So, I think up next, 8.50 round one. Junior drag bikes right behind them. And we've got super gas as well. So, Craig Wright going to be taking... Oh, I want a big pardon. Mick Winyard yep. should be against Carl Thomas. But there is no Carl Thomas, unfortunately. Sorry, that's what confused me then, because I saw Cat standing out there. I thought, oh, I must be Craig. Yeah. I'm guessing Craig's next. <laughs> 823. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the speed as well, 176 yeah. miles an hour. Did someone say comp bike? No, they didn't, obviously. Okay, uh, Craig Wright taking on Stacey nice. Reed. Uh, Stacey qualified with a 913. Uh, that was only one of her runs because I think the other two went uh, eight, too four, much. eight, three, something like that. Yeah, they were too much, weren't they? Yeah. I'm pretty sure this. Well, no, I'm not sure. It could well be Chris's old super street bike, actually. In the Kestrel Lane, that's Stace and Craig Wright with a beautiful new scheme. On his machine, Craig is long gone. Stace with a lot of wheel slip off the line. And Craig's going to be looking over his shoulder. Lifts off, sits up, and makes sure he doesn't break out. 860, 100, only 129. He was also a tenth better on the tree as well. Super Street Bike into the pairing lanes, please. Can we have Super Street Bike, please, into the pairing lanes? Uh, yes, yeah, Stace loses out with her best right side run of the weekend of an 891 at 156. Yeah, good news for Craig. Gets a bye in the next round into the semis. He'll take that. Right, next up, Pete Slater and Ian Critchlow. Well, I believe he's the owner of Craig Wright's bike. Pretty sure you're right. Well, that's kind of the end of Pete Slater's day. Uh, Critch will look over his shoulder, which he does exactly on cue. Backs off the throttle and rolls over to an 873, just to make sure he doesn't go too quick. Madeira and Costas Giannopoulos 
I'm going to say that right eventually. Giannopoulos, I'm pretty sure that's close. So Costas on his first, I think, elimination run as well. Uh, part of the JKE works team. How cool is that, Jake? You've got a works team, man. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> They both went red, but Costas left before the tree ran. Daniel actually got a red light, so he got the wind yeah. light. Yeah, Costas left before the tree was activated, so he was technically not there Yeah, to the timing system anyway. Daniel left too soon as well, but the tree had been activated. Yeah, That's why Daniel, Daniel got the win. <laughs> I hope I explained that sort of right. No, that was good enough. You, you should have just patted me on the shoulder and said, yeah, that was barely competent, mate. Well done. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> it's better like, than anyone else. It's like explaining here. the offside rule, isn't it? Yeah. Well, right. no, no, it's just that he, the tree ran. He went before the tree ran. The other guy didn't. Even though the other guy went too soon when the tree ran, he was there. j Row. Last one in 8.50. As we move into Junius, right behind him. That's a breakout. <laughs> yep. 830, 160. I think you can still go quite a bit quicker than that as well. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? You can see you can see the guys that resist the urge to go into other classes because comp bike is the natural class, isn't it? Mm. For eight fifty, the next natural class. Well, that or super street bike, obviously. For some of them. So round one of junior drag bike, we have fourteen of them qualified this way. Fourteen. How cool is that? They're brilliant. What did you do with your Easter holidays when you get back? Oh, I race my drag bike. What? Really? Yeah. <laughs> so Ad Lester in the Kestrel name. And Anouk Bergering, who is your number one qualifier, a few times over, actually, I think, over the last two days. Well, uh, she did slip to number two when Leah Morrison took the number one spot away, but Anouk came out in the next pairing and probably took it back. So he's looking for 12.98. Alia Lee's looking for a 9.50. However, this is about wind lights. They're racing to the second block in the middle. Oh, double breakout, but it's Anouk that takes it. 12.92 against the loser at 9.38. So that is a 600s breakout compared to a 1200s breakout. I've never done that because I've never bracket raced, but how annoying must it be to know you, you, you could have just lifted and won? Mm. Yeah, I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I've your, done that. In your street car. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Lyra Humber and John McLean. John was actually uh, a last qualifier. Not that it matters, it's about racing now. Lyra away first. Followed by John. It's so 1458 pace, 1185. Way out in front and a huge breakout for Lyra Humber. Like more than half a second type of breakout. John McLean takes the win. He was a 14th qualifier as well, so there you go. Yeah, there's two ways you can look at it. I've only ever lost one race in my Pro ET career. He's only ever won one I've event. Only, <laughs> but I've got a 100% loss record in Pro ET. That's pretty <laughs> cool. And I've never lost on a whole shot. There we go. How yeah. cool is that? I've, always been, I've never lost on a whole shot. I've always been beaten into the ground. Yeah. So there you go. Put a positive spin on it. Yeah, I broke out by one hundredth of a second in Pro ET. Richard Wilcox and Liam Morrison. <laughs> Richard's actually looking to his right, not even in front of him. He's caught her. He's going to back off. He does. He takes the win. Uh, Forced the breakout for Leah. Dear me, that was quite wow. big. Well, a tenth of a second anyway. It's not that big, is it? But uh, anyway, um, he was about a tenth of a second better on the tree as well. But still, good race. Yeah, but you've just taken the defending champion out. Ooh. Right, uh, Maggie Smallburn and Asaya Alvarez. 10 flat against 13.35. Asaya will be going first, and it's going to be Maggie that's going to be doing the chasing. It must be really hard to sit there and wait on a pro tree. 
Oh. The sportsman tree, it's kind of easy because it counts down. Yeah. Winner will be the one who hasn't broken out. No. Well, it's Maggie. Neither broke out. Beg your pardon. It was Maggie Smallman anyway. Um, closer to a dial-in and uh, a little bit better on the tree. Good to see Isaiah in Junior Drag Bike. Unfortunately, well, apart exit. from a new. Qualified, the lower qualified that has gone through. Well, every pairing. Brad Morris will be pleased to hear that about now because he's off in pursuit of Declan Butt. Oh, it's Declan Butt that takes it. 13.98 to lose at 11.40. Yeah, Declan was slightly better on the tree as well. So that's, that's both of the Morrisons actually out in round yeah. one. There's still a couple of them left hanging around in Super Street Pike. Right, it's down to the Kings now. We've got uh, Holly King in the next pairing, but this time it's Jackson King who's taking on Harry Isaacs. Thirteen, thirteen plays nine fifty, so Jackson will be going first. That's going to be really close. And it's Harry that takes that one. 9.57 on that, 9.50 darling, well done Harry. 13.42 on the 13.13 for Jackson. Right, last pair, Rico Patterson and Holly King. Five seconds difference on the tree. Rico will be going first, 13.20. Holly King's going to be doing the chasing. 8.20. That's a fair old gap. Like five second type of gap. So Rico's off and running. Holly did a really good job of actually predicting where the tree was going to run. She will get there and sits up and coasts across to a perfectly timed round win. 8.35 and an 8.20. And 13.32, uh, she was quite a bit better on the tree as well. So that was uh, really good to see. So 9.50 bike, Q5. Yeah, bear in mind there's only three of them. I was going to say, Carl Thomas has gone to 8.50. Who are you missing? I'm trying to think of who those were missing. Uh, Rick Sawaski's not here either. No, he's not, no. Hey, Rob Stanley and Dave Hall. The name of the game is uh, 950, which is on the board up there. 56 to the 960 of Dave Hall. Nine forty four, nine seventy three. Too quick, too slow. No improvement for either of them. I think that will set the field, apart from one more run, which is coming up right now. Josh McLean. So Josh is the one that can do some damage to the top order, and he doesn't. <laughs> by that's got to be by speed or the last digit. He runs exactly the same number 
is number two, <laughs> but for some reason, he's number three. Okay, we've got Comp Eliminator round there. We've got Super Gas round one. We've got uh, Super Street Bike as well. Yeah, loads of stuff around there, actually. As you say, top bike, top fuel bike, Comp Eliminator, Street Eliminator, Super Street, Funny Bike, Comp Bike, ET Bike. Bike, bike, bike after that. And then, of course, we've got the... Uh, Super Pro and Pro ET and Sports ET after that. And uh, yeah, we just keep on coming. Time check here. Quarter past three in the afternoon on Easter Sunday. And uh, as I say, just a little bit of track prep going on at the moment. So we'll take a breather from commentary just for a quick moment. So Nitro FM 96.2, if you can take over the airwaves, and we'll take it back with continued eliminations here at the Eastern Nationals. Do you know what? No matter how many times you do that, when you see track spotters out in front of you, it's it just how can I put it? Puts doubt in your mind. It does. Even though you know they they checked it and they're doing yeah. the very very best for you, you can't help it. But uh, Jasmine Tunstall will be the next down the Castro Lane, which I'm sure will be fine. Yeah, no problem at all. Bob Molden still number one qualifier with his 991 from yesterday. Nine thirty. <laughs> That's the super comp one, isn't it? <laughs> Both had a good look at each other. Look at the lights, folks. <laughs> 012 and an 018. Shame this isn't the final. Well. Stu Dorney probably doesn't think that. Uh, 10.10, 153, and 994. Anyway, Vic Parsons and Dave Fulton. I think we've got ET Bike to go before them anyway, so they'll be all right for a minute. Yeah, and, Junior, and Junior Dragster. Ah, Vic, is Vic Parsons in round two of Pro ET as well? Yes, he, he is. is. Yes. Yeah, he had a bye. So. Do you remember? All right, Super Pro into the lanes as well, please, for round two. Super Pro ET, please, into the lanes for round two. Yeah, Junior Dragster just right around now. So again, 990 is the number of choice. Well, Vic doesn't seem to have any issues with a pro tree or a sportsman tree. <laughs> but it's uh, Dave getting there with first. With the wrong stop on. Or maybe not. No, Vic's just tailed off. 987, pretty close. 145. Yeah. Peters and Ellie May Brown. So Ellie's going to be going first, by just over a quarter of a second. Both get green lights. Looks like Ellie's quite away in front, actually. Yeah, too far, actually. Broke <laughs> out. <laughs> that over year she was over the line. Leases, thank God, another cut to. Um, yeah, Harry was off the start line first as well. All right, Ted Sullivan, Kai Cooper, your next pair. 840 place 910. Kai will be going first. Forward, here we go. 
Oh, and it's game over for Kai. Goes 0-3 red. Ted Sullivan, 0-1 green, though. But the race has already decided in his favour. So an unfortunate end to Kai's weekend. Daniel Weir. Um, now it's taking on Tom Peters. Daniel's getting as close as he can. I was going to say, he can't get much closer, can he? <laughs> Is there another lane we don't know about in the middle? Yeah, he's looking to do the four wide nationals in the left-hand lane, isn't he? <laughs> get on three cars you could, Don't give him ideas. You could <laughs> run Junior Dragster's four wide. We're just going to have four wide timing. That's the problem. Yeah, uh, yeah against Tom Peters. Tom's going to go. Well, he's going to get the green line first. Whether he goes first is up to him. And Tom Peters takes that one with a 901 on his 890 dial. Tom Peters in uh, round three. And the winner of this one will be taking on uh, Ted Sullivan. Goodness me, I'm so glad we're back racing. Thank you very much so indeed. Green it's like on both sides of the racetrack. Thank, Thank you very much see indeed. What Freddie did before I said that. Now, Freddie has already sure got past Teddy. Lovely lady, but, you know, no, sure he doesn't Super break out. Super guy. And it was these two that were sat in their cars waiting patiently for our weather system to disperse. And here they are, we're matching up in round number one. Well, the one that's qualified kind of out of position is Stu Doiny. Um, also, as well, and bizarrely, he's only racing in super gas this weekend. He's going up against the defending national champion. Yeah, how good does that sound, Stu? Let's see who's got the uh, hold on in better. Yep, I think so. Oh, goodness me. Well, Stu Doherty picks the best time to make run his best number. Um, he was kind of late on the tree for him. Uh, it was an 0-2 for the defending champ to 07. But uh, for some reason... Yeah, it's a big lift there. I'm yeah. Uh, Stu Morris was off it way before the finish line. Only went 10.07, which is uncharacteristic to say the least. 9.93, though, for the win. Not that we should be surprised that Stu doing one, joining one, but you know, I think that was a—that's what you get for taking my championship. <laughs> yeah, it's only, only on loan. No. I'm only joking. They're all good friends. Uh, Wayne here's got Andy Harrison, another previous champ as well. Andy Harrison, he's done very, very well with this car since he got it. So again, heads up race first, the finish line wins without going quicker than 9.90. Wayne Hiscock is long gone, but that's a 9.2 second car. He's got to be on the brakes now. Now. Now, that now, would be a good idea. Now, would be good. Oh, oh he only just breaks out, actually. 9.85 too quick. It was Andy Harrison that was a bit off pace, yeah. In with a, I think we just got away with that type of pace. Right, Dave Fulton and Vic Parsons, your next pair. Winner of this gets a bye into the semis. Vic's first ever race, I think, in Super Gas. Is, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. As in proper race. He's obviously been qualified, but this will be his first ever race. Uh, Dave Fulton's been in Super Gas for a long while.
10.09 for Dave Fulton, and uh, he takes a round win from Vic Parsons, who went 11.30. I think Vic had some Wilkesman off the line, actually. Uh, it wasn't a throttle stop for Vic, uh, where he, you do get that from Dave. Bob Molden gets to buy by virtue of being the number one qualifier. Yeah, it's always cool when a car that's um, driven to 990 as opposed to throttle stop to 990 gets the number one spot. You've got to love that. Yeah, but he's got Stu Doiny in round two. Right behind them, we've got round one of... Comp Eliminator. Yeah, one more pair to go after this, though, in uh, gas, oh, which sorry. is uh, Jasmine and Tim Moore. They're neither are here. I've just seen... Anyway, never neither mind. We'll get to that in a second. Right underneath is Dan. Oh, there. wow. Oh, can, can you believe that? If neither of them are here, that means Andy Harrison gets a buy in the quarters. He gets a buy in the semis all the way to the so final. So that's it then, yeah? Pretty yeah. much. So Andy Harrison's so into the final. who are we missing, sorry? Jasmine Tunstall and Tim Moore. Jasmine, well, obviously, Tim. in the road store. In the roadster, Tim went back to the pits before the last round of quality. Oh, there we go. And neither of them are there. Wow. Okay. Spencer Tram with a bye run because no Ahmed Jam said I did see Ahmed pull out earlier, live to fight another day. Spencer Spence will probably run the car to about a thousand foot. Click it off. Right, despite, uh, well, Spencer goes through with them. Despite the Williams brothers team having four of the seven cars in comp, they all avoid each other in round one. That's quite impressive. unbelievable. Right, Dan Williams, uh, fair to say he's got a mountain to climb here to try and get around Reuben Dawson. Uh, 10 20 plays 9 70. So this is a bit of a different game for Reuben. Um, he's got to nail it, but. Uh, be in front of the finish line, but not go more than half a second under his index because it will start affecting him if he does. However, Dan has been unusually off pace this weekend. Well, it, it is Dan Williams going through. Ruben goes red. I don't think it matters what he runs now, does it? Ruben 9.49, Dan 10.18. Yeah, Dan's car just, um, it'd be good for bracket racing, not for uh, heads up. Look at Ruben's reaction time, though. Yeah, 005. 005 right. red. So, Rob Smallworth and Gary Carr. And then it'll be uh, Nick Williams on a solo. This could be a good race, actually. Uh, Rob Smallworth is going to try and run down that pesky Nova. How far under his index was Gary Carr? Let's have a look. 0.5. Uh, no, no, he's more than that. Oh, oh hang on, we're on the wrong there. thing. It's okay, it's easy to work out. Um, seven tenths under his index. He went 11.15 and his index is 11.85. So seven tenths of a second under. Rob Smallworth was a couple of tenths under. Yeah. He's going to have a hard old job. It's also going to be difficult for Gary Carr to lift at the top end, isn't it, I think? Just hope for a good run for Rob this time. That's Gary all the way to 11.33. Oh, and an 0-2 light as well. Nice looking run for Rob, though. 7.66, 175 nice. miles an hour. Nice. The best of the weekend. Looks smooth and straight, which is always a good thing. Right, Junior Dragster into the pairing lanes, please. Junior Dragster, can we have you into the lanes? Right, OK, so it is going to be four for four for the Williams Brothers team in comp. Uh, with uh, Nick bringing the car up to the line, went 7.98 in qualifying, and then he backed it up with an 8 flat in his run earlier on. So uh, now he just has to put his race head on and not uh, well, hurt the index, so to speak. Uh, the one thing I think Nick will probably be keen to do is make sure the car gets off the line. Yeah. 
which there. he didn't. There you go. <laughs> Good job there was no one in the other lane because he might have been in trouble. He'd been absolutely like clockwork through qualifying. Yeah. So matchups in the semis is going to be Gary Carr taking on Spencer Tram. And surprise, surprise, it's the Williams brothers themselves, Dan taking on Nick, the other side of the ladder. Right, Street Eliminator, round number two. Been looking forward to this. Uh, Elliot Day taking on <laughs> Tony Higgs. <laughs> Not as much as Elliot as I'm sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, one slip from Tony Higgs. Elliot will be right there. He had the perfect light, so we know he's good on the tree. Now then, tailwind, good conditions. 197 <laughs> miles an hour last time from Tony Higgs. Right. How many 200 mile Capri and our Capris do we have in the UK? Uh, unless... Uh, I'm just trying to think. But unless Bob's done it in the... Bob Glassop has done it. <laughs> I can't, That's... I well, yeah, no, good yeah. point. I think he has, yeah. twitchy there a lot twitchy that's really closer than it should have been oh <laughs> 813 look, look at, at the Elliot. number though look for at the Elliot. Elliot number 832 <laughs> whoa <laughs> 832 for Elliot 163 miles an hour and Elliot you're oh. glad you're at the other end because daddy's getting a piggyback yeah he does Tony Hicks still went through at 188 but Elliot Day 8.32, That's wow. huge. And uh, it was off the tree, off the line first, but only yeah. just, only just, 06 to an 08. Great, great race. We always thought that. We did think that was going to be fun. That was good. But uh, Tony Higgs at the strike, 0.16. He went 188 miles an hour over the line as well. They certainly enjoy those. Drag, <laughs> they're drag racing, those boys, don't they? <laughs> uh, right, Andy Bond, and, and la the latest member of the Seven Second Club in Street Eliminator, uh, Victoria Smith. So that Buick uh, with a whole new flip front front end, well, detachable front end on the car, uh, really helping things. And she gets to on. race Andy Pond for yeah. the pleasure. Who gets the whole shot off the start line? Provided it sticks, which it looks like it's going to. That'll be all ugly sister. 784 for Victoria Smith. 743 for the win for Andy Bond. But 784 for Vix. 188, 188 mile an hour. Wow. Well, she just opened the door just a tiny bit and uh, went in there with the uh, with that 7 earlier. But 784. Well done, Vix. Well, she posted on Facebook, this looks like it's going to be a good season. Yep, you got that right. Well, Andy Bond with a 7.43 at 203 miles an hour. He's off the start line first as well. Uh, Any time that happens, it's never a good thing for the opposition. Okay, so Al McSweeney, unfortunately, on a bye run. No Rob Carter. What a huge shame. Um, thank you very much, Steve, for the message, Luke, to say uh, Addy Goodyear did the fetch and run from Manchester yesterday for Rob Carter. That's how it got sorted out thanks yeah. for the message mate um, what a shame what a shame you didn't make round one Eight fifty bike into the lanes please Ooh. as Al Mack well starts coasting now 122 to 60 as well look at that right semi-finals then in Street Eliminator Andy Bond and Al Mack and it's Tony Higgs with a bye into the final. Ooh wee. Super Street bike up next. Just about to do a little bit of gluing. They're around there ready to go. So Super Street bike eliminations round one. Daniel taking on Boyce. Alan Morrison and Margot Schmidt. Al Morrison Jr. taking on Brad Head. And Jake Michelle against Johnny Hines. So it's all bikes all the time for the minute. Where are we up to? Come so quick. Lovely uh, chilly day here, and the sunroof and the windows open on the Gluebird. <laughs> right, Nitro FM, if you can take the airwaves over whilst the Gluebird is out there putting some extra traction down, and we will take it back. We'll be continuing eliminations here at the Eastern Nationals.
He's going up against the defending national champion. Yeah, how good does that sound, Stu? Let's see who's got the uh, cold eye in better. Yep, I think so. Oh, goodness me. Well, Stu Dooney picks the best time to make run his best number. Um, he was kind of late on the tree for him. So again, heads up race first to finish line wins without going quicker than 9.90. Wayne Hiscock is long gone, but that's a 9.2 second car. He's got to be on the brakes now. 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 That now. Would be a good idea. Now. Would be good. Oh, oh he only just breaks out, actually. 9.85 too quick. It was Andy Harrison that was a bit off pace. Yeah. In with a... By Dave Fulton and Vic Parsons, your next pair. Winner of this gets a bye into the semis. Vic's first ever race, I think, in Super Gas. It is, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. As in proper race. He's obviously been qualifying, but this will be his first ever race. Uh, Dave Fulton's been in Super Gas for a long while. Ten oh nine for Dave Fulton, and uh, he takes a round win from Vic Parsons, who went eleven thirty. I think Vic had some Wilson off the line. Actually, uh, it wasn't a throttle stop for Vic, uh, where he do get that, from Dave. And then we got round one of Comp Eliminator. Yeah, one more pair to go after this, though, in uh, gas, which oh, is uh, Jasmine and Tim Moore. They're neither are here. I've just seen. Anyway, never neither. Mind. We'll get to that in a second. Right underneath is Dan. Oh, think. wow. Nice 39. Oh, can, can you believe that? If neither of them are here, that means Andy Harrison gets a buy in. Okay. Spencer Tram with a buy run because no Ahmed Jam said I did see Ahmed pull out earlier, live to fight another day. Spencer will, Spencer will probably run the car to about a thousand foot. Click it off. Right, despite, uh, well, Spencer goes through with them, despite the Williams brothers team having... Thank you very much indeed, Nitro FM. Told you it wouldn't be long. Super Row into the lanes, please. Can we have Super Row T, please? We have round number one of Super Street Bike coming your way. Obviously, everything's slightly later in the day than planned, but we'll get there. So, first pair, Margot Schmidt from the Netherlands against Alan Morrison. And it's actually Al Morrison who has the performance advantage so far this weekend. I always say so far, because that can change in about mm, seven seconds. So Margot has been quicker and faster than the 7.39 that she qualified with. Um, I'm pretty sure Alan Morrison's 7.25 is one of his best ever runs, actually. So, heads up class, meaning green light comes on, first to the finish line, wins. If everything goes to form, this is going to be a super close race. 
time to go. Big hole shot for Alan Morrison. Margot just misses the blocks, but it's too late. 7.16, 198 miles an hour for Alan Morrison. Uh, PB and a terrific run. Margot, unfortunately, 0 0.30 on the tree. The bike wandered off to the right and nearly got over the centre line, unfortunately. Big thanks to Margot and the team, though, and Fizz, of course, for making the trip over from the Netherlands. Hope to see you again very, very soon. Bradhead, Al Morrison Jr., my goodness me, Bradhead. <laughs> Nothing like in at the deep end, mate, eh? Hey, European Super Street bike champion the other lane. Yeah, big congratulations there to uh, Al Morrison, the new PB there, 716. Alan Morrison Jr. is long gone. Long, long, long gone. Two. A 685. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Check out the speed. 219 miles an hour. 828 for Brad, 180. There's loads more to come from that bike. He's going to be on the money. This could see him in Super Street bike as well. Okay, another quick baptism of fire. This time it's for Johnny Hines against Jake Michel. Uh, the quickest Super Street bike in, Euro uh, in the UK. Let's see if it goes the same way as um, the first one did, do we say? They're saying that, actually. That's Jake's teammate that just got taken out there. So Johnny Hines' his first ever race in Super Street bike. It's against Jake. Well, Jake Michelle off the line first. Johnny's giving it a good run, though. He's going to dunk the box. Oh, he does. 673. 218 miles an hour. That's the kind of number we've been waiting all weekend for. Johnny Hines, well, I'm not going to say he wasn't far behind him. He really wasn't. He followed him over the finish line. But um, Johnny Hines was really making a good go of that. The bike was on a good run. That's why he didn't want to let go. And unfortunately, it just went a bit too far over centre at around about 1,000 foot. I hope Johnny's foot is all right because yeah. he doinked the blocks. But look at that number for Jake Michel, 673 at 218. Unreal. And uh, the, the, twist of the, uh, the twist of fate here is Al Jr. and Jake Michel meet in the semis. Just wow. the way it works. Obviously, you've got, still got Daniel Lenks and... Uh, well, there's no easy Oster. right. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not going to work out that way, is it? Yeah, so I think he's going to get the track to a little bit of sweep off of uh, foam at the top end. Yeah, sometimes when the uh, the blocks get doinked, it's not, it doesn't say in one solid piece. It's sometimes uh, they do... Disintegrate, yeah. don't they? <laughs> I was going to say splatter, but disintegrate sounds a lot better. Yeah. So it is going to be the briefest, briefest of holds, but uh, it will take a couple of moments to do that. So Nitro FM, if you can just take the airways back very shortly, and uh, we'll take it back when we continue with Super Street Bike here at the Eastern Nationals. Her darling is 10.40. Holly's is 8.2. Steering by wall. Yeah, I think that's no, no. leaning over there. 80, sorry, 8.44. Yeah. Oh, but Leah Morrison said she wanted to move up. 10.44 and a 40. 13 to number one top of the shop then for leah morrison very very good indeed a darling of 
that's an 8.67 breakout. Very, very quick indeed for Sophie. So. Almost. Well, that's right. Near as identical reaction times as you can get. <laughs> We have a new number one qualifier again. Anouk's taking it back. 13 flat on a 12.98. And Lara Humber moves up from 9 to 7. 14.61 on a 14.50. Wow. So I think after this qualifying session, it's all racing the rest of yeah, the day. Apart right? from one qualifier for a 9.50 bike, but I don't think they need it. <laughs> Wayne Hiscock goes 9.27. Uh, totally forgot to lift there. Run it out the back door. 142 mile an hour. Uh, Andy Harrison, well, 14.39. No. 78 tells the story. He lifted very early indeed. Do you know what? No matter how many times you do that, when you see track spotters out in front of you, it's it just... How can I put it? Puts doubt in your mind. It does. Even though you know they they checked it and they're doing yeah. the very very best for you, you can't help it. But uh, Jasmine Tunstall will be the next down the Kestrel Lane, which I'm sure will be fine. Yeah, no problem at all. Bob Molden still number one qualifier with his 991 from yesterday. Nine thirty. <laughs> That's the super comp one, isn't it? <laughs> well, here we go then. The last pair in Super Street Bike round number one. Daniel and Chris. Well, Daniel, the front row seat to watch uh, Jake Michelle go 6.73. You also watch Alan Morrison Jr. go 6.85. That uh, Boyce. Well, I hope Boyce has uh, cured the misfire because it's had a very obvious ailment so far this weekend. Then again, so is Daniel Lentz. See how this one shakes out. Daniel Lentz, previous European champ. Record holder for the ACU, which is actually bizarrely quicker than the European record. Oh, and it's Daniel that's gone red. It's Boyce that's going to be into round number two. You've won, Boyce. You don't need to kill it. 8.72, 135 miles an hour. He beats the previous European champion in round number one. Wow. Uh, that's really um, made things very interesting, actually. Um, if, yeah, well, if, if is a big word in uh, in all forms of motorsport, but you've got Alan Morrison Jr. taking on Jake Michel in one side of the semis, where you've got two sub seven second bikes, and you've got Alan Morrison, who's just set a new PB of 7.16, 198, taking on Chris Reed, who's suffering this weekend, but who just got past Daniel Lenks. Very interesting indeed, the Anything Super Street bike. Yeah. Well, Daniel, with uh, an 0-2 red, it was pretty close, but, yeah. you know, red Red's is red, red, unfortunately. Okay, underneath us, I think we have, we do, the absolutely beautifully restored Imperial Wizard. I, I, of all the bikes, of all the named race cars or bikes I've ever seen, I don't think I've ever heard a cooler name no. than Imperial Wizard. I mean, Hemi Hunter is very cool. Gladiator is very, very cool. But Imperial Wizard... And the fact that it was, quite frankly, imperious everywhere it went. So good to see it back here running at Santa Pod Raceway. And um, Keith Edwards, I've never met you, but I want to shake your hand because um, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's just like I remember the first time seeing it back in the 90s at Avon Park. It's also... Bizarrely, Phil Crossley's first ever go on a fuel bike. Is. Just here to shake it down this weekend. Phil's actually designed to build his own V-Fuel 
V fuel, V4 fuel bike. Well, let's not forget there are other fuel bikes around, as we know. We've got... Uh, yeah, other brands of fuel bike are available. Yeah, Steve Wallach <laughs> was here, obviously, this weekend. we got uh, that man down there has got one. Um, you've got uh, Kev Charman, obviously, his fuel yeah, bike, not too far away. Absolutely not far away. I think, are they in the grandstands, actually? I know Liz was up there yesterday. They were here yesterday because they very kindly gave me a lift down. Oh, right. <laughs> and, of course, uh, Neil Midgley's bike, uh, hopefully coming back together some stage this year as well so uh... that was not tire spin that was a belt letting go by the looks of it yeah those pipes went went very very quickly <laughs> it sounds fantastic though uh keith if you're down there he can't hear us never mind anyway well alan davis uh, looking over it his dad originally uh, his dad originally founded uh, Puma Engineering. Mm. That's got a Puma engine in there. Yeah, unfortunately, Phil stopped out there around about a half track. But uh, what a terrific machine. When I saw it restored, I genuinely didn't think it was going to be run. I really thought it was just going to be um, a showpiece, it, considering the history of the bike. But the fact it's out here running again. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I, and I hope they organise it, and I'm, I'm going to put it out there now, but we just that bike has got to be here at Dragstalgia. Of course. Um, if it's not run on track, it needs to be on display in the marquee, but it is just a sheer piece of history. Uh, it's one of the world's Amazing quickest fuel machines. bikes. Yeah. Um, the man that used to own it and ride it, Brian Johnson, obviously. It's been for a number of hands since, actually, because Brian owned it. Then I think it went to Jimmy Brantley in the US. Um, came off rather worse when it went to the States, I think. Then came back to Europe, was rebuilt by, uh, I think, Puma in the Netherlands at the time. Then uh, was raced by a couple of people. I know that uh, our friends out in the Czech Republic had it for a little while. Uh, but, yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, I had no, no idea that, um, that Keith Edwards had got hold of it and planned to do what he'd done with it. There are lots of fuel bikes bubbling, bubbling under the surface in the UK. Mm. And uh, fingers crossed we get to see loads of them this summer. Al Smith's just about finished his own bike. So there'll be a new rider for the Rocket as well this yeah, year. Yeah, that's... Um, Jerry Lukes. Jerry Lukes, yeah. That's uh, a fearsome machine if ever I saw one. Well, the Rocket, also, my goodness me. Have you seen Al's new bike as well? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. And obviously we've got Neil Midgley as well. Um, we're the quickest bike in the UK. Actually, still the quickest bike in Europe, I beg your pardon. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say quickest bike outside of America, but well, it is actually the quickest bike outside of America. Sounds much better if you say the quickest bike on the planet from anyone else other than Larry McBride, I think. Right, so the quad just about to take the first exit at the top end, and uh, Dave Ryan gives the signal to our first pair of funny bikes to fire up in eliminations. Martin Zilstra and Anton Lovoval. So two teammates actually going to be pairing up here in round one. They both come over as part of the same team. The shark attack bunch. Rene not bringing his own bike this time, but came over with everyone else. So, heads up race first to the finish line wins. Oh, that's when 
Hughes did a good job keeping the bike away from the wall there. He's got a buy run into the final after this as well, isn't he? Oh, no, number two. I beg your pardon. Yeah. He was number one. Uh, 8.31, 153. His quickest run of the weekend. He's also his quickest run for some time as well. Uh, big disappointment for Martin Zalstra. Sorry, if it one and six, it's the buy into the final. I apologies. I thought, apologies, I thought Martin was number one. <coughs> but all the same, Aspen and Noble. Proves you've got to be in it to win it. Dave Peters against Ryan Davidson next. Well, Ryan actually gets the win because that's the second time we've yep. had that today where someone has left before the tree is activated. Someone has gone also red, but the tree activated for Ryan. It didn't for Dave Peters. He left before the tree ran at all, unfortunately. Not only that, Ryan's best run of the weekend, uh, 7.63 compared to his 7.82 running qualifying. So it'll be Aswin against uh, Ryan in the semi-finals, And then... Uh, it's going to be Eric Ricard on his own. No Roger Moore. Well, that's no, yes, I can see Roger right at the back there. I just was looking in the wrong spot. Uh, whoever wins this gets a buy into the final. So this is one and six then, obviously, yeah. yeah. Well, a problem so far this weekend for Roger Moore. But also problems for Eric. <laughs> So we had one crazy French bloke called Eric to be replaced by another one. <laughs> there was always a crazy Eric from France somewhere hanging about. <laughs> so again, this is a heads-up race, first to the finish line and up the win. Eric um, made one good run yesterday, which was at 7.09. Uh, he also crossed the centre line and didn't get off the start line earlier on today. So, anyone's race. Even though Roger Moore qualified number six. Oh. Eric's got to back off. He can't go oh. over the centre line in eliminations. <laughs> 8 28 152 takes the win and uh, lose out for Roger Moore of a 10 18 we're laughing obviously because Eric took his foot off the peg so he didn't doink the block because if he did doink the block it would have been game over ok ET bike round 3 whittling them down from a 32 ladder yeah two pairs and a solo coming up here Phil Pratt, Dave Grundy. 10.65 plays, 8.94. Oh, and that's game over already. Dave Grundy puts a cherry on the tree. So Phil Pratt gets the automatic win. 8.9. Oh, perfect ET at last. Okay, so that's the money gone for perfect ET. Yep. Yeah, so Phil Pratt takes the money. Uh, with the perfect ET eliminations. Good job it was on a, uh, a red light pass because I don't think you'd have pushed it that hard. But yeah, perfect money. Scott Collier and Robbie Dobby up next. So Robbie's going to be going first night, 9.99 uh, in the Slick Tricks lane, followed by Scott with a 9.60. It's going to be close. That's to really, really, really close. close. Nothing in that at all. Double Scott breakout. takes the win with the lesser of the two breakouts. 
He was actually slightly slower on the tree. Give him a clip round here, but that was a good effort. Well done. Good race. Um, he was over the stripe second. He let someone take the stripe again two races in a row. That, he, uh, that must be the bravest thing to do yeah. when you want to get there first. But anyway. so and He's who, got a buy into the final. So he's in the final as yep. a result of that. Awesome stuff. And this is Nick Playden uh, getting his buy. Who will be against Phil Pratt. Phil Pratt in the semis, yeah. So the uh, so it's the Haley Hadfield Perfect ET Award, sponsored by uh, Andy Hadfield and the Twister team. So congratulations to Phil Pratt for taking that. It's uh, 11:28 appears on the boards there for Nick played and break up. It didn't matter. He's through. Which way up does the dialing board go? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, it could be 908 or it could be 806. Who knows? Right, Junior Dragster. Eliminations. Oh, no, that's Junior Drag Bike. Got the long ladder. <coughs> that's all there. Well out of sequence here. Right, Junior Dragster. Eliminations round number three. Freddie Taylor taking on Ted Sullivan. 8.50 plays 8.06. Ted will be going first. Ted qualified number two, did really well. And the wind light goes to Ted Sullivan. A uh, big breakout, well, 300s breakout by Freddie Taylor. So Ted Sullivan takes it. He had an 06 light as well. And he gets a bye into the final. So well done, Ted. All right, Tom Peters going to try and knock out last year's champ and uh, the number one qualifier, Liam McDonald. Twenty-three plays eight ninety. Tom, that's as low as you can go. Actually, can't go any quicker than eight ninety. And uh, goes red. Oh, double O one red only just. So Liam McDonald into the semis. Well, Liam made sure with a point two three. Oh, while we're in the middle, Julia Dragster as well. If you're watching at home, I just want to say a very quick hi to Mick, Emma, and Letty. And obviously Chev as well, but I think Chev's still skiing for now. That's why uh, <laughs> Chevy Checker isn't entered in Junior Drag this weekend. They'll be back next time. They want to say hi to everybody. And uh, I'll tell you what, you're a lot warmer over than you are here anyway. But that doesn't really help when everybody's out there racing. OK, Harry Peters and Luke Muggeridge next. Well, winner of this gets Liam McDonald in the semis. Mugridge on at 8.25, Harry Peters 8.17. Mr. Mugridge is <laughs> <laughs> out in front and... Um, yeah. On and off the throttle. We call that womp in the throttle. Whole shot win. 8.34 on a 25. Beats to an 8.21 on a 17. Win margin 0. 0.3. 04 to a point one two. Right. Ted Sullivan is into the final with a bye. And then it is number one and number two in the points last year to see who takes the other spot. Cracking stuff. Mm. Super pro round number three.
Right, Alan did well on a by run here into the semis. I would say, like, the defending champ needs any help, but it's all about where you qualify, isn't it? It is, yeah. Alan uh, qualified number two. Uh, Scott Hauser was your number one qualifier. He got the bye in round one. Yeah, you definitely earn them. You don't get, you know, gifted yeah. them. So the number he's put on the board is 764. No doubt we'll take it all the way through. Well, what we are guaranteed going forward is a dragster against the door car in the final. 03 off the line. A little bit right, but that right foot ain't lifting. And it goes 769. Tom Atkinson going to be taking on a Colin Morris here. The winner of this goes into the semis where a by run awaits into the final. So Alan Dibwell's taking on the winner of Scott Hauser and yeah, that Barry fun. Giles, yes, going to be fun. Well, at this time of the day, at this time of the event, every race is hard. There's no easy ones. Well, Colin moved for the wall. Brought it back in very, very well indeed. I think he's still out in front. And he takes the win. Oh... Tom broke out by a thou. However, it was a uh, big reaction time difference, that one. Uh, that's why Tom really did need to try and run him down. If, yeah, if, 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 that window just... was tiny. Yeah, like a, <laughs> and he nearly did it. He yeah. nearly did it. So, two immaculately turned out UK Super Pro Dragsters. Both of them run in the lowish sevens. I'm going to say it again, I still can't believe the one in Slick Trick's Lane was built about 35 years ago, if not longer actually. I think it was about 1988 that car was built. It's as good as the day it, mm. uh, it was finished up. I don't know many other motorsports, uh, well, apart from historic, but they uh, move from the class that they were intended to be built into another class, which has become like a historic class. But okay. dragsters, when they're built, they can stay in the same class the whole lifetime. So this is already always a super pro dragster, I yeah. think, wasn't it? Well, the chassis is obviously good for a tag mm. today as it was back then. So, Barry Giles, 7.50 is what he's going to be looking for. Scott, though, 7.34. Not much in it on the tree. There won't be much, hardly anything in it down the racetrack. It's truth. Scott must have thinking about a day off tomorrow. Barry Giles just needs to back out of it. <laughs> I was going to say, Scott, don't run the perfect number. 
That must have to be a malfunction with a button or something yeah. like that. But There's no way Scott takes 0.9 to react to anything, yeah. frankly. He was probably sitting in the car thinking, come on, go, go, go. Uh, what I mean with the button is that they leave off what's called a trans brake. So, um, floor the throttle, push the button, it holds the car on the line until you let go of the button. Mm. But I think Scott probably let go of the button and something didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work, did it? Well, it cost, it, it cost him a round win there, though. Uh, Giles and Hartley moving on. Right, Junior Drag Bike Eliminations round two, a new Bergering on a solo here. It's a predetermined bike run. It's the only bike run actually in uh, Junior Drag Bike. So it puts a dial in of 12.60 in the Slick Tricks lane and gets a 13.21. Right, we are now racing John McLean and Maggie Smallman. John McLean going first, 11.95, and then uh, chasing 1.75 seconds later, Maggie Smallman's side of the true will run. Green lights both side of the racetrack, so we'll let them determine who wins this one at the eighth mile. And it's a double breakout, but John McLean breaks out by the least amount, and actually by less than a hundredth. And there's a big breakout for Maggie Smallman. They're nearly two tenths breakout. So congratulations there to uh, John McLean. Right, next up then, Declan Butt and Richard Wilcox. 13.90 plays 9.49. Richard is going to have to be patient here. And he was. Yes, yeah, an anticipation when the tree's going to run as well. Oh, but it's Declan Butt that takes that one. 13.98 on a 13.90. Uh, Richard just a little bit off pace there. 979 on the 49. Yeah, just lacking a little bit of ET. He was, they were both very close in reaction time. So it'll be Declan Buck taking on uh, John McLean in the uh, semi finals. And Luke Bergering will be racing one of these two. It's either Holly King or Harry Isaacs. 950 dial in for Harry, 815 dial in for Holly. It's very, very quick, that little bike, isn't it? It is. Well, good to see Blade down there supporting Holly. Despite uh, Blade's, well, I'll never say part eliminations today. to like riding it down the wall have you noticed yeah he's going to get there first and does the right thing sits up just before the finish line takes the wind light without going too quick well done Holly. all right so that's junior drag bike done back to super pro no sorry pro that, ET, ET. Even, sorry. <laughs> that caught you out don't, didn't call, it? You don't thinking, do oh, that oh, to oh. me <laughs> that's right culling has lists of everything that's going on if they if i don't if racing doesn't agree he tells them to do it properly yeah, Pro ET, round number three, four pairs. Going to produce four winners. And first up then, Lee Morris taking on Matthew Dowdy. <laughs> 11 12, the darling then for Matthew with the, with the Nova taking on. The green with envy, Jaguar E-Type, 10-10 at the number there, 
1.02 second difference on the tree. Matthew as well, that, that Nova. I'd love to know if it had ever seen a racetrack in his life before. Uh, no, it was a street car before. But it still is now, I guess, isn't it, really? Uh, no, it's a race car now. Oh, okay. um, it's got a fuel cell in the back. It's got a roll cage in it. Um, yeah, <laughs> can't be. It won't go very far with the fuel cells in the boot. Mathematical whole shot win that one. Yeah, Lee Morris uh, continues elimination at 1021, but a good weekend for Matthew Dowdy. He's uh, quickest ever runs, and uh, another good run there, 1123 But it is the reigning champ that carries on. So Stevie Gates having a great day with the new Camaro. As is actually Dougie McClure. I can't remember Dougie going this deep into elimination. This is replacing the semis, I guess. Yeah. Yep. I don't think Dougie's ever been to the semis in Pro-ET before. No, he's uh, done one in Outlaw Anglia, where uh, <laughs> the cards have fallen his way. Uh, but that's game over, unfortunately, for Dark Ghost Red. So it's going to be Stevie Gates. Unless uh, he decides to cross the centre line, which he's not going to do. So Stevie Gates moves on. Well, it's going to be Battle of the Green Cars in the uh, semi finals with uh, Lee Morris taking on Stevie Gates. Is, uh, is he enough to something spotted on the track? No, just checking where Stevie just had a little wiggle. You got Sportsman ET as well, round behind the tower. That oh, looks okay. We're on with the next pair. That's Nick Muggeridge. <laughs> ah, big boss. So Nick Mugridge and Vic Parsons, your next pair. 10-14, plays 9-89. Vic's done a lot of racing today. He has. He certainly has. He made the most of double injury. Well, it's game over, unfortunately, in uh, Pro ET as Vic goes red. So it's going to be Nick Mugridge into the semi finals. Go, do quick runs it out anyway. I'm sure he saw the red light. So 10 0 9. Breakout doesn't matter, wind light does. So both Mugridges in their respective classes into the semi finals. Um, now then, uh, the wiggling Tom K. <laughs> Tom uh, Wiggly K. Yeah. <laughs> Wiggly Tom. There we go. No, we can't call him that. He's bigger than us. So, Dave Fulton, Kestrel Lane, 929, 1025 uh, for Tom K. I'm sure everything checked over, including the driver's underwear after that last run. So, Tom's going to go first by nearly a second. Well, he's going to get the green light first by nearly a second. Whether he goes first is up to him.
And he takes the win again by the lesser of the two breakouts. Dave Fort goes 9.18 on a 29. He actually took the strike first, and both 0.9 on the tree, but Tom K moving on to the semi-finals. I must admit, after that last round, I wasn't sure yeah. when he went over the finish line. I wasn't sure he'd have a car to race with for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, alone. so the two junior comp dragsters racing each other in the semis. There will and be one in the final then. Tom was arrow straight that time. Yep. No deviation from the straight and narrow. I bet all. he thought, whatever I did last time, I'm not doing that again. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, 850 bike. Eliminations, round number two. Two pairs and a solo about to come out here. This is Daniel Madeira in Critchlow. Uh, whoever wins this gets the bye into the final. This is going to be a proper race as well. Look, they're yeah. going to be looking at each other all the way up the racetrack. Who's going to take the stripe? Critch. He does. Win margin 0 1 as well. Slight hole shot for Daniel. Just couldn't hold it all the way through. All right, Jay Rowe and Nick Winyard, next pair. Uh, Mick Winyard's absolutely smashed the 850 <laughs> number <laughs> around again. Yeah, Mick is the one that's gone the other direction, come out of comp bike to go into uh, oh, okay, yeah, to 850. Yeah, looking at each other again. Oh, 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 oh deary me. Mick Winyard had a lot to play with, but he broke out by a foul. Unbelievable race. 8.52 takes the win. Good race. What a tough bunch. Right, Craig Wright booking his spot in the semis on a solo. So, Craig Wright, one of the VP Racing Lubricants uh, supported teammates here this weekend. Nice looking run. Absolutely spot on for where you want to be. Yeah. 853. That'll do. The thing is, a lot of the time, especially when they're so close like this, it's a case of you just pull up and do what you normally do, and if it's good enough, you get the win right. If it's not, it's just not meant to be. Quarterfinals then in comp by Danny Cockrell taking on Len Paget. We've got three pairs and a solo coming up here. This could be a real good race as well. Len Paget. So basically a pro stop bike against a super street bike, effectively. Dead even up till then. Oh, if the Super Street bike can stay on the ground, that was a great race. 7.50 at 181 for Danny, takes the win. 7.72 at 164 for Len. They were both bang on the tree. They were both ready. Um, the stocker was much quicker to 60 foot, but then that's because he's got slick and a wheelie bar. But after that, it was all about turbos and skid tires. Good race. So Michael Bigger and Chris Neary going to be uh, battling out here for a spot in the semis. Both of them seven second runners, but Chris really going to have to pull one out here. Now well, Daniel hasn't actually been that consistent. He's been very quick on occasion. Let's see what it does this time. Oh. The answer was, go red. 
That's going to be a waste of a very good run as well. 787, 188. Problems to Chris Neary, but it doesn't matter because he got the wind light. I think he let go of the throttle and his hand went, ah, no, and it was too late. <laughs> Bike had already jumped. Right, to come then, Paul Hambidge going to be taking on Andrew Christoffi, and you've got Mark Dainty on the bye run. good race as well because uh, Andrew Kostoffi has been getting quicker and quicker now into the mid sevens the most minute slip from Paul Hambidge if he drops off that 7-2 pace he's been on the whole time that'll be that well it's Paul Hambidge with the whole shot if the bike runs to form that'll be the end of that and it does, and it is. 7.27 beats a 7.58, though, for Andrew Christoffi. It's the quickest run of the weekend, 189 miles an hour, and 191 for Paul Hambidge, but he was quicker on the tree and quicker on the track, which only has one outcome. Right, just uh, Mark Dainty to put his solo in, and that will set the semi-finals. So you're going to have Danny Cockrell taking on Paul Hambridge. That will be a good race. Very close between those two. And then it'll be this man here, Mark Dainty. As soon as he breaks the beam and takes the win, uh, he will be facing Chris, Chris Neary. Neary. Um, will he go for it this time? Yeah. Well, he, well, he didn't entirely go how he wanted it to last time. But yes, yeah, so I think you can imagine, yes, he would go for it. That's better. Oh no! Still a little bit at yeah. the same point. Still 197 mile an hour pass at 7:28. Yeah, it's obviously where the the boost comes in for yeah, whatever it's reason. Where it it just boost, tends, it's is that what it is? Yeah, yeah it just tends too much. to overpower the track a little bit. But the rider seems to hang on to it pretty well every time. Well, you don't have a choice, really, does he? What else do you do? Let go. Right, Sportsman ET with Brian Huxley and Jago Stokes, your first pair in this round. 13.20 the dial in for Jago, 13.46 for Brian. <laughs> Paul Marshall came around with the rev your engine hardboard. Just to make sure. Uh, Brian, if make any fluid in the exhaust wants out. Well, it means that the, uh, the track crew don't have to spend ages out there after every pass clearing up water that's um, or vapour that's come out the back of everybody's uh, exhausts pretty close on dialing as well look at that 13.46 for Brian Jago with a 13.20 oh that was done right sports nitty Ryan's way out in front. Yeah. Puts the brakes on and doesn't break out. There we go. Uh, that'll be a whole shot win. 0.15 win margin. Uh, he was nearly two tenths of a second better on the tree. And uh, that showed at the finish line. Kirsty Tram taking on Felicity Gibbs. So over five seconds difference on the tree.
Well, for me, it doesn't look like Kirsty's going to catch, but there is a speed difference between the two cars as they approach the stripe, and Kirsty gets there with a 12.10. Takes the win to a lose out 17.34. Win margin 0 08. Good race. Stripe. Kirsty was better on the tree as well, just by a bit. So, uh, Terence Atley, Kestrel Lane, 1860, against Gary Lake. Yeah, don't forget Gary Lake defending national champion. Right, off the focus goes. And in pursuit then, Gary Lake with the Arabian Knight. See Dead where life. the wind light goes. It is to Gary Lake with a 14 16 to lose out 18 72. But I'll tell you what, Terry had a very, very good weekend indeed. So Richard Palmer with a family cat. Yeah, he's on a predetermined buy. So that sets up the semis then. Gary Lake taking on Kirsty Tram. And it is going to be Richard Palmer, that man down there, taking on Brian Huxley. Thirteen forty-two breakout on a forty-eight doesn't matter. He's through. Right, super gas quarterfinals. Andy Harrison on a buy run into the semis, where he gets another one into the final. So uh, nice, easy afternoon for uh, Andy Harrison. Another buy, actually. Dave Fulton gets a buy into the semis. He's just made it back. And then you have Bob Molden taking on Stu Doiny. Well, that's... Uh, rather bizarre throttle stop where the uh, well the throttle didn't stop but the wheels kept spinning do you know what I wonder I've seen, I've seen that a few times I wonder if when they go on the two step or they floor the throttle if you notice the heat you can see the heat on the racetrack if it heats the racetrack cup that's condensation yes it is yeah, yeah. so it's how like cold it is out there doesn't it yeah but that's one of the reasons they're breaking traction uh, if yeah. the headers are pointed anywhere in front of the rear wheels if when you stand on the boot the engine, it'll coat the racetrack with a film of moisture. Yeah. With a film of... Yeah. Before you leave. See, Stu Doiny's not going to have that problem. His headers go out the side. Don't know about Bob Molden, but you, you see what I mean? Cause yeah, it makes a lot times, of sense, so. actually. A lot of sense. Obviously, the other thing as well, obviously that happens all the time. We just never see it, if yeah. you see what I mean. It's too warm. Well, that's a bad thing. So, the Yorkshire Terrier, as we affectionately know him as the Bob Holden. Taking on Stu Doiny. Big throttle stop for Stu. Bob just lifts the coast at the stripe. Um, he's going to have to start soon. And it's a double ooh, breakout. Ooh, ooh. Well, Bob, big breakout, 976. So it's Stu Doiny, 985 that goes through. Still a, week, still a good weekend for the Moulins. First weekend back with the new engine and everything in there. Uh, down in the 9.3s in Pro ET. Right, here he comes. Our oh, good mate, Dave. Oh, no. He's, whoa, hang on. Where is he? You said he just made it down. He is there. Yeah, Dave thought he was there. First, uh, Pop a little later, come round. 
Uh, not quite sure. He's up to miscue there in the pairing lanes or what? I'm not sure. But either way, Dan and Nick Williams uh, going to fight this one out for a spot in the final. Yeah, well, Dave Fulton's taking his crash helmet off, but I don't know whether the car would start or something. Yeah. Anyway, we'll find out for you. Yep. Dan Williams and Nick Williams. Uh, Dan in the Kestrel A, Nick in the Copo. Um, to say Nick's got him covered is a bit of an understatement. However, never underestimate the engine man. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. Whoa, uh, blows the tyres again, Nick. I think he's got the uh, the grunt to get by at the stripe. And then back Julie off. Julie does, yeah, 874. Oh, that was probably closer than they wanted it to be, obviously. Well, they're both fairly even on the tree. Yeah. <laughs> but Nick blew the tyres off again when he let the clutch out. Now, I'll be looking forward to this one, actually. Gary Carr and Spencer Tram. 1183 plays 1168. The really funny thing is that they could move weights around in these cars and go heads up. OK. But uh, well, they, they don't want it. They don't want it. One's an HSA, one's a GSA. So uh, both with 350 cubic inch small blocks. One in an over, one in a Camaro. Gary Carr leaving first. Both on time. All right, whoever takes the stripe will win. And it is Gary Carr by 0 07. That's uh, 11.21. Against 11 11. Wind margin 0 7. Does that? It the could do. I don't event. know whether it does for the next event. I don't know whether it does for the next event or not, but that was still a great race. That's yeah. how it's supposed to be. Yeah. So Gary Carr into the final against Nick Williams. I think by the looks of it, what I'm seeing over there is Dave Fulton's battery's gone dead. Oh, no. Probably wasn't used to making that many runs, eh, Dave? Sorry, said that out there. Okay, Street Eliminator. Top speed automotive, Street Eliminator, round three. Uh, buy run and a race. Tony Higgs, I think, with the buy. Look at that. Elliot, top man, well done. That was, that was really fun to watch. I bet it was fun to drive I'll as tell well, you what, uh, you know, going 8-3, perfect light this weekend. Pretty That's good. pretty good, wasn't it? And did you have seen the video of your dad in a piggyback with Jenny? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I said <laughs> that was the only bad the point. <laughs> right, bizarrely, in Supergas, you've got two buys to set the final. You may see them come down, do their staging, and then that's and it. Yeah. Final, yeah, may happen. Ah, the other race is Al Mac against. Uh, sorry, Al, yeah, Al Mac against um, Andy Bond. Yep. Street limit it really is a shark tank, isn't it? So, if you're watching out there in internet land, David Murdoch, Mark, Mark Todd, Mark Sheridan, anybody else with a fast street car, and there's loads of you. Well, taking the shoot pin out, we'd love to see you this summer because it's going to be it's so much fun. Oh, yeah. So even though he's got a buy, uh, he's not saving it. So Tony Higgs already this weekend has been 197 miles an hour. Just let that sink in. Nice and flat launch. Arrow straight. What have we got here? 195 at the stripe, 776. Actually a soft run, but still 195 miles an hour at the top end. Since when is a 776 on a street tire car yeah. a soft run? But uh... <laughs> well, the other thing that you have to bear in mind is the aerodynamics of that Capri. Mm. Um, I know that there has been some 
you know, carbon fibre replacement parts on it when the car was getting a little bit wayward. But that seems very settled now. Yeah, don't don't say that. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> so the ugly sister versus the yeah. Evolution. This should be a great race, actually. Andy bond has been stuck, if you can call that for him, in the seven fours. Uh, but Al mcsweeney has been right there with him. This is going to be fun. Who's going to get the best light? Who's going to get the best of the racetrack? Andy Bond leaves first. They're absolutely neck and neck. I have a feeling, though, that big Chevy may take it. Oh, what a race. 7.40 at 202 beats 7.44 at 192. That will be Al Max. Quickest and, I think, fastest ever run as well. Andy Bond needed every bit of that hole <laughs> shot and every bit of that 7.40 as well. What class. a terrific race. Pure class, that. Well, Andy Bond's had to earn it this weekend. He's got uh, Tony Higgs, another 7.4 second runner in the final. Don't miss that one. Yeah, love having competition when it's tight. It's really, really good. Thing is, though, is when the when the car isn't running quite as quick as usual. Okay, it's still really quick. Andy Bond rises to the challenge with his driving. Commiserations to Dave Fulton. Obviously, got the car started. Unfortunately, it was it's too been late. Been back now, yeah. Yeah, oh. to take part in uh, round. And once again, many happy returns to Macy Fulton, whose birthday it is today. Uh, she probably won't realise I've said that until she gets home and gets through the live feed. I get comments days later from people who said, oh, I didn't miss that. <laughs> OK. Um, just waiting in the staging lanes for the next class, which should be, Colin. Um, I, you know, I don't know, because the ladders, uh, the timetable's moving around a bit. In theory, it should be Super Street Bike, but I can't see anybody there. Uh, we've the had the no, we've had the semis of Super Street Bike already. Uh, we have, We've yeah. done those. Uh, funny bike. Comp bike, 950 bike. I mean, that's what we had had 950 bike round one yet. OK. Well, so we're, actually, uh, we're actually at the point, um, if anyone can't see in the grandstands or around there, uh, we're actually at the point where we're collecting people in the Well, we haven't had semi-finals in Super Street Bike yet. Good point. Which is, in effect, E2, so yeah, need them. Well, I think everybody's being collected because the staging lanes are empty at the moment, but I'm pretty sure they're sorting out pairings for everybody to come yeah. on down. So we'll hand back to Nitro FM, hopefully not for long at all. Well, it won't be long at all. Um, you know what the Santa Pod Race Club are like, they bang through everything in no time. Anyway, back soon. Uh, but then obviously you got the likes of Mark Dainty that uh, came out Super Street Bike into Comp Bike. Well, unfortunately, it won't be a race. Adam Burns, one of his crew guys, actually uh, noticed something and clicked him off. Nice looking run for Andrew Christoffi. Went 7.65 in qualifying. Goes 7.74 at 186 on that one. Well, good evening. Yeah. In the Kestrel Lane. And the one and only Danny Cockrell. Staging up. Oh, no, Danny. Oh, this is going to be fun. Can Danny Cockrell run him down? Yes. Oh, we we'll belt it. Oh. He's done He's it. Done 8 it. 14, 179. <laughs> <laughs> what oh, a race. Boy. That's got to be race of the year. We're only in March. <laughs> that was fantastic. OK, Len Paget should have been taking on Jasmine Cordell. We had a bit of a fraught weekend as well. Yeah, they uh, they knew where they were out last night, unfortunately. So uh, uh, the bike, well, the engine's gone back to hospital, as uh, Jazz calls it. So uh, Alan Davis is going to try and work his magic on it. I think that's where he's gone anyway. No one better to work their magic than uh, Mr. Davis. Loads of tyre chatter, but a really nice 113 to 60 for Lenny. That'll be a good one. It is indeed. There we go. 7.69. Oh, the computer always changed his mind. That looks like the times of the year. You get air this good That's with true. a tailwind. And a ta yeah, you're right. 
125, 60 foot. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's spinning a lot <laughs> in the middle. Broke traction around about a couple of hundred foot out. And he backs it off. Yeah. No, uh, Dan. no, Dan DF. Oh. That I wasn't expecting. So, Chris Neary. Oh, he's solo. Not the smoothest of launches. Eight flat, 180 <laughs> mile an hour. <laughs> Not hanging around at all. <laughs> Eight twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure this. Is, well, no, I'm not sure. It could well be Chris's old super street bike, actually. In the Kestrel Lane, that's Stace and Craig Wright with a beautiful new scheme on his machine. Craig is long gone. Stace with a lot of wheel slip off the line. And Craig's going to be looking over his shoulder. Lifts off, sits up, and makes sure he doesn't break out. 860, 100, only 129. He was also... Uh, and in Critchlow. Well, I believe he's the owner of Craig Wright's bike. Pretty sure you're right. That's kind of the end of Pete Slater's day. Uh, Critch will look over his shoulder, which he does exactly on cue. Backs off the throttle and rolls over to an 8.73, just to make sure he doesn't go too quick. Daniel Madeira. And Costas Giannopoulos. I'm going to say that right eventually. Giannopoulos, I'm pretty sure that's close. So Costas on his first, I think, elimination run as well. Uh, part of the JKE Works team. How cool is that, Jake? You've got a works team, man. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> they both went red, but Costas left before the tree ran. Daniel actually got a red light, so he got the wind yeah. light. Yeah, Costas left before the tree was activated, so he was technically not there. Hey, yeah. right. Last one. Okay, can we please have Super Pro into the pairing lanes, please, Super Pro? Let's have you into the lanes. This is a Super Comp. This is where we set the final. Well we said it earlier on but this time yesterday the Kellets were rather downtrodden a bit dejected the car failed Joe and uh, Leah had, well no options really but Dave Day came along and saved their weekend had the torque converter and uh, proceeded to put Leah into the number one spot and uh, she got through Obviously, her by run, but now she's got to get past Warren Watts to go into the final. Well, the car can pay them back. Like, yes. You know, going rounds, anyway. So, Warren's best, though, has been in the 9 1s so far. Needs to step it up a little bit to run the 890 number. And he's going to be in over. the final. Oh, well, 
They were lucky to be here, let's be fair. 9.37, Warren 9.14. Warren Watts goes into his first ever final in any race meeting. Against another one of those pesky dragsters. Yeah. But uh, well done to the Kellett family. That was uh, an up and down weekend for sure. But at least the car came out. But uh, a point one seven red, that's not usual at all. So... Uh, she got, as our colleagues in the States would say, she got the yips. So Paul Hudson will be going to the final round. Well, he qualified number two with an 8.95. He was number one till Lear fixed her car. Yeah. a long throttle stop that one We're having a bit of a weave 897 gets the job done 165 miles an hour okay we have uh, a race and a buy this is a good this is a good one one and two in the championship last year two exceptionally good races bearing in mind that Luke Mugridge has been the junior dragster championship runner-up two years in a row he wants it this year. This is Liam's last season in Junior Dragster, because okay. then he becomes too old. Um, so, and of course, Liam is defending national champion. Well, he's defending champion everywhere, really. I don't know if he's got the punishing schedule that he had last year. So, 8.20 the dial-in for Liam. 8.27 for Luke. McDonald's staging all the way off to the right. That's to stage out the glue and the grippy stuff, basically. Although it's pretty grippy still over there. Well, Luke Muggeridge uh, without his brother, because his brother's getting ready to run in Pro ET. Well, I'm sure he's listening. Game over, Luke Mugridge goes red by 0-2, so it is Liam McDonald in to the final. And he broke out as well, just for good measure did Luke Mugridge, but uh, yeah, just a little bit too keen on the tree. <clears throat> That's all right, Big Brother's still in in Pro ET for the moment. Okay, Ted Sullivan. Doesn't matter what he runs, took the green, took the green, took the tree. Actually, yeah, he only just take the tree, didn't he? Not even the green. <laughs> 8.34. <laughs> quick. Right, so Junior Drags to final is set for Lucas Holmes. It's Liam McDonald and Ted Sullivan. Right. Aha, at last. 9.50 bike. Semi-finals. So Dave Hall taking on Josh McLean. Now both of these two qualified with a 9.60 with an eight and a five. It's got to be the final digits or the mile an hour yeah. that made the difference. I hadn't actually spotted that at all, but that was <laughs> ridiculously close. Well, Josh actually ran that in the last session, so I thought, oh, he's going to get... Oh, no, he's not. He didn't get number two. Ooh, 
Well, Josh all over the place on the start line. Dave Hall already looking over his shoulder, thinking, where are you? He's not going to break the brake out. light on. Yeah. So, Rob Stanley. Two breakout doesn't matter. He's into the final. So we've got a final set in a few classes now. We've still got a couple to get there. All right, Sportsman ET semi final. Gary Lake taking on the Kirsty Tram here. 1402, dialing for the Arabian Night in the Slick Tricks Lane. Kirsty Tram wants 1206. Well done to the McDonald family. Another final round for your lad. That's definitely uh, an Irish golf cart because it's got sides on it so you don't get wet. Be <laughs> noticed. Actually, it could be an English one as well. I'm just kidding, obviously. So two seconds for the Pontiac over the Camaro. Kirsty Tram goes red, it is Gary Lake into the final. Fourteen oh nine to a twelve eleven. Numbers irrelevant there as uh, Kirsty O2 red. Right, the family cat, Richard Palmer. Thirteen forty five, but one hundredth of a second difference on Darlin's thirteen forty six is Brian Huxley with the focus. Neither of them wanting to go in. Oh, in actual fact, Brian does. Wow. Well, they're still very side by side. It could be anyone's race. We'll explain the tree in a moment. Oh! <laughs> wow. You can hear the whooping and horroring on the star yeah. line. Richard Palmer with a perfect run. 13.45 on a 45. Uh, he was also point two on the tree. Brian Huxley, very, very unusually for him. That's Blight. what Colin was doing now. I yeah. think it was 0.64. That's why he had to go too quick to break out. Actually, uh, Brian could have broken out by 500 and still won that, bizarrely. But uh, here we go. ET bike. Semi-finals, and this is where Scott Collier books his spot in the final with a solo. But we've also got Phil Pratt taking on Nick Playden. And that is what you're going to see first. Perfect ET in the last round for Phil Pratt. 8.94 with a zero. Came up to collect his money. So a big thanks to uh, Andy Hadfield for putting up that money in memory of Haley, And, of course, to the Twister Racing team. So Phil can do it again, perhaps. 894 sticks with the same dial in. I've just realised the three bikes we've got left in contention are one, one two, two three, three, yeah, and qualifying. It's going to be tough. So Nick Playden's going to be going, well, the tree's going to run first, as I keep, I keep saying that. He's not necessarily going to go first. He's got to leave on time if he wants to do that. Oh. And he goes red. Oh, 
Well, Phil can run it out the back door again. 895, consistent. So I think it's four times uh, national champion in ET bike is uh, Phil. Going to be racing this man in the final, Scott Collier. Scott's had a pretty decent day, to be fair. He's had a pretty good weekend. Day. He was yeah, number decent one yesterday as well. well, yeah. So 9.50 is the quickest dial the Colliers have put on the bike so far this weekend. So with the whole family looking on, what's Scott going to run? 9.55 with a 7. That'll work. So Scott Collier and Phil Pratt into the final. Well done, Jerry. Well done, Sky. And well done, Sharon. Who's down there on the start line as well. I was just saying hi, Sharon. Nice to see you. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> well, we've got Super Pro in the lanes. It looks like they are up next. But also, I've got Pro ET on the boards as well. Well, Pro ET must be tucked around the back because I can't see him, but I can see Super Pro. But then, having said that, who knows? We'll let them sort out. Actually, we are whittling them down, actually, to the final. So a lot of the classes are yeah, there, there already. Uh, to come, then, Super Gas. We've got Stu Doiny on a bye and Andy Harrison on a bye. Uh, comp Bike. Uh, we've got Mark Dainty taking on Chris Neary and uh, Danny Crockwell taking on Paul Hambidge. In 850 Bike, Jay Rowe and Craig Wright. And then Ian Critchlow on a bye. Pro ET, Lee Morris taking on Stevie Gates, and then the two junior comp dragsters. And uh, thanks so much indeed to uh, Thomas Cook Abbott, our good little buddy over there. Tom Kay and Nick Mugridge both campaigned the same junior dragster in their junior dragster careers. How about that? Um, but they, those two race each other in Pro ET. Junior drag bike, we got Anouk and Holly. They'll be racing each other for a spot in the final, and then it'll be young Declan Butt taking on. Uh, John McLean. Uh, funny bike, we got Eric Richard on a bye, and it'll be Aswin and Ryan racing for the other spot. Super Street bike, Boise taking on Alan Morrison, and then Alan Morrison Jr. against Jake Michelle. And in Super Pro, Barry Giles against Alan Didwell, and Colin Morris on a bye. Well, Pro ET, you can see they've made their way down. Got three of the four there. And uh, Super Pro. Three of those there. That's right, the three Super Pro cars are there. Um, Super Street bikes there as well. I just need... Uh, well, yeah, I just, we just need Nick Mugridge. That's right, Nick just coming into shot there. So, yeah, all of Pro ET are there. All of Super Pro are there. And we've got Super Street Bike have made their way down as well. Coming round now. And they are coming round, yeah, Super Street Bike. This is going to be an epic. Alan Morrison Jr. went 685 in round one. <laughs> Jake didn't. Jake Michelle <laughs> went 673. And uh, that is your first pairing. And then you've got uh, Alan Morrison. He'll be taking on Chris Reed if he appears. I can't see him down there at the moment. I don't think he is, unfortunately. Oh, no. Uh, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Well, first pair are being brought forward, so I can... Uh, I only presume, sadly for Chris Reed, he won't make it for this semi-final round by the look of it. This could be a final round at any of the summer's FIM championship rounds around Europe. happens it's a semi-final of the first event in the UK. Two real powerhouse teams in Super Street Bike.
There's quite a few of them as well. So, Al Morrison Jr., Kestrel Lane. Jake Michelle, Slick Tricks Lane. Both deep into the sixes in their races earlier today. Oh, what a race. Jake's in front. What a run. Oh, wow. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, 6.66 at 219 miles an hour. Jake Michel equals his European record. 6.96 at 2.15 for our Morrison Junior. I hate to say, someone just went 6.96 at 2.15 on a Super Street bike, and it looked like he left the handbrake on. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> wow. Jake just blew past him there. Still a great race, but there's still one, someone from the Morrison clan that can take him down yeah. in the final round. It is going to be a solo, no boys, unfortunately. So, Alan Morrison, <laughs> the original. Going to be uh, taking a spot in the final here. I hope I'm right about that. I think Jake is the European record at 666. I know that Daniel Lentz has got the ACU record at 659. So, he went 7-1 earlier. 123 to 60 foot for Alan Morrison. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 727, 199 miles an hour at the stripe. Ah, excellent job. Well, it's March, it's freezing cold, <laughs> and Jake Michelle's back in the 660s already. Oh, dear. People wonder. People wonder why Steve Venables chose him to build his new Super Street bike exactly for him. Exactly that, yeah. Well, they shouldn't really wonder that, basically. Colin Morris takes his by run to go into the final of Super Pro ET. Once again, happy birthday to Christine Colin Morris. Uh, I haven't seen her on site this weekend. Maybe she's just keeping warm in the caravan, doing the sensible option, or... We're not here, but uh, many happy returns. Oh, four light. 8.76 the target, 8.77 the result. Nicely done. Set himself up nicely for the final. He might take that in the final as well, actually. That's what, that package anyway. Yeah. Zero four light, 100th off. So he's going to be racing a dragster. It's just which one? Right, is it going to be the defending champion or a former champion? <laughs> Basically, an I want my title back race. <laughs> yeah. Seven sixty-eight, the darling for Alan Dibwell. Seven fifty-one, the darling for Barry Giles. So not a huge amount between them. So Alan did well. Not many races he has to go second against, but uh, sorry, first against a big pardon. Um but this will be one of them. Comp right bike semis right behind. We've got uh, Pro T semis as well. Cracking on through.
Well, whoever wins this has certainly earned it. And it is Barry Giles hits Whoa. his number. 751 with a five on a 751. Alan did well, had 400 to advantage off the line, but couldn't make it pay. 774, not quite there. Win margin, 0-2 at the stripe. Barry Giles into the final. That was the only way Barry was going to win it, actually, because of the reaction time advantage to Alan Didwell. But he did what he needed to do, and he was perfect. What a great race. So, Comp Bike Semis, Chris Neary and Mark Dainty. Ironic, it's Mark Dainty's first race of the day. It's two rounds of racing. Uh, one was a scheduled buy and one his opponent broke, I think. Yep, Blade King obviously uh, had that issue yesterday. Well, Mark Dainty's through his usual problem spot. To wow. a 704, <laughs> 203 miles an hour for Mark Dainty. Oh, so close to that six second run. 629 at 175 for Chris Neary. They're pretty happy with that anyway. I know Mark has been 70 before, but I don't think he's been 704. And I believe that is his first ever 200 mile an hour pass. So congratulations to Mark. He's going to be taking one of these two on in the final, either Danny Cockrell or Paul Hambridge. This could be a cracker. Very, very close indeed on the numbers. Well, look at the qualifying. There was a hundredth between them. Les down here having a good look on the start line because Chris is pointed sideways. Danny Cockrell rides that wheelie beautifully. And he's got a whole shot as well. Can he hold it on? He can. Whole shot win for Danny Cockrell. 7.37 at wow. 200 miles an hour. Win margin is 0 4 at the stripe. Uh, a 0.199 and a 725. <laughs> Paul Ambridge. What a terrific wow, race. Wow, that was terrific, as you say. <laughs> awesome race. But the way he rode that wheelie, just, just spot on. Right, Stevie Gates and Lee Morris. Well, Lee Morris is used to winning events. We well, won the title last year in Pro ET, but Stevie Gates, what a debut for the Camaro. Lee Morris will be leaving first, 10-10. Stevie Gates is going to be doing the chasing, 8.58. I think he's going to chase most people in uh, Pro ET because he's towards the lower end of the dial-in spectrum, isn't he? I think the 8.50 yeah. cut-off. Will he stay unbeat with the Camaro? The answer is... Yes! yes he's got look it. at that! <laughs> Done it again! Uh, 600 reaction time advantage and bang on the money with an 860 to an 858. I remember when Simon Gobb put that car up for sale. It said something along the lines of, buy it, go fast, win. <laughs> I think Stevie Gates took that a bit literally. Yeah, he can't be done for sale of goods, that, can he? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, it's doing what, when I sold it, it was perfect when I sold it to you. Yeah. And that's what it's supposed to do. There we go. Right, the battle of the uh, junior comp dragsters then. Link Mugridge and Tom Kay. 10.09 plays 10.18. Tom will be leaving first. Um, yeah. Just listen to the gear shifts as they go down the quarter mile. So I'm having synchronized, a isn't it? again, yeah. Going to be looking at each other through the finish line. It is... Double breakout. The lesser of the two breakouts. Nick Muggeridge. Tom Kay actually got there first, but he was too quick. He had quite a sizable reaction time advantage as well. Nick Muggeridge. Stevie Gates in the final. Well... Muggage ever won Pro ET before? I know Stevie Gates hasn't. Uh, not I sure. I don't, so. I don't think so. He's got close. J Road Craig Wright, number one and two qualifier in 850 bike. Pairing up in this round three matchup. 
this for a spot in the final. on the tree who's brave at the finish line it's Craig, Craig. on a whole shot as well look at that wind margin zero zero three <laughs> well he was point one on the tree J Ray was point one nine that's a whole shot win my goodness me I doubt either of them knew who went over the finish line first until the wind light came yeah. on on Craig's side of the racetrack great race Okay, so it's going to be two of Critch's bikes in the final. He's been riding one of them and Craig's riding the other. Effortless 8.44 there from Critch, but uh, he's into the final. Uh, now, I know Critch has won in 8.50. I don't think Craig has won in 8.50 yet. He's won in 9.50. He's obviously won in Sportsman ET. He don't think he ever won in Super Comp when he ran the Dragster, but uh, he's into the final. He's going to turn up on Tuesday for every event at this, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, Junior Drag Bike, semi-finals, John McLean and Declan Butt. Whoa. It's not worked out how he thought. He's absolutely right. So, John McLean. Well, give him, nice. yeah, as I say, give him a huge round, uh, Declan. Uh, they make them tough, these bike riders. And, uh, well, commiserations, mate, but it looks like the bike is A-OK. -okay. And uh, you're looking good. Yeah, it's uh, it's a weird old world. This give Declan a yeah, he's fine. I can't imagine the they'll do yeah. that. Uh, whilst we've just got because we're getting going straight away. Four zero Hollies is eight point two. 